Well, good afternoon. We're here pitch side at the American Express Community Stay in the home of Brighton Hove Albion for a very exciting evening of FIFA as we're here for the E Premier League Club Playoff event. Myself, Brown, is with and the man next to me, Richard. It's an exciting day ahead of us. It really is. We're going to find the two newest members to join the Brighton family and take part in the E Premier League finals. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Well, good afternoon from the American Express Community Stadium, as we said, for a very exciting evening. We're here for the E Premier League Club Playoff event. We're back for a second year. Of course, we were here last year to commentate over all the action and find out who would be Brighton's E Premier League Grand Finalist. We're back again, myself, Brandon Smith, and the man next to me, Richard Buckley. Rich, I've somehow dragged you back down the south coast again. Um, you're back again for another year. I have. Uh, early, early start from Manchester this morning, but we're here on the south coast to find Brighton's two E Premier League players this E Premier League qualifying process has been going on all across the country and we're down at the Amex today to find out is it going to be Keister and Ginger Ninja defending their spots or is it going to be some fresh blood for Brighton? Yeah, as you said, there was two players that did represent the club uh, last time round out in March in the E Premier League finals and I actually got to caught up with one of those players in Ryan Keister. So I'm here joined by former E Premier League Grand Finalist Ryan Keister. You're back again this year. Do you think you could go the full way again? Uh, I think anyone's got a chance who's here. Uh, it's quite a low skill gap in this game and anyone can win if they play well enough. And last year, as we said, you were at the Grand Finals in London. Obviously not the tournament to remember, but you surely took you know, quite a lot from that playing in your first ever LAN event. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I had a great time and hopefully I can do it again this year. So you said about you know, the changing game this year, um, completely different skill gap. How did qualifying go for you this time around? Obviously, you got the auto-qualification into uh, this tournament. How's FIFA been for you in general? Have you been you know, playing much, foot champions? You know, how are we looking this year? Uh, similar to last year, I've not super tried my, as hard as I can, but I know today I'll put everything I can in to try and win it like last year. And obviously, we know you are a Brighton fan, a season ticket holder here uh, at the Amex. We often talk about this a lot, about playing FIFA, you know, the E-Premier League being the next best thing for a football fan. Explain it. Uh, I think, like other pros have noticed, it's not like any other FIFA tournament there is. It's obviously you're playing for your team, the, hopefully the one you support, and it's, yeah, it's a lot of fun, and hopefully I can do it again this year. Let's talk about the first team for Brighton this year. Obviously, a few new signings over the summer, and... The team always constantly changing around. Who is your star man at the moment? I know you said you had to look around again to try and think who would be your, your favourite player at the, at the Albion, but who is it? I think probably for just consistency, really, Lewis Stunk, he's in the team every week and I think he deserves an England call-up more regularly than he actually does. Maybe he's the one that's gone under the radar more than any other player, really. And will we see a Brighton player on your bench today, maybe? Um, maybe have that Trossard or... Uh, Whatever storyline is it, card on there, but can't remember who. I don't know who got any other good players. Well, Trossard is a very decent item as well, but good luck today. Hopefully, you can go back to back E Premier League Grand Finalist here for Brighton of Albion. And there you go. It's great to actually catch up with Ryan uh, earlier today. And it's a great story as well, Richard. That is what the E Premier League is all about. If you're a Brighton fan or a football fan or a FIFA fan, and you have just joined us on the live stream. If you don't know what the Premier League is, it's a chance for all 20 Premier League clubs to find an Xbox player and a PlayStation player out of the whole of the UK that loves FIFA. 16 years and old, you have to be to try and compete in this tournament. And what they're playing for, there's a grand final in March over two days. A prize pot worth £40,000 is up for grabs, isn't that right? You just saw a glimpse there of the sort of venue that we're here at the Amex. Just looking over the pitch, you've got all the players getting ready. They've been warming up for about 30, 45 minutes right now. It feels very tense it does in indeed. this room where we are. Just, I can see, I feel like some of the players, maybe the occasion is getting to them a little bit, looking out over their boyhood club onto the pitch. Who's going to be able to deal with the pressure? And who's going to be able to pick up these trophies as well in front of us, the E Premier League. I've got the Xbox One here. You've got the PlayStation uh, trophy there. As I said, by the end of play tonight, we'll find out who will be those winners. We're going to have a look at the bracket now as well because we're going to be showing you all of the action tonight from Xbox and from PlayStation. We're going to be kicking things off with a uh, man that has got a point to prove, as we said, Ryan Case, the Case to 18, got himself an invite back. That's what the club did here at Brighton. They got an invite back to both grand finalists who made it to the Premier League finals last year. So Case will be up against Jamie Hindle in that first game. And a familiar name in the FIFA eSports scene, Zach Moore will be up against BC98. And that's the top four players on, of course, Group A on Xbox. Remember, there's eight 
players per console that have arrived in Brighton. So the way it will work, as you, as you want to explain, Richard, is a bit of a different system. It's not really groups. It's a double elimination bracket. Yeah, so if you win your first matchup, you then go through to the sort of winner's bracket match. If you lose that, you go down, you play the other losing, you'd say, quarter-finalist in the uh, loser's bracket elimination match. If you win that game, you then play the next loser. You Basically, out of the four, two are going to be going through to the playoffs, which can be later on tonight. Two players on PlayStation, two players uh, on Xbox from the group's play, and we get one player at the end of it to represent Brighton. We will do as well. Some other names in the tournament must be worth talking about as well. We have got Ethan uh, here from Eleven's Esports. If you follow your FIFA Esports quite a lot, a man that played in the E-Club World Cup out in Milan at the beginning of February. We were lucky enough to be there. Obviously just signed for Eleven's. <laughs> Uh, Esports, don't knock over the <laughs> trophy. trophy over. Don't don't excited. Over. Someone, someone needs to win that at the end of the day. Or 12th, the end of play today. 12th in the world is Ethan. Not just in the UK, in the entire FIFA Global Series. That's where Ethan is ranked right now after that very successful FIFA E Club World Cup campaign. We must talk about it as well. We are going to be playing on FIFA Ultimate Team. I'm sure a lot of people out there are Ultimate Team fans. Premier League uh, players only. So expect to see those Team of the Year fighters in there. I think there's six or seven of them in total in the Premier League. And Golo Kante, Kevin De Bruyne. I prayed we might see a Brighton player, at least on the bench. Trossard out of anyone might be in for a shout. But you expecting to see quite similar teams tonight, Richard? Yeah, I think so. As uh, We're going to have a look into our first game that we've been watching on stream right now. It's me, Kester, up against Jamie Hindle. But going back to the team discussion... I definitely feel as though we're going to see similar lineups. I'm pretty sure that the Shapeshifters promo isn't going to be implemented on the accounts yet. So, no David Luiz at CDM, no Mares in at CAM in those position changes. However, the team's extremely strong still with the Mo Salah and Gino Arnaldum upgrades coming in from the headliners promo. And obviously, we can't see him at this event. We might see him at the grand finals. That David Luiz Shapeshifter, was that a player that you. Four could maybe creep his way into the grand finals? I think so. I think you've got two very solid centre-back options in Tamore and Van Dijk, where you can go with David Luiz then in midfield. However, with De Bruyne, with Kante already sort of occupying those midfield spots and screen Roberto Firmino, does David Luiz even play when he is such a viable centre-back next to Van Dijk? Just to explain, it will be cased from left to right in this first leg in the Brighton Hove Albion home strip. In the away strip, it will be Jamie Hindle, who, as you said, qualified in the last spot from the online qualification period. That's how every single player does get to the grand finals over a period of weeks, having to play online games. But a point to prove tonight is that man, Case that wasn't a tournament to remember in the Premier League grand finals last time round. Made it, of course, to the first ever the Premier League finals, but went out in the group stages and it happened for both Brighton players. As a Brighton fan myself, I pray for better things this time round. Do you think they were just a little bit maybe... It's the first land event as well, wasn't it? Yeah, the, the pressure potentially of the event when you've got other names who have had years of tournament experience. Players like Tass, players like Tex, Venny, all going to this event who are very experienced in their own right. It must be said as well. Many clubs have already done their qualification. Yesterday we had a few a three teams that went for it. It was West Ham, Wolves and Southampton booking their players into the grand finals. We said today, all eyes on Brian O'Valbion. One of the only clubs as well to do a live stream. What a day it's been for the players. Getting a shirt with the name on the back. The experience. Stadium tour. It has been a fantastic experience for every single one of them. You can see a few of the players that will be certainly deadly over the next few hours. Virgil van Dijk in a very unfamiliar position there. Just giving possession away for Ryan Case. The chance for Jamie Hindle to try and get this ball forward. He's got future stars Tamori in it. Centre back, uh, a player that we expect to see quite a lot of. On the other side of that, David Luiz and Virgil van Dijk. The choice of two centre halves. I'm just looking there as well. I think I can see. Kevin De Bruyne in both players' squads. Roberto Firmino as well, holding down that DM spot with the five-star skill upgrade as well that he recently picked up. 
Certainly seems to be the position that will be filled by the Brazilian. I thought Kevin De Bruyne would be the player to sit in there, but... He's too good going forward. With no icons in the squad, he, you need that five-star weak foot of De Bruyne to be able to go forward with. Feels a little bit wasted at CDM. You just see on both players' face cams as well. Family and friends all here. This tournament is coming live to you from the American Express Community Stadium. We are in. See one of the suites. On the east end of the ground, Mohamed Salah. First chance for Case to go in forward. It will fall back to Kevin De Bruyne. A little drag back. Well read Virgil van Dijk. You see a grimace there from Keister as well. He knows that that was a, a pretty good chance. He opened up there with Kevin De Bruyne. He's not going to get a huge abundance of chances that are going to be created. First line event, you're going to play more defensive. You're going to play more passive for a number of these players. Speaking of Jamie Hindle, a chance for Min Song. It's rushed a little bit on the edge of the box. He may have got caught in two minds. There's a shot that he wanted to have through on goal. Instead, it was a direct kick. Came off the bat of Virgil van Dijk. And was it really going to be any problem in the end? For what we've seen from a number of the Premier League qualifiers so far in the playoffs, it's been the so-called favourites that have gone on and secured the spots. But last year, there was a lot more. It was a different story, wasn't it? There was a lot, lot more surprises. Do you think that as well was from players that went in last year and underestimated the opposition this year, not really messing about at all? As Kevin De Bruyne will come forward, case a little hill to will, too easy for Tamori. I also think the fact that all the events last year were LAN events, whereas this year only, a, what, five or six have been official LAN events. That's a great ball. Watch out on that bat post. Mohamed Salah is trying to make that run inside. I mean, Song's in the box as well. Comes to nothing. That chance, as we said, each game is played over two legs. If you do win, you will continue through on the winner's bracket. If you do lose, you drop down, of course, into the loser's bracket with one chance to stay in the competition. You lose that, you're out of the tournament. If you win, the tournament will live on. Interesting that Salah is used for both players. He's one of those that the pros are a little bit tentative on putting into the squad they'd rather go with Adama rather than Sauer but Mo Sauer certainly capable of starting on that right cam position some of the names are already in the Premier League Grand Finals you've got the likes of Tom Stokes Burnley qualified there you've got Tex the current E Premier League champion will be returning to defend his trophy in March. Man City recruited well. Shells on the PlayStation for them as the halftime whistle blows here. All goalless so far in our first game. Yeah, look, some of the other names that have qualified as well for Filza, Yago, Hashtag Harry, Shori, and Tom, and Jambu, or some of the, the higher ranked players on the Global Series rankings that have made an impact. You see a little bit of the bench there under Keister's face cam. Ishmael Saar, Foot Future Stars, Greenwood, Adama Traore, Sergio Aguero all on the bench, but goalless at half time in the first matchup of the group stages. As we said, Richard, many other games taking place at this moment in time across both groups, Xbox and PlayStation games currently underway. Nil nil. So far in leg number one here. Right. Overload ball side and striker drop back. Very passive from the defending Brighton player. He did speak to you in the interview and said that he's not played as much this year. So is that a, a more negative mindset potentially going into this game? Defend with numbers at the back and then try and snatch a goal. I think the one thing that's going to interest me as well, Rich, is that We've seen two players that are returning from the E-Premier League Grand Finals last year. They didn't have to qualify because they did get the invitation from the club. Some players just prefer going through the qualification system. Though you get to practice against a handful of players that you potentially will match up against again in the Grand Finals. I 
And it's not the practice you are going to get on weekend league. It will be completely different. This is better from Kester. I mean, Song in to Mohamed Salah, who finds himself in an unfamiliar left wing position, normally pushed out on the right. Salah to Salah, in fact. And Would you feature in your team, Mohamed Salah? Would you be looking towards him? Or would it be a Dharma? Or even a striker pushed out to Cam? I think if you have got the coins, we have seen more people look to back Mohamed Salah, but kind of the hype that surrounded Dharma Chora at the moment, you understand why so many players and pros are using him. I mean, he's rapid into it as well. Of course, Adama Traore from Wolves. You may be asking why we're seeing so many different players from all over the Premier League. It is Premier League teams only. That is the squad restriction, but you can use any player from all 20 clubs. You're looking at the best 11 on the field at the moment. Where all the promotions on FIFA Ultimate Team, Team of the Year. Being one of the biggest factors for future stars has affected a few teams. And of course, as you said, those headliners. And we've seen a handful of players use. That's a chance. That's surely going to be a goal. It has to be a goal. It will be. And it will be Jamie Hindle that does get this game underway. 63 minutes on the clock. Come in, Song. With the first goal and the only goal. You saw the drag back there as well inside the box from Kevin De Bruyne. A goalkeeper rooted to the spot. 12 yards out. As the... Road to the final, I want to say. Hung Min Son opens the scoring here for Tottenham Hotspur. It's actually just the inform Son, the 90 rated striker. I beg your pardon. And work needed to be done right now. Unless it's going to be a loser's bracket run. Who's going to be coming off of the bench? It is a damage error. You've also got Mason Greenwood, Scream Sergio Aguero there as well. Ishmael Asar. It must be said as well, Rich, for a period in that game, for some reason, Sadio Mane was out actually on the right and it was Mohamed Salah that was pushed out onto the left-hand side. He went so and made that him. change. And uh, Dharma Chora, as you said, will be subbed on for Mohamed Salah. Other than that, no other changes to report so far in this game. When I use, I've used both of those players at home and my ultimate team and I like to use Salah on the left and Mane on the right. Just for the simple fact... Everyone expects you to cut inside with Salah. So when you take it down the line and then you don't have to cut inside to get across it, um, into the danger area, you can just hit it first time. Well, it's all to do. For the previous e Premier League Grand Final, it's the case to find himself one goal down. As we said, Jamie Hindle snatched the last qualification spot. Well, the online qualification stage for the club. He's certainly got a point to prove. You can see E-Premier League player 8. That means he was seed 8 coming into this tour. On the other side of that, you can see Dan Hilliard on PlayStation 4 a little bit later today. And Kester as returning players. They'll be seed number 1, ranked number 1. Doesn't mean much, though, if you're losing the game. Also got two players who are more familiar with the competitive global series. That's Zach Moore and Ethan. We'll be keeping up to date with their games throughout this afternoon's action. We will be showing you a handful of group stage games. Of course, semi-finals and then the playoffs at the end where it's all to play for. One PlayStation player and one Xbox player. We're praying that he can do enough to book in that trip to London. 27th and 28th of March, it will all be happening at the Gfinity Arena. I mean, the lineup so far has been stacked, really. We've got a couple of clubs left to find their players. Madama Chore fresh off the bench, Richard. A handful of drag backs in use to try and just find some sort of space going forward. De Bruyne. I mean, some can get that pass around the corner. It's the second leg to this game, so still plenty of time. For him to find a way back into it. Literally no space at all, is there? Around the back there, you can see a couple of the admins walking around getting leg one score lines try and provide you the goals from other games as they stand son in behind just flash past the left hand post that could have been two on the five star weak foot of the korean superstar well, let's be honest richard some of the score lines one nil it's not really too surprising as of yet there is a second leg to come and 
my opinion. I just don't see one goal being enough. If you, you as a Brighton fan yourself, if you weren't doing the job that you're doing right now and commentating the action, you'd have tried qualifying for this event. If you made it, you can understand why there would be shallow goal lines as Son comes forward, doesn't capitalise on the opportunity. Because it's a, it's a pressure situation, this is the second best thing to play for the club. You don't want to lose your first game. Well, he has defended well, and what an opportunity that was for Casey there to try and fire himself back into this game. And in all honesty, I think he just panicked when the chance fell to him. Certainly rushed it. And I think the key thing we're seeing here is, yes, these are players that we haven't seen make a, a foot Champions Cup or a major tournament. But they know the meta. They know what to do, but in certain areas, Richard, that's why you're not seeing a a drag back into a finish, a scoop turn into a finish, you know, the effective ways we know of scoring. And instead, it have been just kind of direct shots towards the goalkeeper. It's a three kick, 24 yards out. It's going to be played short to Kevin De Bruyne, who's going to file it into Sadio Mane. Tried to just finesse that round the corner, defended well. And literally a minute left, plus additional time in this first leg. All to do. Moving into the second leg for the ranked number one player. For Brian Ovalbian, added time of just two minutes, as I mentioned. Left to play this game, Jamie Hindle trying to find a second. Will he get a chance? Great footwork from the South Korean, but just couldn't break down that final man. Will there be enough time to go for for Kester? I just don't think there will. Trent Alexander-Arnold tries to get it forward. Referee blows for full time, leg number one. And it will be Jamie with a very small advantage, Richard, moving into the second leg. It's an aggregate score, and as we said, there's still plenty of time left to see more goals and even get a comeback for Keister. Yeah, not a lot of highlights really from that matchup. It was a one goal separating the two sides after leg number one. If this is your first time watching competitive FIFA, we always play on a two-legged format as well, so it's aggregate scoreline over two legs, but Keister up against it, 1-0 down coming into the second leg. Yeah, exactly that. And if you're wondering what you are watching as well, currently it's the E Premier League uh, club playoff event. There's been hundreds upon hundreds of people that tried to get to this stage. And it's eight on PlayStation, eight on Xbox, all battling out for one spot on each console to try and pick up these trophies and also their ticket to London for the Grand Finals. £20,000 to whoever wins the E Premier League this year. It was Liverpool last year that won it with Tex. He'll be back there again. It's just who will be there for the Albion, Richard. The next few hours, we'll be able to see it. Yeah, will he defend his crown? Let's have a look at the highlights from that match up here in this first game. This was the chance, the beautiful drag back from Kevin De Bruyne and the shot fired past the goalkeeper into the back of the net from Hong Min Son. And there really wasn't a lot to break down in that first leg, Brandon. Would you say it was a fortunate finish or not? It did um, go through the legs of the goalkeeper. Another day, maybe it just ricochets off the body of the goalie. I think it was a little unlucky, but he deserved the chance as well from the drag back. Really intricate bit of play inside the box to open up the opportunity. And sometimes when you do something nice before, you get the look on your side. And uh, it balanced out there with the fo uh, the fortunate finish past the goalkeeper. Yeah, you just saw as well on camera there, Jamie. As we said, coming into this, he was the lowest ranked seed. But the important thing is he got a top eight finish. Yep. As long as you're here, everyone forgets the rest. Don't matter if you finish one through eight. Um, <laughs> If you qualified for the event, that's all that matters. Some players at other events were playing like 16, winning all 16 and making sure they just got to the event. Well, some of us have played 50, 10, 60. 40, 50, 60 games in total to try and ensure they do get a top eight finish. As you said, Case, on the other hand, the man on your screen right now, didn't need uh, to go through the qualifier system. He did get an invite back from the club. And we are going to get this second leg back underway. This time... It will be Case doing the away kit. Jamie Hindle with the one goal lead. He will be holding on to this from the tournament if he does lose this game. However, he will go down to the loser's bracket, meaning that he cannot lose another game from here on out. He's trying to listen to that charm. I think it's the first time I've ever heard it. <laughs> we normally hear seagulls, to be I've fair. I've a lot of FIFA this year. I've never heard this chant before. I mean, I normally enjoy it because we just hear seagulls just roared around the stadium. It's a handful of chants that are usually used on the eSports edition of the game. One of them, as a Brighton fan, is the classic seagulls chant. Do you want to give us an example of it? Not just yet. Maybe later. Maybe a little bit later, I forget excited. Po Post-watershed. <laughs> 
An air goal between them so far. It's going to be interesting to see how Jamie Hindle will approach this match. Will he look to get a second and double his lead? Lovely ball through to Sadio Mane. He's got options in the box as well. Hummin I mean, Song is there. Where's he? That ball, is he going to play it across? Tries to drill it across eventually. And David Luiz is there to just about deal with it. He was just waiting for the opportunity to come up, but Jamie did really well defensively, just hold out and wait for the correct opportunity. Because if that had gone in, 2-0, the scoreline, you've got to think Keister's certainly up against it. For the Belgium to make an impact in this game, Kevin De Bruyne, team of the year fighter, in use for every single player today, I expect. It's ridiculous, isn't it? You also expect every single player to look like they're going to set up in a 4-2-3-1 again. He goes for that drag back, but gets to a stage where it just becomes a little bit too obvious. I did a quick interview with a number of the players earlier today, and some of them were saying that they're going to be playing in a 4-1-2-1-2 narrow as well. So I think we are going to see a slight change of formation across the board if those players do make it through to the knockouts. Have to stress. It's one of those, isn't it? The 4 one 2 one 2 You've only got one CDM compared to what the 4 2 3 one can offer you. More of a defensive formation. 4 one 2 one 2 though. It's a, Compress so it's a narrow formation. It's an attacking formation. Chance now around the corner. Ball across the box. For a second, I thought Allison was going to parry that one. Wouldn't well, surprise you. From the Liverpool number one. Even just commentating from your perspective here, Brandon, at Brighton, it must be a great sort of moment for you as Mane strides forward there for Jamie he's going to look for the cutback drag back inside the box finds it into David Luiz but as a, as a fan of the club watching it I'm, I'm enjoying every minute Richard I'm loving it I mean I wish I was playing I know you attempted to play this year but kind of had to pull pull out the internet to stop you trying to qualify for Manchester City at one point think you would have qualified top eight to be honest I think I would have come close but I don't know if I would have qualified team at home isn't looking too great not sure if that player of the month would have, <laughs> would have uh, I mean where is he right now been able to do do it for you chance now for Keister Sadio Mane it's the man we've been talking about Roberto Firmino in one of those CDM roles Defensively, Jamie being very, very solid, hasn't he? Not being a lot of space on this pitch whatsoever for Keister to manipulate and does give away a free kick. Deep in enemy territory. We said if you win this, you'll continue into the winner's bracket. Of course, up against either Zach Moore or BC9. You win that, then you will be. Moving, as we said, into that grand final, which in which you'll win it, Richard, in the playoffs. You'll be playing, obviously, the winner of Group B. Up against Group A. These guys are in Group, group A. Four players per group. Obviously, 16 in total. Eight on PlayStation, eight on Xbox. Less players as well from last year. We had 32. No. It's a straight knockout tournament as well, wasn't it? Yeah, so do you think it's better with the... Less players, but a double elimination. Alisson a little bit worried there. Just parried that one. I think it's more of the case of giving players the opportunity. So I think last year you had people that qualified. You could match and a ridiculous yeah, player as well. You yeah. had players that you know worked really hard on the online qualifiers. As I said, it was top 16 per console last year. But it was straight knockout. You lose the game straight on. And, and it would be tournament over. What chance that was. Alisson worked again. From the spot, tips that one round the corner. This is better signs of pressure from the returning EPL finalist. In case to still hunting for a goal in this game. Chance to counter attack, in fact, for Jamie. Rush that pass. Trent Alexander Arnold picking up the pieces. You saw just a little bit too aggressive in the attacking play there, was Jamie. He saw the opportunity and just tried forcing it through. But this defensive shape holding strong so far. Son! Sticking the hands of Allison again. Certainly created chances, isn't it? Five minutes left in this first half. 
Still dig away and try and find a goal back in this game. So he said if he does lose, he will just move down to the loser's bracket in Group A. So we'll just be playing against the loser of either Zatmore or BC98. Oh, that's nice round the corner. That's an unbelievable chance again. Allison somehow off the line. Spreading himself extremely well there was Allison. Covering as much ground as possible. Schmeichel esque. It's one of those, isn't it, though, Richard? You back yourself to score from there. It was the cutback. You normally look for that finish around the corner. No luck, but that's three good chances created in this first 45 minutes, which will surely give him some sort of confidence. The next one has to go in. If he'll have enough time in this first half. No, he won't. Referee, thank you very much. Half-time whistle's blown. Still 1-0 to Jamie Hindle in our first game. Here, coming to you live from the American Express Community Stadium for this E Premier League Club playoff event. You can see the chances as well. He's certainly been on top in this half. But he's got the important goal to hold on to, hasn't he? Keister, as he just puts Roberto Firmino there on slightly more of an attacking role in this starting eleven. Adama Traore also entering the field for Mo Salah and a switch of formation. The players are very close to us here in the lounge that we're in. So I don't think they can hear you, though. In-depth with custom tactics, but everyone can see what is being happening right now. I'd, say, I'd be annoyed if there were a commentator who said exactly what I've done and my opponent just switched. As you said, lucky enough. Unless they're listening to the stream as well. They shouldn't be able to hear us. Back on the way. As I said, Jamie Hindle is leading by a goal to nil on this. Seed number eight coming into this tournament on the Xbox. Could be in the way of the returning E Premier League grand finalist for Brighton of Albion. In case there is one nil down in this game. Adama Troy all right, introduces a chance for some fresh legs to mix things up. He certainly has been creating chances. Just needs to make something happen. Here's Jamie Hindle. This is nice from him. Kevin De Bruyne and Kante interchanging with Adama Troy, who's also been subbed on four. The player currently leading by a goal to nil in this game. You see in the bottom left corner, though, as well. The quick tactics from Kaiser. It keeps on putting the offside trap on. Still quite defensive for my liking. That's a great little drag back for Robertson around the corner. This is where space could open up and Jamie Hindle could find a second if he can get around Virgil van Dijk. And Sounds easier than it is. For a split second, you thought he was going to get a heavy touch and pull past that team of the year. That's an awful pass from Case to give possession straight back to Jamie. The Damatura, the first time he's now to get on the ball and drive forward and show off. That Incredible pace stat that he has. Another pause cue by Ryan. He knows he needs to really push for this game. All out attack if he can. Lovely long ball forward. Is it too heavy though? No, it's not. Adama Traore picking it up. Expect him to try and get back on the ball again. Kevin De Bruyne leading the charge. I'm in song. Yeah, look, it wasn't it from Son there, looking to turn and get a shot off. But the resiliency of a man holding a lead. In Jamie Hindle, proving worthwhile yet again. Back into the substitutions here. Roberto Firmino looks like the man potentially going to be coming off. David, I should say, Bernardo Silva. It's actually Ishmael Assar coming on. In a central cam. First time I've seen him involved in the Premier League at all this year. It definitely suits that wide role a lot better. It's normally the likes of Mason Greenman we've seen involved previously, that foot future star item. Actually saw it in use at Manchester City during their E Premier League club playoff event. We were lucky enough to be there a few weeks ago. Tell you what, I've just seen the automated blinds go down. It's a bit snazzy, isn't it? It's impressed you. It does. Back on the way. 28 minutes left. As we said, this is the second leg. Aggregate scoreline. It is 1-0 to Jamie Hindle at this moment in time. 
And that blue and white strip of Brian of Albion. It's a long ball forward. Case to chase in this game still. Looking for a second. If he gets it, you have to say, it's game set and match. I mean, Song, the only goal scorer. He can't break past Virgil van Dijk every single time he goes into a tackle. It's like he's got a 99.9% he always right walks over. away with the ball, doesn't he? As you can see, a couple of substitutions coming on there for Jamie. It looks like Leroy Sane, the player moment SBC introduced at left cam. Mane set up as a central striker right now, and Adama Traore brought on as the wide midfielder. It's a little bit heavy for Keisters. The clock ticks away. You said Leroy Sane introduced late onto this game. Jamie Hindle 20 minutes away. And you could say stir in the pot. Just a bit of an upset. Here at the Amex, certainly is. Case to a player that did represent the club last year in the Premier League finals. Off to potentially a losing style. Jump down, as we said, into that losers match in Group A. If he loses that, Richard, it's torn over for him. I'm sure he doesn't need us to remind him. See the offside trap there as well. Constantly implemented from Kester, but Sane breaks free from Adama. Look at the back post as well. There's two players there. There's an overload of players. Trent did well. David Luiz. It looks like to me he's put David Luiz into midfield. Oh, it's a five at the back. I wish he's just dropped back in position there for a second. I'm completely with you. It looks like Tamori is in. But centre half next to Van Dijk. Centre half and David Luiz. If you're playing left wing back or centre. To left hand side. Honestly CDM. it would make sense though wouldn't it? Five at the back with just ten minutes left. Something that most players would do when they want to hang on to a lead. Just ten minutes away. It's a risky ball forward. Adama Troy will try and get that in the air. And eventually it is dealt with. Andy Robertson picking up the pieces. Well, there'll be one more chance to break. If he can break and get a goal, it will be game over. Certainly has the stats to play CDM. The stamina, the only real issue for that flashback David Luiz, not the shape-shifted David Luiz. It definitely looks like he's at CDM with Kanto. Just a little over five minutes left in this game. Time is running out. Has to make the most of this chance now, this case up. Has to make something happen in these remaining five minutes. It's a big switch on if he wants to use that. I did time to follow. This is nice from Keister. This will probably be the best chance he'll get in this game if he does find a goal. That's just overrun, wasn't it? Probably a heel to heel. Needed to come out there as a diamond's going to burst away from Andy Robertson. Can go to the corner, can turn in field. And to snatch the game as well towards the back post, Allison. That's reckless for me. You've got the ball in the perfect position away from goal. Just keep it. It's not going to matter. Job done. And Jamie Hindle will get off to a winning weight in the Premier League club playoff. The worst possible start for Caster, as we said, coming back after doing so well last year, last time round, when we were obviously commentating at that tournament in the EPL uh, club playoff. He came out as a bit of a shock, and for us, that is a shock to kick things off. He will go down into that loser's match. If he loses that, Richard, it will be game over. Jamie Hindle, one of the lower-ranked seeds, doing enough to get off to winning ways. Who will be joining them, though? Will it be Zach Moore or BC98 in that winner's match? You can see it. Just one goal scored across the two legs. As we said, there wasn't really too much going on in the first leg. But if you look at the chances that Kester had, Richard, he deserved a goal from it. We'll have a look at some of the best chances from that game to see really what the difference was. That was the only goal, as we said, Richard. It was the drag back from De Bruyne and then the finish from Hung Min Son. But a fantastic performance from... Team of the Year, Allison was the real deciding point.
in that second leg for Jamie Hindle to help him secure this victory. A couple of chances came towards the end of the first leg here. It was a chance to double his lead. Hung Min Son flashing past the left-hand post. And there was a chance on the other side. This was the mistake at the back. And just simply panicked and overrushed it. Look, just that's the chance. You have to play Kevin De Bruyne in there. Mm. I don't think you can play him in. I think he, he did get blocked off the run a little bit. But I think there might have been an option to do a ball roll maybe and then shift it back onto your right foot or even go near post. It just seemed a little bit panicky. Ah, yeah. Got to shoot. Got to get my shot off. And uh, in the end, Jamie Hindle with a 1-0 victory in the opening matchup here at the Brighton E Premier League playoffs. As we said, there was chances in the second leg. This was for Keister, as we said. He needed to get a goal. He needed to try and pull his way back into the game. Here's the handful of chances, Rich. And we got kind of asking, oh, sorry, we said we asked ourselves, one of these has to go in. And it was just Allison time after time providing big save. Mane here down the byline and then making himself big with the help of Virgil van Dijk. The Liverpool duo seeing out that victory and a little bit of a shot case that moves down to the loser's bracket. Jamie Hindle moves in to the sort of champion match. If he wins that, he's in the top four. Yeah, he really is indeed. A fantastic start as we said from the outside. He qualified in eighth, the last spot available here for the E Premier League Club playoffs. The first game, Richard, we knew that people were going to be nervous. He certainly lived up to that. Only one goal scored, and honestly, I think it is nerves at this stage. Yeah, you saw striker drop back, overall ball side combination for a case of the majority of that game, to be honest. I think. He thought, I will get a chance. I will get a goal if I just keep on playing the way I did. But Alisson had other ideas. Yeah, he really did. Fantastic stuff. As we said, in game number one, we'll give you an update on everything else that has happened. As you said, we've got Zach Moore involved. We've got the likes of Ethan. You expect big things from them today? Well, of course, we're waiting to hear their results. I'm expecting big things from Ethan especially. Um, off the back of the Club World Cup. And then he was in Atlanta as well. He's played at a Foot Champions Cup. He's played in big arenas as well. Has the youngster. I think he... I'd be surprised, in all honesty, if I'll say it quietly, because the people will be watching, but um, I don't want to upset the mood of the players, but I'd be surprised if he wasn't the... I, I would be shocked, actually, if he wasn't the player winning the PlayStation 4 bracket. You think he's... You think I think if he plays well, I think it, it's his to take. Well, it should be as well, as you said. Was it 12? 12 in the world. 12 in the world at the moment on PlayStation 4, out of thousands upon thousands of players from all over, outside of the Premier League, 12 he currently sits at the moment. You're wondering who he is. He plays for 11's eSports. That is the eSports team's uh, that has been founded by Gareth Bale. So Impressive stuff. It's not a bad team to play for, is it? Yeah, I mean, just getting a little FaceTime now and again off Gareth. How you doing, mate? Good yeah. luck in your final. You yeah, probably FaceTime today. Good luck in your e Premier League game today. Yeah. It's not bad, is it? Ooh, ooh, if you were just sat, just playing a bit of FIFA, and you saw you got a FaceTime, who would be the, the player? Dream player. I mean, any Brighton player, to be honest. Have you FaceTime Mope? Playing on FIFA. We're not that tight yet. But you, you played you, on FIFA. You wish me luck on, uh, on Weekend League, but... Big fan of that. I wouldn't, say we, play, I wouldn't say we played on FIFA. He Fine. absolutely dominated me. Beat, um, didn't you? Yeah. Don't try and get revenge for you. I mean, we could try it. We could, we, why don't I pretend I'm playing and it could be you? I'll just hold the controller. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But we are going to be jumping into another game very shortly. But before we are going to do that, we're going to introduce him for the first time. Matthew Jackson, our Roman reporter for tonight, is joined uh, by that man who just won his first game here in the EPL Club Playoff. Yeah, thank you, Brandon. Right. I am joined by uh, Jamie Hindle. You won your first round. You must be absolutely delighted. Yeah, yeah. It was a good start. Uh, game was more defensive than I expected. I thought there would be more chances. Um, since he won it last year, I thought he'd be a bit more attacking than he was. But yeah, it went well. So obviously this is your first playoff uh, finals. Yeah. Have the nerves set, nerve settled a bit now going into the next round? Um, yeah, I'm not too nervous. Like, it should be all right. Um, I'm hoping, I don't know, I hope I'll score a few more goals in the next round. I, I, I didn't create enough chances really in that first one. Um, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And you said before that you were one of your uh, top players coming into this was Son. You scored yeah. the winner. Yeah. <laughs> well, that must be yeah, delightful. Yeah. yeah. But that's, yeah, that's why I picked him, because I know if he gets that one chance, he, chances are he's going to score it. Like, he's got five star weak foot, so any sort of angle, you know, it's going to go in. Um, it's a bit of a strange goal, but yeah, I'll, t I'll, t I'll take it. Brilliant. Well, Jamie, congratulations. Good luck in round two. Um, and back to Brandon and Richard. 
Thank you very much, Matt. And yeah, good to catch up with Jamie. Big first win for him today. Obviously, he said it perfectly. Home in song. He's got a five-star weak foot. He can go on his left. He can go on his right. Prime example of it. And he got the only goal in that game, which was a winning goal. I think one of the big things for me coming out of that interview was that he said that he didn't play at his best whatsoever. He was very good defensively, but offensively didn't create enough chances. He wants to score more goals going forward. So we could be seeing big things coming out of Jamie Hindle in the Brighton E Premier League playoffs. Yeah, we could indeed. As we said, so many games underway at the moment. Obviously, we've got Zach Moore, BC98. We'll basically be going into our next round after this one, our winners uh, bracket to find out who will be obviously going into the playoffs. Richard, as we said, there's 16 players that are here. Only two of them can represent Brighton of Albion in the E Premier League Grand Finals. And just a word on it, Richard, it's a massive opportunity the Premier League. We'll speak about this before. It's the next best thing to be in a professional football. You get to represent your, you know, your boyhood club in a massive tournament. Yeah, not only do you get to represent your, your favourite club or a club that's close to your heart, you get to play for £40,000 as well. Let's let... Let's, let's it's a lot that. of money. Let's Last year there was no gets, money on the line. If you win the tournament, you're taking home 20 grand. Okay, and also... That's to yourself. It's a FIFA Global Series major um, as well, a league partner major. So there's only a few of these around the world. This, the E de Vise, the EMLS, Virtual Bundesliga, uh, French E-League as well. So these tournaments, the, the creme de la creme, okay? Yeah. You, you don't get much bigger than this, to be honest, in terms of a league scale. If you can go in and win the uh, E Premier League, you're going to have news reporters, you're going to have TV channels, you're going to have club offers as well. Even if it's potentially not the club that you're playing for, there's going to be esports organisations wanting to sign you up because you've got the playoffs to come. Yeah, we certainly have indeed. As we said, we've got playoffs being kind of being played every single night at the moment. Some are hosting live events, such as Brighton of Albion have done. Only a handful have done it, of course, uh, to the level that the Albion are today. There's been online qualifiers as well. Yesterday we saw Wolves, West Ham and Southampton all do online qualifiers. Familiar names, of course, qualifying for another South Coast club in Southampton, in Veni and Russia. We've also got overseas players as well that we will yep. be seeing. For Phils of the Brazilian, we'll be being playing for Wolves. Manchester United have got the exact same outfit this year again. But to your point, Richard, if you have a good tournament, the Premier League, you make a grand final, you make it into the last four, that's huge global series points, which could get you a, a, a spot in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, not only looking into the global series points, but the rest of the season as well. It, there's some serious implications on the back of the E Premier League, and it's one of the reasons that it's one of my favourite tournaments of the year. As I said, we've got plenty more games to come tonight. We are going to throw to a very short uh, four-minute break, and then when we're back, we'll be jumping into the next set of games. So don't go anywhere. Still plenty more FIFA action to come.
Well, welcome back once again to the E-Premier League Club playoff event here at the American Express Community Stadium. Of course, the home of Brighton, Hove, Albion. We might as well say we've got some exciting announcements as well for you guys. Of course, we've got some results that have just come in straight away, but also we've got some giveaways as well. I did tease it on social media as well. Brighton are giving away a signed uh, Brighton of Albion top by all the players and a handful of copies of FIFA 20. Of course, on Xbox and on PlayStation. So it's simple as this. Official BHAFC on Twitter. Go and check out the recent uh, tweet. Go and like it. Go and follow the link. All the details there. And also on Instagram, official BHAFC to get a copy of FIFA 20. Like the post, follow the stream, enjoy the stream, and you guys can be earning some exciting prizes. Now we've got that out of the way, Brandon. We've got shocks. Zach Moore lost his first game on penalties 3-1. That was against BC98. So we've got an elimination match between the winner of last year's E Premier League Brighton playoff in Keister versus the arguable favourite in Zach Moore, FIFA coach for Neo FC. Looking over into Group B on the Xbox, Chiv losing. Four goals to one against Impact and Oscar with a emphatic 9-1 victory against Jack B20. It must be said as well, Jack Beasley making a little bit of a comeback in the FIFA Esports scene. If anyone is there, is, uh, has been watching FIFA Esports for a few years now, you'd remember that name. Was involved in the Hashtag United Game Academy, as it was, or was the Spencer FC Game Academy, as it was back then. He was in the final three alongside Kez Brown and, of course, as people know him now, Hashtag Harry. Also had a spell at Hibernian playing professional FIFA, but now he finds himself in a knockout game. Another shock as well, Ginger Ninja, as we said, a returning E Premier League Grand Finalist. Richard losing his first game, four goals to one up against It's Cam. And then the other game, it's Ethan, as we said, expect it. Big things from this man today. Does win his first game, three goals to one up against Zed Coxie. So that is looking interesting in our winner's match, as we said. Our other games underway as well. Sorry to, to give you one more update. As we said, the last four PlayStation players is uh, Amia that does pick up a win there. And Scraffer, 98, who was in such a good position last year. He made the grand finals on the, the club playoff event and was one game away, losing to Dan Hilliard, which stopped him from going to the E Premier League grand finals. Love that he's back again this year. Second time lucky, maybe? Yeah, trying to go one step further. But both, I think the, the big story to take away from this first round, both Brighton E Premier League winners last year yeah. losing their first matchup. They are in losers bracket games. Yeah, certainly, Richard. It's it's been uh, an interesting one. That's all I can say because again, they did get the auto qualification back. They haven't played online qualification. They haven't really been involved. They're not foot verified, so I'd say there was always room for a shock to happen. Yeah, hundred percent. A big shock as well. Zach Moore losing his first matchup on penalty shootout. Before the tournament started, I got the opportunity to catch up with him for a little chat. Joined now by one of the favourites, Zach Moore, here at the Brighton E Premier League playoffs. Zach, you've been a coach this season for Neo, working with Gorilla and Stokes, formidable players. How do you think that's going to help you playing today yourself? They helped me big time because I kind of know maybe more than the other players the events. Maybe to handle the pressure, a bit more experience, and I probably know the meta. What are the events like? Recently in Paris, so I probably know the meta more than the other players that are here. And you've seen quite bad performances, let's be fair, from those two this season as well. Um, going out in tournaments, that mental side of the game when you're picking them up, does that help you as well in your own performance, not to rage and to to mentally big yourself up coming into games? Uh, yeah, that's huge because so sometimes it's so hard to keep your head, but. I've been on the other side this year as a coach, so trying to pick them up when they've been down. And it's actually, I think the mental side of the game is probably the biggest part more than the gameplay in some aspects. Coming into this game and this tournament, have you played any of the players that you're going to be facing here today? And if so, how did you get on? If not, having that coaching background, is that going to help you break them down straight away? Um, I've played a few of them in the ladder, and I've done pretty well on the ladder, but more so... I have watched a couple of the, uh, the other guys as well, so I kind of know how a couple of them play. They might be playing in the groups. So, but as for like the knockouts, uh, assuming I get there, I'd be just trying to work them out. Just two legs, so hopefully I can win. Looking at your team, how's your how's your squad looking? Premier League only here at Brighton. Um, I've gone with Son up front. I could either him or Aguero as well. Team of Mane on the wings, probably with Salah. But there's a lot of right wingers you could possibly use as well. De Bruyne, Cam, and then. Kande and the scare Firmino at CDM so the Firmino, I think Firmino five star he's the only five star skiller so I kind of want him in the team and he's got good defensive stats 
And final question from me before I let you get on with the rest of your day. What do you mean to represent Brighton at the E Premier League? I think it would mean a lot just for the fact, like, as growing up like most kids, like you want to play in the Premier League and this is the next best thing. Last year I missed out uh, trying to uh, for Cardiff. Obviously they got relegated, so I went for Brighton this year. I wanted to play in a live event as well, so I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully I can win. Good luck today, mate. Credit to, uh, to Zatmore, all the way from Cardiff down to Brighton. It's a long old journey, but something interesting about Zatmore, if he does turn this around, he loves a pair of shorts. He'll <laughs> be wearing them. He'll be go, I reckon he'll go he's full kit. Them, he's he's, he's he wearing Premier League Grand Finals. I mean, got to get there first. Yeah, he does, all right. He does first. But shocks, that's how it is. That's the one word I'd honestly use of how this tournament has started at the Amex. The players that represented the club last year have both started off on a loss. A favourite as well, Zatmore. Not doing too well. You've got uh, Scrapper, a player that we did see last year, gets so, so close. He's back again this year, back to winning ways. The only thing that isn't a shock is Ethan off to a winning start. Yeah, 3-1 in his first game. Uh, from what I understand, quite a professional performance, just getting the job done. Oscar is the man that I want to see in this tournament, potentially moving forward. He won 9-1. Who does that on FIFA 20? 9-1 in his first game as well. Normally quite a nervous one for a handful of players here in the E Premier League. Richard, we are going to be looking at a winner's game in our next uh, matchup. A lot to do, though, for Zatmore. Or we're going to be looking at an elimination game, I should say. It's going to be Caster against Zatmore. Whoever loses goes home, Richard. It's as simple as that. And it's going to be one of the two favourites going home as well. We're either going to get Zatmore, arguably the highest ranked player in terms of accolades, on the Xbox, leaving the E Premier League playoffs, or it's going to be Brighton's winner last year going out in the first round. Yeah, it certainly could be a massive shock. Have to win to stay in the tournament. It's as simple as that as we jump into this game now. And it's ultra defensive from the word go from one of these two. Which player is it? That's the question. It's going to be. Kaiser that does go up to defensive, playing the home Brighton of Albion strip from left to right in this first leg. And Zatmore qualifying as a fourth seed on the Xbox with it all to do after losing a penalty shootout, Richard. It's all about a reset now. Only chance for Kaiser. It's Sadio Mane that tries to pick up the pieces, yet to score a goal in the tournament as Kaiser, so he can find the back of the net early doors. It certainly will be something for him. It's a very fortunate deflection. It's not going to matter, though. Hummin Song gets him off the mark. Four minutes on the clock. So unlucky, wasn't it? Tamore blocked it, and then the block just bounced straight back to Kaiser. Zach Moore, incredibly unfortunate there in the first four minutes, and that's the worst possible situation, especially in FIFA 20, to go down in the first five minutes giving Kaiser the incentive to see this game out. Certainly not the start that Zach Moore would have wanted. Travelled such a long way to get to this event. Kaiser, though, got a point to prove. Represented the club last year in the Premier League Grand Finals. Didn't have to go for the online qualification. After getting an automatic invite back into this tournament. Whoever loses this will leave the competition. Whoever wins will we'll just about keep their tournament status alive, Richard. Yeah, they'll play the loser of Jamie Hindle versus BC 9-8. Certainly hasn't had a favour of fortune as Zach Moore went to a penalty shootout in his first game. And it's a little bit of... Luck that Kester did get with the fortunate bounce into the path of Hummin Song, who's never going to be missing from there. Danny James in action for Zach Moore. As this left cam, it looks like. Interesting. No Salah. De Bruyne as his central cam, and it looks like Son as a central striker with Timothy Omane out wide. Here is Hummin Song, a little drag back for Zach Moore to try and open up some sort of space. Unfortunately, couldn't do it, but also, as Rich, as you said, that means that Mohamed Salah and Adama Traore are not in the starting eleven. They probably will be on the bench. It's the foot future stars upgradable Danny James. The 86 rated, I would have to put a bet on, that is the wide player and the variant that he's using, but still a very interesting pick. I suppose he's, he's Welsh. Danny James. 
the only sort of thing that I can go on. Zach Moore's Welsh. Well, you spoke to him a little bit earlier. Well, you swear we didn't talk about Danny James. We did not mention him. A little wild card under his sleeve that has made his start in 11. He's got 98 pace as well. Exactly what you need. Down that left channel. 20 minutes gone. Keister does lead by a goal to nil. Elimination match this is. No second chances in this one. Both players started off. To a, a poor start in the Premier League club playoff event here at Bryant. Not sure what Allison's doing there. Very comfortable. Ultra defensive though from the word go from Keister. We expect him to be slightly more defensive in this game. And it's probably something he's learnt from his first game. He did lose it one goal to nil over two legs. Nice. Play. That's a, I mean, Salah. He's played much better in this second game that we've seen him, Keister, than the first leg and the first matchup when he did lose out to Jamie Hindle, one goal to nil. He looks a lot more comfortable right now. It must be said looking at that group that they were in last year. Very much a tough one for Keister. Couldn't get out of it at the Premier League Grand Finals last March. Was a very long wait to re-qualify on himself. That certainly is the potential for a better running in the tournament for the Albion. A few pro players in the mix in the qualification stages. You're going to be... Uh Supporting him a little bit, Brighton. I'll have a Brighton shirt underneath Richard. You don't <laughs> see it. Underneath the blazer. I think we lost the Palace last year, which was. That thing. Still hurts now. Would that have been uh, Sir Rousio? It would have been, yeah. Actually, might have been on the PlayStation, to be fair, so it would have been. Dammy. Which was a. Uh, a tough one to take, but on pro experience, you expect that to happen. Is that more still trying to find a way back into this game? You can see how defensive Keister is. Every single Brighton shirt back in his own half. So compact, needs to be hard to beat, and that's exactly what he's trying to do. Look how narrow the pitches as well when he's trying to attack. Whether it's Roberto Firmino or De Bruyne coming back from Cam, when you also with the striker drop back, quick tactic, it does enable to you just almost have eleven in your own half at times and then quickly counter. Must be said as well, Rich. Looking at that last game, there's that one did play. It was a one-one over two legs. Hasn't been able to find the back of the net as much as he would have liked to. So far in the tour, especially when you've got players winning nine goals to one. Must have been a frustrating, more importantly, a contested, tightly contested, I should say. Two legs of FIFA, 1-1 on the scoreline. And in time of just two minutes in this first half, Keister is in front by a goal to nil. It was a gift of a goal. And also looking as well for Zach Moore, who had been coming in probably his favourite. No option in, is there? He looks to be getting a little bit frustrated as well, does Zach? See it in that face cam. Only a half down into this game, but those are the stats that will tell you everything you need to see. Zero shots on target, less possession. Keister has had a game plan and he's been living up to it so far. Been able to score the only goal in it. His first goal in the tournament. 4-2-3-1, you can see it in further detail now as well. No changes at half time for Keister, at least, looking at the side of Zach Moore. I think that's Leroy Sane introduced. Danny James taken off at halftime and Leroy brought on. Maybe an early reply into the second half for Zach Moore. 
I mean, so around the corner, can he get shot away as well? Certainly can. Look at Allison very well. He's hoping five minutes in the second leg. The only problem is if you are going to be this defensive a case that it's going to take a while to get numbers forward when you want to have a counter attack. I'm just seeing this slow build up yet again. Coming out from case that doesn't need to really push forward with that many numbers, but we have to remember this is knockout football as well for these players after losing their first matchup. Loser goes home, and it will be an awful long journey back to Wales for Zach Moore if he knows that he's not won a match. still be a second link to come as well. Let's not forget that as well. As every single second counts down for Zatmore, the pressure will rise up for him. Needs a goal. Nero Sane, fresh off the bench. Can he be the player to change things up as Danny James actually did get subbed off early on into this second half. Very confident at the back is case to the happy to keep it with. Team of the year, Alison Becker. Good pressing. Can he find the back of the net, though, from this? Again, it's just the overall ball side coming out in full effect. Strangling any sort of room in that middle of the pitch and straining the passing lanes. They shouldn't build up. And Keister leading by a goal to nil in this game. First leg run at the moment. There's still a second leg to come up. If these two did lose their first matches at the club playoff event, Kevin De Bruyne just pushed out a play back for a goal kick. Chance for Zap Moore now. Goes into the pause minute. This is the POV of Keister we are looking at. And it will be Adama Traore on for Mohamed Salah. Other than that, won't want to change anything else as of yet. Yeah, the same substitution is made in the last game that we saw on the side of... Zach Moore doesn't look like much has changed. You see the match tracks there. Possession very even between these two. It would be tactical changes from Zach. Possession 55 to 45. Shots on target. Extremely tight and tentative affair. It was a change coming on for Zach. We'll see who that was. Looks to me... Looks like Mason Greenwood, Richard. Mm, it's certainly a, an attacking change. You see him with his orange boots. Furthest forward. Manchester United future star will be entering the field to try and make that all-important difference. Needs a goal. And he needs something before we head into this second leg. Otherwise, it really will be. And everything back behind the ball for Kaystone to try and defend out this leap. She was too heavy. To run out of play, did Andy Robertson. He's on a yellow card. Have to be careful. In the last 20 minutes or so. Again, you just look at the blue and white shirts at the back there. There's no space whatsoever. He's going to have to Greenwood. take a mistake. First few touches in this game. De Bruyne try to get around his man. Fake shot in two. Have a shot. Path of N'Golo Kante, edge of the box, 20 yards out. Chance for a direct finish, maybe. He's just pulled off a player off the wall. I don't know where he's defending as well. That's a chance on goal. If he can take it up and over Ooh. the wall. Good save, Alisson. Kevin De Bruyne were over it. He heard his name being sung around the Amex. Better, though, from Zach Moore. An unbelievable chance for him to get back into this game. That's a mistake. De Bruyne. Just can't get past Sadio Mane. It just feels like the drag backs are clearly too slow. By the time he's done it, it becomes too readable. The pressing being very effective here from Zach. Needs a goal before the second leg. Does get underway. 
Kianze. Going to fall back to him again, Mason Greenwood. Will impact full substitution. He'll be if he can get on the score sheet. Chance for De Bruyne into the box. He didn't want to be the man to take the shot. Or will he? De Bruyne! Saved by Alisson. Sort of forced into the shot as well. There were no space. And Zach, I think he read the situation and just sort of thought, I may as well just get something off on goal here because this back four aren't going to move. It's hardly been a brighter last 20 minutes from the Welsh FIFA player. He's had travelled all the way down from Cardiff for this. Certainly does not want to be crashed out the tournament early doors. At the moment, he will be if he does not find a way back into this game, into the second leg. There is only six minutes of this first leg left, and then we will be moving across. And Keister, this last, what, 15, 20 minutes? He's barely been able to hold on to the ball. It's been a very dominant spell for Zach Moore. But unless he comes away with a goal from it, it's in vain. For the Club World Cup, FIFA coach. Coach at the Grand Finals as well, let's not forget, with Stokes. Let's be honest as well, of course, he's more of a coach this year for Team Neo his esports organisation he does work with, but he's always wanted to play, he was part of that roster, the one that G-Finney Elite Series all that time ago for AS Roman Fnatic. But this is an unbelievable opportunity for him. They didn't have to qualify for it. He can he's make an event, he will be picking up guaranteed Global Series ranking points. Two minutes have been played, cleared long. Kaiser will have something to hold on to into this second leg, Richard. He is leading by a goal to nil. Was that mistake early on? Just four minutes into a humming song with a gift of a finish. And other than that, really nothing else to shout about. Yeah, you know that it's a um, a pretty dry game when Trent is your man of the match. Look at the match highlights, there was two. It was a save and a shot. And it's that man right there on your screen, currently one goal down. Zach Moore. Needs a goal. And he'll be able to register one so far. You wondered how his first game went in Group A. It was 1-1 over two legs, losing on a penalty shootout. Three goals to one. So that means that Zatmore, unfortunately, couldn't actually uh, keep his nerve, or hold his nerve, I should say, from the spot as well. Unfortunately, he could score one. There's only one seat between them as well. You see Zach there, and then a player in the middle playing his matches, literally two seats across, is the man who potentially could be knocking you out of the tournament. Or will be knocking out the tournament, whether it's Zach going home or Keister. There's certainly no eye contact between the two. Just wants to work to get his second leg underway as soon as he can. As we said, Zach Moore coming into this tournament in a very strong position. Number two in the seed and coming into it. Big, big, big online qualification from yet to register a goal in this game. And we saw it from the word go from what Keister's been trying to sell. Ultra defensive, everything back behind the ball. We got a gift of a goal. But he sat on it and he sat on it for 90 minutes. Yeah, and... In tournament football, you'd probably say that's accepted, to be honest. If if that were my, if I were watching, if I was a fan and my team were doing that in the Premier League, I'd be saying we've got to be playing better football. Yep. But in a cup competition where what you win your, if he's in the loser's bracket round one now, he wins that, he then wins the next game in the loser's bracket, puts him through to the semi-finals, he then wins the semi-final and the final. You've got to win four games, that's eight legs of FIFA. If you can win eight legs of FIFA in a row... You're Brighton's official E Premier League player. And let's be honest, at the E Premier League Grand Finals, are we going to be looking back and saying, oh, would anyone won 1 0? Yeah, you only want penalties. No, 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 no. You're going to be there, and that's all that matters. So um, I'm less of a sort of, I'm less negative about the style of gameplay when it is in a tournament format, especially such as the E Premier League, where this is a one time a year tournament. Yep. Do you know what I mean? There's going to be people here competing that are never going to get the opportunity until next year if they qualify again, if this tournament runs again next year. So I, I, I'm not against it. I'm not against the, the overall ball side, strike a drop back, try and get a goal, see it out mindset when it's now or never. Yeah, it really is. You wonder what they're playing for as well, both to get their hands on these trophies. I've got the Xbox one here, Richard with the PlayStation one there. You'd also 
be booking yourself your tickets to the E Premier League Grand Finals. £40,000 prize put on the line. £20,000 to the winner. Liverpool picked up last year that trophy. Who will be representing Brighton of Albion in that big, big tournament next month? Back underway for this second leg. And it's all to do for one of the big favourites in this tournament in Zach Moore. He is losing by a goal to nil. Losing, I should say, not leading. He is losing by a goal to nil. Keister, though, he's winning this game by a goal to nil. On that away kick now, he's kicking from right to left in the black Brighton Hove Albion strip. Zach Moore kicking from left to right in the home blue and white kit. It's all to do. 90 minutes in front of us. Are we going to need extra time? Are we going to need penalties again for Zach Moore? Or is Case going to be able to snatch an early goal? It'll be 2 0 up, two goals to the good. He were already 1 0 up in the first leg by this time. He scored such an early goal through a Tamori mistake to send him 1 0 up inside the first four minutes on that occasion. Zach Moore will be looking to start this second leg as he ended the first one. That was in control, but didn't manage to get that pressure to pay off into a goal. Early goal. It's everything that he needs. And he scored one goal so far in the tournament. That's over three legs of feed for as well. An early goal. Will be very much welcomed here. Tried to force that ball into the path of Hummin Song. Kante in the way. As you'd expect him to be. The Chelsea team of the year for Iam. And Zach as a coach, that's his that's his role, that's his job. That's the thing that he gets paid for. He will know how to break down the overall ball side. He'll know that. And you can see, I think there, the annoyance that he's struggling to do that right now. We certainly know that tactic will be in use today. Especially by a goal in the way that it was scored. I've seen a handful of players using the overall ball side of very Low depth into their teams, even ultra-defensive from some of them, which will lead to games that there won't be many goals. Unless you know how to break it down, as you said. If you look on paper, Zach Moore as a coach will probably have plan A or B. Well, some of these players can be broke down. He's helped the likes of Tom Stokes and Gorilla there on the books. Of course, Grilla going for Sheffield United this year to represent them in the E-Premier League. And you've got Tom Stokes already qualified for Burnley on the PlayStation 4. He'll be at the E-Premier League Grand Finals. Look at that back post now. There could be an option if Daniel James can get the ball across. Andy Robertson. Just swarmed. Can this, when you get here, where'd you go? That's beautiful. Surely play across. Is it Golo Kante? He's in there as well. Sadio Mane just can't do enough as you said if you open up any space it's just completely gone within seconds you have to capitalize on such small margins of the pitch as Kante locked it back Allison with a big save he knows it as well what a chance that was for him Sadio Mane being the perpetrator into the space on that occasion I mean, so first time that we've been able to see Keister go forward in this game. Lovely little drag back, Mohamed Salah. Little dummy around the corner. And a real conviction in the cross there, just parried straight towards Allison. Yeah, he's always going to be the safe option there, is Allison to clean that up at the near post. But positive for Zach Moore as Keister squanders that opportunity to go forward. Danny James looks lively in this game as well. He was a bit poor in the first leg, but certainly looks up for it in this one. Kevin De Bruyne. Just can't find that pass. He picked up Hamid Song, but it was the killer ball that he struggled with. It's all about getting back into that position now for Zappen, which had a lot of success out on the right-hand side with Sadio Mane. Get it into him and then pull out a little step over, then burst away from your man, as we've seen him do a few times then look to get that cross. I don't want to say that we're cursing the games, Brandon, in terms of uh, high scoring, but we watched the first game and it was 1-0. 
That was only 1 0 across the board. Every other game had more than one goal. I mean, imagine if we saw the 9 1 thriller that we saw. Chance of Kaisto! Oh, just wide. There was a 6 5 in Group B on the PlayStation 4, a 4 3, a 4 1, a 9 1. Plenty of goals. We watched a 1 0. Are we watching a 1 0 again? I'm sure our time will come, Richard Buckley. Hopefully. Throughout the tournament. Forty minutes on the clock. That could be on for another penalty shootout if he does get that goal. Goalless. In his second leg. He said it perfectly. Zamor did lose his first game on a penalty shootout after one-one over two legs. Far in the back of the net has been a difficulty for both of these two. This is the first goal we've seen from Keister. Across four legs of FIFA. Will he be able to double his lead? Will Zatmore be able to find a response? Great ball into Kevin De Bruyne. Again, those step overs. Just trying to disrupt this bat line. A little hill to wheel. Didn't do anything for him. Added time of just a few minutes. I'm in song. Fake shot. Where's the shot? Get the shot away, Zatmore. And just gives away possession. I think you've got to hit that on his left foot. Just get a Tom shot off. Song. Yeah, just get a shot off. He's got that five-star weak foot if you want to use it. Mohamed Salah. Expecting to cross us into the box. He's done very well as the Egyptian. Back to Sadio Mane. Deflection out for a corner. And if he'll play it, he will play it as well. Golden opportunity for Kaiser. We've played at least four minutes. Van Dijk from post. And straight into the crowd there. Completely off target from Virgil van Dijk. Half-time, Richard. It is still advantage to the previous E Premier League Grand Finalist for Brighton of Albion. He's hanging in it. Somehow, yeah. And it's going to be Zach Moore exiting the tournament if it does stay as it is. Looking across the board as well. We've got Chilv, OGL Chilv up against Jack Beasley. That's an elimination game. Coxie against Ginger Ninja, who, again, same situation that Kaiser's in. He was in uh, the spot of being Brighton's E Premier League player last year. He's in an elimination matchup. And then also Falcon up against Conke. Both of those two losing out by a goal in their first round matchup. Six goals to five and four goals to three respectively. Forty five minutes left then for Zatmore to keep his tournament alive. Needs at least a goal. To bring him back all square. Kaiser had a golden opportunity, so did Zatmore. It wasn't the difference of a few big saves or the shot on target. This match could be in a completely different situation. Where do you think this way's which way do you think this game's gonna go, Richard? Hand on heart. I think we're going to penalties again, you know. I think there's gonna be a late goal. From Zach more than nothing in extra time to take us down to a penalty shootout. What about yourself? No prediction from you? Just thinking. <laughs> I just feel like Zach Moore has got the ability to create chances, but what we've seen from Caster so far, Richard, he can have his back against the wall and have all the pressure in the world. All it takes is one chance down the other end via a counter-attack. And he'll snatch that game. If anything, Caster's doing what Jimmy Hindle did to him in his first game. Got that one goal and then sat on it and sorted out the matchup. It's going to be a chance now, Zach Moore. <sighs> I just can't find that ball in sight. Aguero introduced as well. Onto the pitch, it's very much the kitchen sink being thrown at Kester. Oh no, oh, you no. can't do that. Oh no, is that more? You hate to see it. Something so simple. And you have to say, that could be his tournament over. Just possession given away from Allison. It's a gift of a golf I'm in song. And now he has to attack this game. Simple as that. Guys, doing one of the easiest goals he'll get all tournament long. There's just something about it, though, Richard. Represented the club last year. It's unpredictable in the club playoff 12 months ago. 
He's unpredictable again now. A shake of the head from Zach. He's an experienced player. He'll know that. He's inexcusable. This is just a sit on, isn't it, for Kaiser? We said if he gets another goal, we can sit on this lead. Two goals to the good. He's the former e Premier League grand finalist for this exact club in Brighton of Albion. Aguero to change things up to get Zach Moore a huge goal. This has to be it for him. It will be. And what an exciting 30 minutes we have left in this game. Yeah, straight from kickoff. Zach Moore hitting back down the line with Aguero. The City connection linking up there. As Kevin De Bruyne pokes it past the goalkeeper. And with 27, 28 minutes left on the clock. Zach halves the deficit. I was going to say, Aguero looks a little bit like Neil Morpay from a distance. <laughs> sure, there's a few Brighton fans out there thinking, is that Neil Morpay on the game? As much as I'd love it to be. So Aguero. Unless he has an unbelievable upgrade of some sort. Or a player of the month that would even get him close to being on the bench. Frenchman not involved, but the Argentine involved in that one. You had a player of the month, Brighton. I remember... Uh, we get close, but... We never get close Knockout enough. in the championship, he got a few, didn't he? Did he get player of the year? It was, uh, I seem to remember. Team of the season, we had a few players involved. Lewis Duncan might have even been involved this year. We had a few informed this year, though. Duffy's had an inform, Aaron Moy. Dunk. More attacking players I need, though. Of course, you've got Trossard. Yeah, the, the storyline upgraded Trossard now as well. Decent to white in that. I'm in mean, song to find Zach Moore. Second in this game. Whips it back across. Van Dyke clears that one. It's better though. From the Welshman. Near goal behind now. Really exciting last 20 minutes. Whoever loses this will be out of the competition. No second chances. After they both did lose their first matchups. Retrospectively. This is the elimination game. This is the second chance, isn't it? If you play two, lose two. When you've only got eight people in a group, someone has to go. And it's going to be two players getting eliminated after this round on the Xbox, two on the PlayStation. He's nearly there. That's a mistake at the back. Can Zatmore capitalise on it? See Humming Song trying to make that run in the box. Just two. Textbook with the pass. Intercepted perfectly well. Wins it back though. This is good from Zamor. The Guerrero is pretty fresh off the bench. Let's not forget that. He just needs to try and make a dart and run in the box. Gallo can save all people to try and get an attack moving. He's going to take his time. He's not going to rush. Switch a play. Over to Leroy Sane. All three substitutions. On the pitch right now as well, I think, for Zach. Aguero, which way is he going to go? Could have bounced anywhere. In the first leg, Zach will be thinking that bounced off my Tomore into his attacker's path. Right now, when I need it, it's... Possession given straight back to him, though. Not bouncing for me, but you can see the game plan from Keister. Everyone behind the ball and see this game out. The goal kicks are direct. He's going to have to deal with a lot of pressure, though, from Zach Moore to get there first. There's one more killer pass Sane. into Leroy Sane. Can he get that ball across little hill to hill? Is there someone in the box? And he runs out of place. Just not good enough again. Just dragged back out of play from Leroy Sane. He goes back into the custom tactics and another change coming out here from Zach. He's there, a way back into this game for him. Trailing by two goals to one. We've literally, as we said, five. not long left. This is Keister's team we're looking at right now. 4-2-3-1. This will be the team that He'll be looking at and praying that can see him into the next stage of the tour, and he will be keeping his place at the moment. Adama brought on, you see the 4 4 2 in action on the perspective of Zach as well. With four minutes left, will it be Zach Moore? You'd say the biggest name on the Xbox coming into the tournament, eliminated after round one. Four minutes left. 
Will Zatmore be crashing out the tournament? Where has he got? A little bit of fight left in him. That ball just not good enough. That's a Sadio Mane. This is Kaiser's game to throw away now. It really is. Any time to follow any second. Just keep hold of the ball. Just see out the lead. But there's going to be a lot of pressure on you from Zatmore. Has to win the header. Adama Chore does instead. Any time at two minutes. This is his to win now. Options in support. That's going to go to Min Song surely. Ball rolls around the goalkeeper. Very smart as well. Keeps possession. But for how long can he keep possession for? That's it. Wins the throw in. That's surely job done. One of the big shots, you'd have to say. Zatmore crashing out the tournament. Early doors. Keister, the former e Premier League grand finalist, will live on in the tournament. And he will move through to the next stage. He would say a bit of a shock here. One of the favourites in the tournament knocked out early doors. And Zatmore eliminated after two rounds of fixtures here in the Brighton Premier League playoff. He will be playing potentially a rematch against Jamie Hindle if he has lost to the hands of BC 9-8. Let's have a look at the goal that did win the game for Keister in this matchup. It was Hung Min Son, the goal scorer, after a Tamore mistake. Th only three minutes into this game. Kante on the edge, Roberto Firmino. Played it into De Bruyne. Tamore with the block and Son just quickest to react inside the box. And that was the the real big goal in the first leg, Brandon. It really is one of them as well. If you look at the chances that Keister had in those games, it was both from two mistakes. Obviously, that was a mistake he couldn't control, but that second goal, it was a mistake. It was an awful goal kick from Becker Allison. Led to the goal, and Zach Moore, really, that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. He did lose two goals to one. Zach Moore is out of the tournament. That is the headline news currently coming from the American Express Community Stadium here, where we are right now. He's out of the tournament, and we'll have a look at some of the chances from that match. As we said, we'll have a look at how match two did go. That was another chance from Hummin Song. But the game did finish 1-0 in the end. Plenty of chances for Zach Moore going forward. It will build it, wasn't it? A free kick on the edge of the box here. Kevin De Bruyne over it. Well, a little bit of goalkeeper movement just meant that Allison was in the right position to tip that over the bar. Roberto Firmino here playing into De Bruyne on the edge of the box where he opened up with a finesse shot. Again, Allison matching it. And as we said, there was a second link that did follow it soon after Zach Moore out the tournament. No, we'll have a look at those goals. It was an important early goal. And this was how that goal did go in the end. So you can see it again. So Allison's completely off his line. He's played it short in the hope that Andy Robertson's going to get onto that. And instead, Hummingsong just stole it off the Scottish player's feet and just tapped into the back of the net. Yeah, just a mistake coming in. Son capitalising on the error inside the box there from Allison. Zach did get a goal back, but it was in. Vain here, Aguero down the line, fake shot inside of his man, Kevin De Bruyne turns and scoops it into the back of the net, but it wasn't enough, Brandon. It wasn't enough indeed, that was how the game did finish in the end, two goals to one, Keister as we said represented Brighton of Albion last year in the first ever E Premier League tournament, he's going to be doing it again if he can continue this winning formula. Of course, maybe not leaving it as late as he did because if he does lose his next game, he will be out of the tournament. But that is job done, Richard. He does enough and that winner will be joined right now with Matthew Jackson. Thanks, Brandon. Right, I'm joined today by Ryan Caster. Going into this game, it was a must win. You're in the loser's bracket. Talk us through the game. Uh, it was a lot of defending from me. I managed to get a lucky goal off my own kickoff and I just managed to hold it on for the rest of the game. You've just eliminated one of this year's favourites for the tournament. That must be you with some confidence. Uh, I defended very well, but again, we keep going on. Anyone can win a game of FIFA at this tournament, and I've got to keep going game by game. Last year, you were the finalist. Um, you're in the loser's bracket at the moment. Uh, how does that change your mentality? Uh, it's just knockout instead of semi-final final it's now last 16 quarter final semi-final final so it just adds that little bit of focus i guess no lots no second chances and let's finally just talk about that i would say quite an easy goal you would say differently you said it was a scream earlier uh i got a thankful pass out from zach's goalkeeper and thankfully i managed to score it i can say it's an easy goal but 
they do miss quite often. And thankfully, this time it went in. Well, congratulations. Good luck in the next round. Um, just before we get into the next round, we caught up with Dan Byrne, Glenn Murray and Steve Sidwell to talk about mental health. The Premier League is supporting the Heads Up campaign to kickstart a conversation about mental health. And I'm here with Steve Sidwell and Dan Byrne to chat about our experiences. The first year when I packed up was all right because I was busy, whereas this year I've missed it so much more. Yeah. this season. For some reason, I don't know why, but Christmas as well, because I think the Amazon one with all yeah. the games on, it was just there, yeah. non-stop watching. I was like, I really miss it this year. I think the longer you hold on to it as well, you know, like, if there's something that is worrying you, like, it's fine to worry about it for like a day, whatever, and that, but it's when you're like, holding on to it for weeks and weeks and weeks and not talking about it, because like, I think once you've said it out loud, like, sometimes you realise like, how stupid it's half of the yeah, stuff is that you're worrying you about. Get it you just say it and then think, I can't even believe I've been worrying about that. But when it's in your head, like it's hard to, like you play tricks on yourself a little bit, and like you sort of like convince yourself of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's where, like now, it's a little bit better where we can sort of have these conversations with each other and not be like a, not feel uncomfortable having these sort of conversations. So. It's a balance, isn't it? Because people think, am I? Uh, is this a mental health issue? Am I depressed? Am I just having a down day? It's, it's quite confusing, isn't it? And it's confusing because no one talks about it. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas. I mean, if it was an open conversation that you could have around lunch with the players, and they'd be like, oh, you say, Joe, what? I'm, I'm struggling today, actually. Yeah. I don't even know why I can't really put my finger on it. Joe, oh, I, I, Joe, I had that last week, or Joe, and this got me through it, or this, whereas it's, it's just sort of like shelved to a side. I think that's the persona as well that footballers bring on themselves, don't they? Because they want to be a private life and they yeah, keep everything private. They don't want to bring it up. The more that we speak about it and do it, like I think it's good that like we give people tools to to deal with it. So like if you haven't feeling anxious, like thinking why do I feel anxious, like, yeah. like a lot of it, like say when I was struggling a little bit, like if I would go out, like have a drink and stuff like that, because it would like numb your emotions. If you know what I mean, like you would you'd feel fine when you were having a drink and stuff because of that, but then you'd wake up the next day and it would be ten times worse. That sort of thing. Physical health obviously important in what we do. Mm -hmm. Mental health as important. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think if not more, like, I think it's, it is it's more. hard to like, like if you've got the doctors and you're feeling ill, they can tell you exactly what's wrong with you, do you know what I mean? Whereas like, it's hard, like you, you can get caught up in your mind, like what is it, is it anxiety, are you just not feeling okay, like is it depressed, like what I, is it? Do you I know personally feel that mental health is probably the most important thing for me to, to play well on the field, like we've got like, we've obviously got physios keep us physically right, we've got a nutritionist to make sure we eat right and then obviously we haven't got as much mental health to open it up now but I feel as though if I go and have fish and chips before a game which is like a big no-no, yeah. I could still get through it if my mind was right. Yeah, Whereas if my mind isn't right and I eat well leading up into it then you're not getting it out. Well that is the engine isn't it? Yeah. I mean if that is right and in tip top condition it just drives this. I mean you say about physical health you could be fit and that but if you wake up in the morning and you go I don't want to go to the gym today then you don't want to get there. Yeah. I think it's got much easier over the years, isn't it? Especially over the last two years where, I mean, you'll have realised this since you've been in the Premier League, the, how your profile has changed mm -hmm. as a player. And obviously I know we know the club, but as an individual as well. And when you see them powerful people on TV that are heroes to fans and that, and they see people like yourself going through it or other sports icons that are going through it, they're like, wow, if they can open up and speak, then it uh, filters down I the shame. I think people think we're, we're immune to it, are Yeah, well, exactly. We're just normal at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah, all human beings, yeah. So, like, everyone can suffer from it, doesn't matter what water life you come from. Yeah. Like, it's just how everyone can deal with it. Like.
Well, welcome back once again to the E Premier League Club Playoff event here at the American Express Community Stadium. Of course, the home of Brighton Ove Albion. We've had a few shocks already uh, this evening. We've had Zach Moore out the tournament after just two games. Kai up back from the death, you would say, in some ways, because we didn't see a convincing performance from him for the first two legs. Second two legs, he grinded out a result. In the four minutes that we were away as well, I actually went over to the players' area and I watched a penalty shootout Ooh. between, it was Ginger Ninja, last year's uh, finalist, and Coxie. Did, and he, did he stay in? All I'm going to say is one of the players scored five penalties in a row and didn't miss. The other player? Scored four. He won 5-4. Mm. Are, are you in suspense? Do you want to know? Let us know. Who is it? The question is, has Dan Hilliard... Former E Premier League finalist with Brighton of Albion. Is he in the tournament still or has Coxie gone through and knocked him out? He went through. He went he through. Five, four. Dan Hilliard's through. Yep. Goes by the Tawzi Ginger Ninja. He's in two. He's still in the tournament. He's in another loser's bracket game. Has to win again to even get anywhere near uh, pushing through into the final. Yeah, let's have a look at the brackets as they are currently standing right now. So Jamie did beat BC. Uh, Nine eight three goals to nil, meaning that Jamie is through to the playoffs finals. It's going to be Keister up against BC nine eight in the losers bracket final to see who advances to the playoffs. Looking at Group B on Xbox, Brandon, it was another penalty shootout victory this time for Oscar. Also, an unbelievable turnaround in that elimination a losers game. Jack Beasley, as we said, making a return to competitive FIFA. Won that, five goals to three, knocking out uh, OGL, uh, Chill. And uh, as you said, he'll be up against Impact in that elimination match. Whoever wins that will make the playoff game. And if they win that, they will be into an Xbox final. Winner will take it all. Of course, we'll have a look at some of the other matches as well that have happened over on the PlayStation. Other legs, there's one of them for you. We expected big things from Ethan Richard. That's exactly what we have got. He is into the playoffs. 4-0 win against It's Cam. Yeah, Ethan going through... Very comfortable. Seven goals, one conceded so far here in the tournament. Looking at PS4, Group B, the final round of fixtures before we find our final elimination match. It was Amir winning five goals to three up against Scarf. So Amir goes through. It's going to be Conke versus uh, Scraffer. Scarf, Scraffer. I, I think like that was Scarf. our problem last year. That I was, actually like Scarf. I like Scarf. It's Scraffer. Though. We have to say Scraffer. He is in sure that elimination mind. game. Um, uh, I remember last year. We, we, is, it, is, it, is it Scarf or is it Scraffer? I remember last year. That's the we kept saying. He's back again this year. He's brought enough of us already. Um, but it's worth pointing out, as you said, Richard. Still plenty more games to come today. We're going into the obviously to the next stage of, of the tournament now as well. We're going into that elimination game. We have to win to stay. And if you stay in, we're into the final four. Of course, you win that and you go into that big final game. Both players from last year's E Premier League victory in Brighton are in an elimination matchup as well. <laughs> Who is it going to be? Is it going to be Keister <laughs> or Ginger Ninja? I'm, I am just nervous. Um, you caught up with Ginger Ninja, uh, Dan, a little bit late, a little bit early on, I should say. Let's hear what he had to say when Brandon spoke to him. So I'm here, we're joined by Dan Hilliard, obviously played for the Albion last year in the E Premier League Grand Finals. Looking to do it again this year? Yeah, hopefully so. Hopefully I can play some good FIFA and yeah, repeat last year. Obviously at the LAN event itself, wasn't a tournament to remember. We did go out in the groups, we had Palace in there as well. Of course, we, we can't be losing to them again this year if we do make it uh, as far as the finals. What did you learn from last year, your first ever uh, competitive FIFA LAN event? Well, it's just nothing like you've ever experienced at home. It's just a completely different environment, just... So much experience from it, you know, trying to keep your calm, keep your head and yeah, just learn a lot from it. And how's FIFA 20 been for you this year? Obviously, for champions, I'm guessing we've been playing a little bit. I know you work as a full-time job as well compared to maybe some other guys that have qualified for this event. But have you kind of prepared yourself best for this tournament, done everything you could? Yeah, I've done as much as I can. You know, it's, it's just FIFA, it's a bit hit and miss really. You win some, you lose some, but I'm trying to get as consistent as I can and try and play as much as I can. And I asked Ryan as well, as you know, he's been invited back this year uh, after playing in the E-Premier League Grand Finals. One Brighton player that might make the bench, or I could be cheeky and say the first team. I doubt that's going to happen. Uh, we haven't got any team of the years. No, yeah, unfortunately, the way FIFA goes, uh, none of the Brighton team actually would make the first team. But, yeah, definitely put someone like Trossard on the bench or something like that. Yeah. 
Well, good luck, obviously, Dan, as we said, back again here at the American Express Community Stadium. Can he go back to back in the E Premier League Grand Final? Now, if I had to be, you know, really critical there from last year in the E Premier League Grand Final, I'd probably say that we saw a stronger performance from Dan in the E Premier League Grand Finals compared <laughs> to what we saw against Keister because he did pick up a few points, although we did get, you know, he didn't go through the group stage. I remember a game perfectly. I went into a penalty shootout against Wolves Turin at the time. Also, we had some big names in there as well. Crystal Palace, as I mentioned, we did lose to them at the time. That was Dammy that was playing for I them. I still feel like you're a little bit bitter about, about this because you keep we're I've a year on it. and you, you've brought it up at least three times. How long have we been live? Like an hour and a half. Well, they are playing against each other as well this weekend in this exact stadium, Brighton against Palace. Yes. Um, uh, Want some tickets as well, so... Want some tickets? <laughs> having a brilliant day so far. <laughs> I'm in the Amex. I've had a tour of the stadium. I'm commentating on FIFA at Brighton. Won some tickets as well for the weekend. You got a Toby Carberry tonight as well to attend. <laughs> Top off the day with the perfect meal. It must be worth saying as well, guys. You guys can earn some prizes at home. We teased it a little bit earlier today. We're giving away a signed Brighton of Albion shirt on the club's Twitter. Of course, official BHAFC. You can win your, uh, the shirt there. Also, we're giving away copies of FIFA 20 signed by all of the team at decent. Brighton. I'm, I've already tried to steal one. I don't know yet. Um, uh, over on Instagram, official BHAFC as well. Just like and comment over there. But of course, the way you're going to win it is by staying tuned into this stream throughout this evening. Yeah, good prizes. Very good prizes as well. It's good to see that uh, clubs are giving incentives to people watching and also the, the players themselves. I know Man United last year with yep. their E-Premier League event um, when it was Jonesy and Kyle who won. They got a, a signed Pogba shirt, the Man United, the Xbox player, the PS player got a signed Rashford shirt and then they both got a sort of training day experience going down to the club and seeing the facilities there. So it's great to see that the, the football clubs are taking these qualifiers, the ones that are doing LAN events, I'd say more seriously, they're investing time into it, they're investing um, sort of money into it, doing live streams and it's only going to pay off in the long run. It certainly is as well and it, we keep talking about it. this is what the Premier League is about. It's the next best thing for any fan. You heard Zach Moore say he might be at the tournament but he said everyone wants to play in the Premier League. This is the next best thing playing for your club, your desired club of choice. Of course all 20 of them you have the opportunity to play for the 16 people that were here trying to play for this club in Brighton have Albion. Such a special club. Some names have gone out of the tournament as we said though already. We've got People still in the tournament. The two players, as we said, that represent the club last year, still hanging in the tournament by the skin of their teeth in the loser bracket. I've also made a um, sort of investigation. Okay. And when I was walking around with the players earlier, I think the shapeshifters are on the accounts. I in any a, starting teams, though? I saw a CDM David Luiz Did starting. You? I also saw a right-wing Lucas Mora. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, well, something else you did a little bit earlier, Richard. You were on rapid fire duty with the question. 60 seconds there to answer. We'll check out some of those now. Uh, hi, I'm Kyra Moore. Look, uh, PS4, it's Campster 007. What's your go-to formation in FIFA 20? 4-2-3-1, uh, no. Favourite skill move? Uh, probably the elastico. Most effective player in FIFA? Probably N'Golo Kante. Ronaldo or Messi? Messi, 100%. Best pack ball in FIFA 20? No one. Cruz. Long range screamer or skill goal? Uh, long range screamer. Possession or all out attack? Uh, all out attack. Favourite Brighton player? Matt Ryan. Matty Ryan, favourite player. Tony uh, Cruz. Brighton of Albion. Best pack ball. Tony I Cruz. I feel sorry for you. It's not great, is it? Yours, yours this year, best pack ball? Ooh. Ronaldo. Um, I did pack Red Ronaldo, but that was a. That wasn't a monitor again. Do you know what I mean? I, I yeah. didn't sell him. True, um, true. One to watch Ben Yedder. I packed him early doors in FIFA, sold him for like 400k. Um, so yeah, but I like those little rapid fire. We've got more of them coming out throughout the uh, throughout the evening. Get to know the players. Some do it more rapid than others, and I want a little bit here quick. and there with a the microphone. But we got through it. I mean, didn't that we? was a personal best. That that's about what eight seconds and about twenty. <laughs> Sorry, eight questions, about 20 seconds. We'll see how quick they do go throughout the rest of the tournament. Of course, we're giving you some of those VODs that we were able to film earlier today here at the Amex. We have got a big game coming up, though. I'm going to have a preview of that right now. We're going to be looking over to this man, as we said. It's Camster. He was the guy that just went for your rapid-fire question. He's in an elimination game up against Ginger Ninja. As you would say, Daniel Hilliard represented the club last year in the E Premier League Grand Finals. He has it all to do this time, though, Richard. Whoever loses is out of the tournament. These two have already matched in the tournament so far. It was Hamster winning four goals to one. 
Om vi går en hamster och okay, och Det är inget. Hamster. 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 Whatever we want to go by. He's you already beaten hamster, go hamster. four goals to one in the first round of group stages. They then matched up in the latter round. Here we are in the elimination game. Yep, whoever wins this, as you said, Richard, will go into those playoffs and have a chance to still represent the club. Whoever loses over these two legs, it will be job done. And unfortunately, they will be leaving the stadium empty-handed, not one of the trophies that are sat next to us right now. But Daniel Hilliard just went survived. down to the wire, as you said, in that last game. A very tight, contested match. A penalty shootout victory. He won five goals to four against Coxie. Light drama here on the PlayStation 4. Well, we're underway for our third game of the evening. It will be Chinja Ninja kicking from left to right in the Brighton of Albion home strip. And it's It's Campster from right to left. As we said, fourth seed in this tournament. Had to go through, go via the online qualification for Daniel Hilliard on the left-hand side of your screen. You can see his face camp. Got the re-invite from the club. Didn't have to play. What position would you rather be in? I would rather qualify online so I can play against some of the players that I'm going to play against at the event as well and they know where the big dog is coming in. <laughs> Do you see Campster there? What? I was going to say, do you not see Campster just giving the, the webcam the eye? I write that. Entertainer. He might do it again for us. He definitely knows that he's on stream. He I mean, can probably hear us talking. I mean, if it, my question is, how's he playing with one hand? <laughs> but you'll see it in a minute. He might just go and itch his face and just controlling it one hand and I maybe it's pretty well. easy for him. So he's kicking from right to left, as we said. In the away strip of Brighton of Albion. Elimination game. Whoever loses will crash out the tournament. Kevin De Bruyne trying to find that space into Hummin Song. He's done very well just to pull out both centre backs there. I'm a big fan of the little glances to the camera. Has he done any more? Yeah, I saw it. He just had a little. Yep. Addressing the audience at home. Maybe he's got some family friends watching on our live stream on YouTube. And my Albion TV, we appreciate you guys tuning. As we said, plenty of prizes for you guys to get your hands on. Over on the club's Twitter and Instagram pages. Hopefully. We won't need to go to a penalty shootout. It will be decided in normal time across these two legs. Other names you said in the competition still, Richard. You've got BC98. And Keister on the Xbox, Jamie Hindle doing enough to book himself a place in the playoffs. Oscar scoring goals for fun, 13 he scored so far in the tournament. And of course, Ethan, who actually did beat his cams to four goals to nil to book a place in the playoffs. And just one more name as well that is worth talking about is Amar. Well, Amir, I should say. He is into the playoffs, not messing around at all. I haven't been able to follow any of those two yet on the stream. That will change. As you move into the semi-finals after this game. Patient build-up. It's going to be Lucas. First time we've seen him on stream and involved in a pros team. And that's it, Lucas Mora, the storyline Lucas Mora. Oh, that's nice, De Bruyne dropping the shoulder oh, into the shot. And more importantly, into the finish. For its Kempster. Fantastic goal, 22 minutes in. Smashing it in at that near post, Kevin De Bruyne. A little bit of a tight angle, but high and powerful past the goalkeeper at the near post. We've only got four games currently taking place, and it's the four elimination matchups. That's Keister versus BC98, Jack Beasley versus Impact. As you can see here, Camster against Ginger. And also Kogai versus Scarfer, Scruffer. As we said, 1 0. The first goal in this game has gone in. Tamori, the player we have seen involved quite a bit so far 
Early goal as we said. Coming in, a fantastic finish was as well. Kevin De Bruyne able to drop the shoulder on his man and pull through. Hummin Son just can't get around the corner. See exactly what he was trying to do. See possession turned over back there for Camster. 1 0 up with 30 minutes gone on the clock. And he's holding it. With Trent. Good chance through here for Sadio Mane. Ginger coming forward here. Kevin De Bruyne intercepted by Scream Roberto Firmino as Lucas Moura loses out to Ginger. Coming forward here, Firmino on the edge looking to play into Kevin De Bruyne, but ball intercepted and possession turned over. Trent Alexander Arnold down this right hand side. To Moura, fizzed into Lucas Moura, heel to heel, looking to get away from his man. Another itch of the nose there from Camster. Man of many talents. I was going to say, the best thing we've seen from him is just the old glare to camera. Sadio Mane. Into Hummin Song. Firmino. Back to goal, Sadio Mane, just trying to get a shot away, unfortunately. Yeah, a little rushed, wasn't it, from Sadio Mane. On the edge of the box, the opportunity looked to open up. The fourth official has indicated there will be a minimum of two minutes of added time. Added time of just two minutes in this. As we said, it is 1-0 at the halfway point and I believe we are actually looking at a different game here this is actually looks as if it is Keister up against BC98 it will be Keister actually on the Xbox not this PlayStation game and Keister is down by a goal to nil tell you what I do love watching a bit of Keister though <laughs> on a, uh... he had to camouflage himself to, uh, to try and get away with that <laughs> this is not Daniel Iliad we are watching it is the Xbox uh, elimination game, as we said, Keister down by a goal to nil. BC 9 8 after going into the winner's bracket, winning his first original game, then dropping down into the loser's bracket. Fantastic finish, though, from him. Kevin De Bruyne with the only goal in this game. Yeah, he won his first game against Zach Moore, three goals to one on penalties, and then losing to Jamie Hindle, 3 0. We are going to jump into the game that we were originally looking to get involved in, and there was a few goals that we did actually intend to miss in that game. We're just spreading the love here on the Brighton EPL game. Sadio Mane smashing past the goalkeeper at the near post. And by the looks of things, Richard, you said, as you said, this is the PlayStation game that we were originally meant to be watching. Daniel Hilliard conceding early doors there. It is actually 3-0 at the break in that game. It's not been I wonder the Camster start. Wonder Camster itching his face five minutes into the game. It's because he just scored. For him, and we'll see the second goal. Now, this was 32 minutes, and this is where he's probably glanced at the camera. He wondered why, what touch that is from Virgil van Dijk. I've no idea how he's just turned his man, flicks it up into Kevin de Bruyne, and a simple tapping in the end. 33 minutes in the cock, uh, of course, to its camster to go 2 0 up. He was able to find a third just shortly after in the first half. Not the way that he wanted to start this game, Richard, at all. Yeah, not the ideal situation, is it, to be 3 0 down? At half-time, Hung Min Son played in behind and then just smashed over the top of the goalkeeper. Allison looking like a mouse in that goal as it is currently 3-0 to Camster at the half-time break. This is live gameplay right now, jumping back into it in the first leg in an elimination matchup. Yeah, he's got so much to do, hasn't he, Daniel, if he wants to try and pull his way back into this game. As Ginger Ninja, as we said, he pulled himself through a penalty shootout in his last elimination game where he simply had to win. He went right down to the wire there, but 3-0 down this early on into it. He's got so much to do. Of course, there's still a second leg to come up, but if he goes down and scores, a, concedes again, Richard, 4-0 down in the second it's leg, it's just not going to happen, it. is it? 
We had Mara is actually on the field for uh, Ginger Ninja in this game. I don't know if he's just been subbed on or not, but a new uh, face. Yeah, I would suggest that that is the shapeshifter, Riyad Mahrez, with a change of work rates as well. Actually, a change of position as well from right to central cam. I'm in song. Mohamed Salah linking up well, looking for a fourth is. Camster, as we said, leading by three goals to nil so far. It's been the first half of dreams from him. Even going into the second leg with a 3-0 lead, you've got to think that's pretty much game over. Especially from what we've seen so far from Daniel in the tournament. Hasn't scored too many goals. Yeah, if you look at his, his games that he's actually played in, Group A, he lost four goals to one. Um, did Ginger Ninja, he then won 5-4 against Coxie. But when these two matched, they've already matched probably what, an hour ago? And he, were four, he beat him 4-1 over the course of their two legs. We're on for a bigger victory right now for Camster. It's never going to be easy as well, Rich, when you rematch up against a player you've already lost to in the tournament. Of course, that is what the double elimination bracket can bring. There's 25 minutes left or so left in this first leg. Just even a goal. Four Ginger Ninja to take into this second leg will be everything for him. Doesn't seem like it's going to happen, though. His camster's been so good going forward. Yeah, it really has. He's been clinical, hasn't he? 65 minutes gone, 3-0 up. Just a dummy there, opening up the space for Sadio Mane. Fake shot inside the box. Kevin De Bruyne back doing the defensive dirty work to keep this at a reasonable scoreline. Well, he's been a man playing up for the cameras as well. Don't blame him, every single goal he scored. That's been a decent finish. See a pause cues there by Ginger Ninja. Question is, who is he going to bring on? He's got Riyad Mahrez on the ball now. Could he get a shot away of him? Went for that scoop turn as soon as it lashed into his path. The Algerian forward just couldn't pull it off though. So we have seen a lot of space. Some crazy score lines, Richard, so far at this EPL club club. We had a 9 1 <laughs> earlier today. 6 5, 4 3. But we've been 3 0 up. Three first half goals as well. It really sets you up in the perfect way possible. Maybe you can find a fourth here if he's. Fortunate enough to get into a pocket of space. I'm in song. That's nice. Sadio Mane spreads it as far as Angolo can say. Mane just turned into the oncoming Trent Alexander Arnold. Daniel James brought on to try and inject a bit of pace into that front four, but I'm not sure it's going to be the correct change, to be honest. I think you need a, The problem is with the likes of Daniel James and Ishmael Assar and these players who are ridiculously quick I just don't back the the composure in front of goal I'd much rather bring on a sour we'll get one more chance or defended by N'Golo Kanta I definitely agree to that point which is a lot it seems you know with those players they've got that pace which is you know the attraction of using them but they haven't got anything else really about them have they have they got the ability to hold their nerves you said that composure in front of goal when a big chance does appear in what the 85th 90th minute where you need them to score a goal that's just what they're lacking i'm in song chance now for daniel hilly up can't get the shot away well defended david louise just a toe on the ball wasn't it from david louise to poke it away from the defensive and offensive play from daniel mane down his left hand side de bruyne back again doing the defensive work just getting any sort of body part on the ball to stop it being that dangerous pass into the box. And the 90 minutes in this game are nearly up. It's been a fantastic first leg for Camstup. 3 0. He does lead. And it was three goals that came in the first 45 minutes for him. Trying to look for a fourth if he'll have enough time. That ball just blocked that passing line. 
Another box to box midfielder, the Frenchman of Angolo can say. Last chance for Ginger Ninja. Just a goal would be something to take, but again in the final third, everything is perfect from Campster. Big victory. Big, big victory right there for Campster. Seeing out the 3 0 lead in the first leg. Now he's going into leg number two with a huge advantage. A huge, huge advantage for him. Three goals to the good. You just don't see this scoreline being turned around. As you said, you spoke about some of the previous results we have seen from Ginger Ninja in this tour. We had to go to a penalty shootout to the side he would beat in this loser bracket game. Campster, though, three goals to the good. We don't often see those you know, turnarounds as such happen across two legs, especially with how FIFA 20 can be right now with the overall ball side of how you're able to defend the depth you can implement. He needs a massive turnaround. Does Daniel right now because, I mean, the game were won in the first half. Let's be honest. We joined the game in the second half and there really wasn't much to, to shout about. But in that first 45 minutes, quick fire goals. Kevin De Bruyne being the catalyst to that attacking play. And the second leg will be getting on the way any second now. Both players just selecting their kits for it. Remember, he did get an auto qualification spot in this tournament after representing the club last year. Hasn't been able to back up the same performances as of yet. Do you feel there's any added pressure on the two players who are coming to try and defend their spot? They've both, you know, honestly struggled. Um, both in the exact same situation in the elimination match. Right now, having to make a run through the loser's bracket. I think they both obviously had a taste of that E-Premier League Grand Final. And what an opportunity it is, is that's, that's something I you know, picked up from both players. An amazing opportunity to represent your club in Brighton of Albion. Well, that might not have been a tournament to remember. It's still a fantastic opportunity that you're always going to remember. I think that's the difference. They want to taste that again this year. Unfortunately, we haven't seen performances that deserve an E-Premier League Grand Final spot. As of yet, from Ginger Ninja. This is it now. Three goals down. Needs to turn it around. It's simple as that. It will be Campster kicking from left to right. And Daniel Hilliard in the away. Bright of Albion strip from right to left. He needs three goals and he needs an early start. The, fir the first goal and the next goal in this game decides it for me. If he gets it, Ginger Ninja and goes 3-1. Potential for some magic here at the Amex. But if Camster does score first in this matchup and... Goes 4 nil up. That's all she wrote. Just want a free kick. I mean, Song. Like a bit of a tackle that referee wasn't too happy about on the edge of the box. Kevin De Bruyne. Just move the keeper just into the middle of the goal. Played short. I mean, Song. Firmino. Back to Trent Alexander Arnold again. The man that was over the three kick. And it comes to nothing. It's like, what are you, what are you thinking in that situation? You want to play it short. See, for a direct shot comes in, all the ball goes forward. Yeah. I'm really not too sure. Son on the edge here looking to create, but there's so many blue and white striped shirts back there. Sadio Mane just can't get round him, can he? That fake shot just doesn't seem to be effective. Chicken just a direct shot from the free kick. Just get something on target. Unless you've got something in your mind that you know you want to do from the short free kick, but... For a lot of players, they play short from a free kick and then it's just, they're almost stuck. They don't know what to do. You also are worried about getting counter-attacked on. If you do play short and then lose the ball or if the goalkeeper saves it and catches it. He's still pushing for the first goal in this game and you do wonder, all the pressure he has been putting on Campster, will it pay off in the end? Not yet. On the alternative side, there will be gaps that will appear for Hamin Song to maybe exploit. Really on some sort of scissor kick on the edge of the box there. Yeah, I don't know what happened then. He, he sort of headed the ball, but he were a control as well. Like, very strange animation there. If he'd have got a goal from that, I'm sure that Ginger Ninja would have been bitterly disappointed. First 20 minutes for Ginger Ninja. 
Three nil down though. Well, that's something that hasn't changed. I'm sure Cam still be saying you can have all the possession you want in the world. As long as you're not finding my back of the net, it's not going to bother me. It's trying to very interesting to see Roberto Firmino in that CDM role. Next to Kante. He just offers you so much, the screen Firmino. He, he's like a Brazilian Hullet with five-star skills, just less bulky. I'd, I'd go out and less, even say. Less hair as well. Yeah, obviously Hullet's got the physical attributes, but Firmino with the five-star skills... He sounds ludicrous saying it, but he is the Premier League root of it. In all honesty, the screen for me, you know that is specifically. Obviously, on those screen lines, we see some crazy upgrades to certain stats. You have to remember how long ago that promo was. He's still in the teams. Still a vital part of all of these teams. Have a chance there from Ginger Ninja. No real conviction on the shot. A routine save for Alison Becker. As you said, one goal will decide everything of how this game will go. The Campster does get a goal. I have to say it's game over. We'll be 4 0 up across these two legs if Ginger Ninja can get one. It's the start of a comeback for him. Gotta be offside, surely. Him and the Bruyne are doing enough. To hang on there, that team of the year fire. Manchester City map. After an impressive 2019. He had a couple of chances, didn't he, in the first spell, but since then it there's really not been too much going for Ginger Ninja and this game is certainly slowing. It's probably gone from fourth to probably second gear it's cruising right now this matchup there's no real urgency there's no real pace to the game this is everything that Campstall would love right now yeah let Just the game cruising. slow down I'm three it up I am cruising at the moment so this is this loser bracket final whoever wins will go into the playoffs still a lot to do Technically, the semi finals of the PlayStation 4 side here at the club playoff event at the Premier League. He said he needed to go in the first half. He's got five minutes left to find it. Ooh. Robertson just doing enough there. But if Trent had got that pass off, could have been dangerous. For Camster at the back. He's given the ball away a few times here. It's an awful pass at the back. Try and do his best with this last chance of the half. Roberto Firmino, he said it perfectly, Richard. People will be looking and saying, why is he in CDM? He has been. An important part of every single pro's team, alongside N'Golo Kante. You partner alongside a box-to-box -box midfielder. Both of them are just such a nuisance on the edge of the box. Chance Robertson again. Team of the Year Robertson. When you've got three of your back four, three of the Team of the Year players, all Liverpool, all Premier League. We've never had a Premier League squad this Team of the Year heavy. And... What I mean by that is usually the team of the year is super Liga heavy, super um, sort of Barcelona or Real Madrid heavy. Whereas this year, what is the, the Van Dijk, Trent, Allison, Robertson, Kante, De Bruyne, Mane? Seven of the eleven team of the year players were Liverpool. Crazy. Uh, sh I should say were Premier League. Unbelievable stats. Yeah, team of the year Premier League players really are. Just so good and such a vital part of every single team. If you look back to last year as well, Richard, if you make a comparison to the Premier League playoffs last year, the club playoffs when we were there, we saw the likes of Rashford. Rashford. Bamiang. Foot future stars Gwen Doozy used. Um, some real out there picks. Patrick Van Arnold at left back. I remember the footness, footness Van Arnold. 
One of the bigger changes, though. We had Mares, a starting player. That's a gift for oh, Hamin Song. Just can't get the shot away. David Louise, right place, right time to do enough there. It's 45 minutes away from moving on to the semi finals. An extra goal would do it. Aguero inside the Broider. Massive save, Allison. He just to time. keep him in the game. He had time to take a touch there, actually. Did. Camster. Ginger Ninja looking to play that ball in behind. David Luiz has come a little bit short, actually, on that one. Pulled out of position as well. However, does win this will be in a semi-final game up against Ethan Chance now once again defended well right place right time Virgil van Dijk that time I can see Ethan just out of the corner of my eye watching this entire game in its full 90 minute two-legged matchup trying to break it down and work out Oh, Camster is setting up because he will be moving through at this stage. 3 0 up he is. Don't get me wrong, I've been super impressed with how Ginger Ninja has had a lot of possession. He's created a lot of chances, but he's done nothing with them. It's been very. I mean, you even say a little bit. Even slow, a little bit pedestrian in the final third. It's a case of getting in and around the box, Richard, and there's not that that final spark, something to create a chance, a little hill to hill, a little ball roll, a drag back into the shot. It just hasn't happened. It's been too textbook on the edge of the box, and it's been readable. Time after time, David Louise, Virgil van Dijk, they've both been winning it. He's cruising, as you said. He, he really is. He's, he's coasting, isn't he? He's holding on to the ball. He defended when he needed to. And he is offering the threat going forward. It's a prime example as well of just a good first leg, or even a good first half, can shape up the two legs. He scored all his goals in the first half, three of them for the 38th minute, in fact. That's all he's needed. Look for a fourth and his first goal in this second leg. Could it be 4 0 in aggregate? Just couldn't perform the drag back that he was after. If you are just joining us, these two matched up in the first round of the day. It was a 4 1 victory for Camster, so he's looking to do the double over Ginger Ninja. Bernardo Silva introduced late on for Camster. That'll be the. Uh moments the player moments SBC did it myself thought it was very very good value at the time right side of midfielder little did we know that there was going to be more right side of midfielders in the Premier League than I have hot dinners well it looks like he's going to be keeping a clean sheet at this rate his camster as you said they did play before in the tournament and it's going to be the exact same situation now have a shot. Camster, hit it. You're 22 yards out. Was he going to hit it? No. Kevin De Bruyne will do something else. He'll just dummy over that played short. Direct shot, surely. I'm in song, fake shot. Back to Bernardo Silva. He'll try and finesse that in on his left foot. Falling straight back again. Sadio Mane, it's just his fake shot in the box. It's just not gaining any space that a number of these players actually want. Chance again building on the edge of the box you see when you're watching these games right now how important a elastico is just in that area because you, you just don't have a player who can do it you try, you potentially try and fall from Maris into the team so you can pull off an elastico but having players like R9 and Cruyff Cristiano Ronaldo Neymar Mbappe who can just whip out an elastico so quickly oh, it's a game changer nice. again Prime example of it, Richard. And that was Mahrez then, and he didn't do it. Just something else going forward. And as you said, they did match up earlier on in the tournament, the first game for both of these two. 
They did play it in this EPL club club. Kamster did win four goals to one. It really is the same situation back in this loser bracket elimination game. We're eight minutes away from it, but it will be Kamster up against Ethan in one of our PlayStation 4 semi-finals. We'll give you an update on all the other semi-finals as well that are happening around us. The question is, will Kester keep himself in the tournament as well? It means that there will be a new spot and a new player on the PlayStation 4 for the Albion in the Premier League Grand Finals. I'll tell you what, Kamster, he's, uh, he'll be looking at that spot thinking, if I can potentially take down Ethan, it's, it's mine. We said that he was going to be the, the favourite coming into the tournament. Ethan, and he's backed it up thus far at the Amex. A 3-1 and a 4-0 victory. A little bit of revenge potentially as well for Camster as Ethan beat him 4-0 in that game to send him through to the semi-finals. Some of the games do blow for full time. And then all around us. Wait for the final whistle here, and it will be Ginger Ninja crashing out the tournament. The PlayStation 4 representative of the Albion. Unfortunately, won't be going any further in the tournament. It's Camster, though. Back-to-back -back wins. They played before. And they're matched again in the elimination bracket, Richard. He does enough to set up a tantalising semi-final up against Ethan. A little bit of revenge potentially on his mind. We often say that when players match in groups and they're matching the knockouts, that it's a, I should say, a sort of switch around, a revenge fixture. However, Camster doubling down on his victories against Ginger Ninja. Let's have a look at the goals that did separate the matchup. They were all scored. In the first leg, inside the first six minutes here, Roberto Firmino played into Son just around the corner for Sadio Mane, smashed past the goalkeeper at the near post. Well, the interesting thing about it was as well, Rich, is that all the goals were scored in the first leg, as you alluded to. And in the first half, he scored three goals after 38 minutes. This was touch. game number two. I just, just what, what is this touch? That touch is ridiculous from Van Dijk. From Virgil van Dijk. He's just kind of pivoted on the ball. It's ended up being like a flick up into Kevin De Bruyne at the back post. And as we said, they were all scored within the first half. This next goal coming up in a minute, we'll see. But that touch is I'd ridiculous. I'd expect to see that on uh, Volta. Never mind Virgil van Dijk inside the box. Son smashing past the goalkeeper there. Inside 39 minutes. Three goals and job done for Camster, who moves on to the semi-finals, Brandon Smith. Yeah, she said it'll be up against Ethan. Man, they scored a handful of goals already today, only conceding one so far. That's the full-time result. As we said, the previous PlayStation 4 representative of the Albion will crash out in Ginger Ninja. That means there will be a guaranteed new PlayStation 4, uh, of course, representative this time around, which does excite me a little bit. There's going to be a new man picking up that trophy, Richard, in just a few hours' time. Yeah, who's it going to be? That's the question. Um, we know two of the semi-finalists, Camster yep. and Ethan. The other matches we will find out very soon indeed. But Camster, with a 3-0 victory, let's hear what he has to say. Thanks, Richard. Yes, I'm joined by Karim here. 3-0 win there over Ginger Ninja. You did a double. Talk us through that game. Yeah, um, before I took an early... Uh, in the first game I played against him, I lost 1-0, then 4-0 on the second leg. So I thought get some quick early goals I can defend um, I thought I managed to defence quite well so I was happy with that yeah How does it feel obviously when you're 3-0 up early in the first game do you feel a bit of pressure or do you feel a bit more relaxed? Um, I felt like I had the game under control so I was a bit relaxed um, I held back with my attack in the second leg um, so I felt a bit comfortable uh, but you never know in FIFA <laughs> anything can happen really so yeah I was quite comfortable So you advanced to the playoffs you ne you face Ethan next. You lost to him earlier on. Yeah. Uh, are you going to change your tactics a bit? Do you, did you learn quite a lot from the first game against him? Uh, he's a great player, isn't he? Um, he qualifies for most the events this year. Um, it's little you can do, really. I'll just stick to my own game and see what happens, really. So you're 17 years old. I was watching you through that game, and you look so relaxed. I, I swear I was never like that when I was 17 years old. Um, you look like you're just having fun. 
this is whole experience just been a great fun for you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I came here just for the experience, really. Um, not really too bothered about winning, but it would be nice, obviously. But yeah, it's more for the experience, really. My first ever event, so yeah, I feel like I'm enjoying my time. And you did say before coming into this that Ginger Ninja and Ethan were the ones to watch out for. Yeah. You've just beaten Ginger Ninja. Yeah. You're definitely hoping to go and beat Ethan now. Hopefully. I don't think it will happen, but positive mind, yeah. So we'll see. Congratulations. Good luck in the next round. Uh, Brandon and Richard, I have a question for you. When you were 17 years old, were you this good at FIFA? Um, yeah. He was. Well, he thinks he was. Um, that, I was in my prime I, at I, 17. I probably, I probably got worse in, my, uh, in the next few years of life. But you heard it from, uh, from Campster. He's up against Ethan in a repeat matchup in the semi-finals. He did lose to him last time round. Doesn't sound too confident. He's got to be a bit more confident in himself because he has just taken down one of the big favourites in his eyes. Yeah, coming in though and just saying that um, it's all for the experience. I think you you sort of you de downplay yourself a little bit. You see Tex recently doing that quite a lot. He'll come into a, a tournament and be like, I don't feel confident. I'm not feeling confident. And then just go and win it. So maybe a little bit of that from Camster saying, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really expecting much. So then you're not bigging yourself up. So it's maybe a less of a disappointment if you did go out. Maybe so. Reverse psychology. Maybe so. I think the thing that I love about the Premier League club playoffs as well is there's, there's always shocks. Yep. You get pros or people that have had experience in the FIFA esports scene, whether they're foot verified, whether they've been to an event in the last year or two years or so, and they come to a, these events and they lose. You know, We've just seen Zach Moore get knocked out in his first handful of games, not not even picked up a win. He's out the tournament, uh, one of the big favourites on Xbox. We've seen the, the previous Albion representative on the PlayStation 4 knocked out the tournament as well. There's a guarantee, as you said, new player picking up that trophy to the right-hand side of your screen. Yeah, I'll just have a look at the, the players left in the tournament now and it seems a lot more sombre, the atmosphere. I think they realise that the, the sort of the day out feel, if, if I want to call it yeah. that, has disappeared. It's now, I'm only two games away from being at a live event, being at a, an event that's going to be on live television, that's going to be streamed for hundreds of thousands of people. I think that's the sort of atmosphere that we're starting to get here at the Amex. I think that's the key thing as well. You wonder what these guys are playing for, not just to represent the club, but to play in a tournament with a £40,000 prize pot. The winner takes home £20,000 on his own, all right? Yeah, it's not impressive. between you and your teammate, it's yours, okay? PlayStation or Xbox, whoever wins it, will do so and pick up the trophy and all the accolades that follow with it, Richard. I'm a big fan of these, you know. Shall I see if they've got a spare? What, and just stick it in my room? <laughs> <laughs> you can pretend you've won it if you want. How far do you think you'd get? <laughs> we always have this debate. Do you go out in groups? We always have to debate. If we played in the tournament, how far we'd get. I said this before, you'll go to the loser bracket. So you think get I'd lose my first game? No, you'll, you will lose your first game. Okay. Then you'll win. Yeah. On a penalty shootout. <laughs> in a penalty shootout. And then it would be tournament over. What, you think I'd go out in the elimination bracket, in the elimination game that Ginger Ninja just went out yeah. then? I don't That's see That's how it. far I think you'd get. I don't see I it. think you'd qualify in 7th or 8th. I'm confident in my own ability. So you think you'd win? I, w I don't... I'm how not, far would you get? I'm not saying that. I think I'd make a semi-final. <laughs> you think you'd say... I think... Okay. We've I'll played in a back. tournament before. I think you've got a semi-final in you. You went out in the first round. That was a long time ago. Four minute halves, head to head. Wasn't comfortable. <laughs> so, do you think you'd qualify? <laughs> I wasn't comfortable. Are they all the excuses? <laughs> they were an AC unit blowing from a breeze. What? And I, w I just really, I weren't really happy. Um, I mean, you lost in a final before. You were full oh, of yeah. excuses. <laughs> oh, oh, he got red card. The referee <laughs> did me over on this or that. I lost in the final. And it were a 50 pound Arndale voucher <laughs> in Manchester. And I was actually fuming that I lost. Um, oh. You came back of all the excuses in the world. But. Of course, it's it not about TV us. There's still delay. eight players left in this tournament. As we said, we've got four players on each console left. We said goodbye to four from Xbox and PlayStation as well. And we're going to be previewing the game that we are going to be seeing shortly. Jamie Hindle, after that 1-0 win, did go on and beat 3-0. But in other news, Richard, again, we are going to be seeing the new Xbox player for the Albion this year. Kai Stuck did get knocked out eventually by a goal to nil against BC 9-8. He will advance into a semi-final wow. now up against Jamie Hindle. And set up a rematch as well. These two did face before. Two fresh players coming in to Brighton and Hove Albion for the E Premier League. That's Group A. Let's have a look at Group B. We knew that Oscar was already through and it was Impact beating Jack five goals to one. So Impact setting up a game against Jamie. 
in the semi-finals, and Oscar going to be taking on um, BC98. Going over to Group A on the PlayStation 4, we just saw how that did unfold with Camster beating Ginger Ninja three goals to nil. Um, moving forward with Ethan. Yeah, as you said, they will be playing those in the opposing groups. Of course, the highest seed in Group A will play the one that went through the loser bracket in Group B. Of course, it'll be Concate up against Ethan and uh, Amit, as we said, in that other match up against Camster. So those will be the semi-finals left to play. Then we'll move into our final. We'll have an Xbox final and a PlayStation final, and it'll be all to play for. And it'll be interesting to see who will come out on top. But we know we're going to see new players for the Albion. I'm excited as a Brighton fan who those players are going to be representing the club. Of course, commiserations to both Keister and Ginger Ninja, previous uh, Albion players. Hopefully we'll see them again next year. But there's still plenty more action to come. Do not go anywhere. We're going for a very short break, and we'll be back with our semi-final matches live from the Alex.
And welcome back once again to the E Premier League Club Playoff event here at Brighton Hove Albion. Again, we appreciate everybody getting involved. And I must remind you again, you guys can earn some prizes at home and give it away. Signed Brighton of Albion shirt by all the players, first team players here at the club over on Twitter at official BHAFC. Of course, all you've got to do is like the tweet and follow all the instructions over there. Or if you want to win a copy of FIFA 20, again, signed by all the players at the club, head over to the Instagram of official BHFC. Like the post, comment, get yourselves involved in those giveaways and you can win them by also watching the stream here where we'll be choosing, again, a handful of lucky winners to get some prizes. We're now going to have a look at the road to the final for these players. This is on the Xbox first. It's going to be Jamie Hindle up against Impact and Oscar taking on BC9 A. All these semi-finals will be played, I believe, Brandon, simultaneously on the PlayStation 4, the game that we are going to be focusing on, is Ethan in action. The 12th ranked player in the world. Ethan up against Conke. Yeah, that will be an interesting game as well. And as you said, on the other side of that, uh, Amir up against uh, Camster. That's going to be an exciting one too. Both of those, or all of them, I should say, will be playing simultaneously uh, the last eight here at the E-Club uh, tournament for Brighton, Hove, Albion. Then we will be moving through to a console final, PlayStation and on Xbox. But all you need to know is there's going to be two new players representing this club. One man that certainly has got a job to do and a lot of hype about him as well is Ethan. I caught up with him a little bit earlier today. So I'm here joined pitch side at the Amex with professional FIFA player from 11's Esports. That's the team of Gareth Bale. He's here at Brighton, though, to try and represent the club uh, today. Your first time, uh, obviously, going for an E-Premier League grand final spot. How are you feeling? I'm feeling confident. Um, coming off the back of Club World Cup, um, we finished in the final. We unfortunately lost in the final, but I played well, and I'm feeling confident for this um, E-Premier League event now. Obviously, as we said, you had a, a strong standing in the qualification on the PlayStation 4. Anyone else you're worried about on that PlayStation 4 bracket or are you, you feeling kind of confident for today? I'm feeling kind of confident. I'm just happy. Whoever I play, I play. Well, I'll just play whatever's in front of me. And uh, the team you're going to be using today, obviously Premier League players only. Just name me three players that you're looking forward to getting your hands on today. Uh, it's got to be Team Yamane, Team De Bruyne and uh, Team Van Dijk. And it would be a good start to 2020 for you as well, as you said. You Started the year well, getting that move to 11's uh, eSports, playing in the E-Club World Cup out in Milan, a grand final spot there, picking up huge global series points. What would it mean for you to make the E-Premier League grand finals for your first ever time? The E-Premier League grand finals is definitely a name because it will definitely help me solidify grand finals, if not make a good push to make the last 16 for the end of the year, which will put me in a great position. Um, yeah. And another strong favourite, Zach Moore, on the Xbox. You hoping that he's your, your teammate today or uh, anyone else you'd like to uh, win the Xbox? Yeah, I'm hoping Zach wins. We've spoke before the event starts and we've had a good chat. Um, yeah, I'm hoping he wins on that side of the console. Well, good luck and, uh, yeah, you never know, Ethan might do enough to make the E-Premier League Grand Finals for the Albion. And it's safe to say I curse that because Zach Moore is out of the tournament. And uh, <laughs> not the way that tournament would have wanted to go for Zach. But for Ethan, as I said, he still can do it. He's still in the tournament. He's in the final four for the semi-finals. We'll be having a different teammate, though, maybe to the one he originally would have wanted. Zach Moore, as we said, crashed out the tournament early doors. Ethan, though, only conceded one goal, scored seven so far in the tournament. He is up against Konkai now in a semi-final game. And it's going to be interesting to watch this one. Yeah, it really is. Looking to see how Ethan has... So I've adjusted to the Premier League players only. Looking at some of the names that have already qualified for the E Premier League techs with Liverpool, Stokes with Burnley, Fafilza with Wolverhampton Wanderers, Tom and Shorey from Hashtag United with Watford, Hashtag Harry with Everton, Yago and Jambu with West Ham United and Shells with Manchester City. The name power is off the charts at the E Premier League thus far and we still have qualifiers left to go. Yeah, we do indeed. Of course, Manchester United claimed their two players the other day as well. The exact same two that did enough to play in the E Premier League Grand Finals last year. Underway, though, in our semi-finals. All the games will be played simultaneously. But this will be the one game we'll focus on. It will be Ethan up against Conkai. Conkai came into this one of the highest seeds. Big, strong performance for him in the online qualifiers. Ethan, though, just got the job done in between many qualifiers in other tournaments, such as the E-Club World Cup for Champions Cups. Conkai had to go down to the loser's bracket. He lost his first game here in Brighton, six goals to five against Amir. He then beat Falcon 6-1 and then beat Scruffer 
Seven goals to two. So since going down to loser's bracket, scoring 13, only conceding three. Certainly has been refreshing to see a handful of new talent, Richard. Uh, Brian, those that made finals, those that qualified for the club last year, knocked out early doors. On the other side of that, as you said, for Ethan, picked up a 3-1 win against Coxie in his first game, then went on to beat Campster four goals to one. Now he finds himself in this spot in a semi-final, yet to taste the defeat and has scored a minimum of three goals over two legs in every single match he's played. Expect no different now as he gets the first chance in this game. Out for a throw and it will go. Early pause queued here by one of these two players, potentially a, a change. Pretty sure in. I've just seen Jen Alexander-Arnold in a CDM role for Conkite. I'm on board with it. I mean, I hope I'm not just kind of incorrectly visualising that, but I'm pretty sure... I saw Trent alexander in a CDM role for Konkai. Konkai obviously kicking from left to right in the Brighton of Albion blue and white strip. Chance, though, from the corner for Ethan. You can see him manually controlling Virgil van Dijk, and you can understand why. I think Trent as a CDM is a really, really viable option, especially when you've got Kyle Walker headlining in at right back, potentially, or Aarons from Norwich, the foot future star at right back as well. If you want that more creative CDM who can ping the ball around, you can play him there. And he also has unbelievable defensive attributes. He is. It's Kyle Walker in at right back and then Trent at CDM alongside Kante. I'm, I'm on board with it. Interesting karate kick there from Robertson to keep the possession in play. Conkite with a long ball over the top. Humming Song will pick up. His cross. It's gone down. It's going to be a gift of a goal if he can get onto the end of it once or twice. Vander. Say so Vander saw. <laughs> Virgil van Dijk stands in the way. I'm not too sure what that cross was. Absolute he fizzed across the ground. Straight back down the other end. End to end FIFA is exactly what we've been waiting for since we got to the Amex a few hours ago. Hopefully, this game will live up to life. As we said, a semi final this is. Chance to get into the ground final on the PlayStation 4 and to do enough to make an e Premier League grand final representing the club of Brighton of Abbott. A massive switch of players on. De Bruyne has spotted it. Ethan defended it. I think the main thing for Ethan in these games is get the, the early couple of goals because you know how FIFA 20 has been recently with the defensive mindset. For him, he has to score first, put the pressure on his opponent, make him come out and not play in the overall ball side defensive meta. On the other side of that, Konkai just... Keep it a nil-nil for as long as possible. Try and snatch a goal. Mohamed Salah, a starter for Ethan and a chance to actually have a look at his team and break it down. It will be N'Golo Kante, Roberto Firmino as his two CDMs, as expected. So yep. Going further forward, Hummin Song, who's chasing that one on Alisson, kind of making up that, that three going forward. And, of course, the out-and-out -out striker himself, as I mentioned, Hummin Song doing the business. Yeah, Son, <laughs> pretty... Outrageous to say, but probably the closest thing to Eusebio in the Premier League that we have with the five-star weak foot and also the four-star skill moves, good physicality, good um, pace as well. He's nowhere near Eusebio's level, but if you're wanting to mimic what the icons potentially have in the Premier League, Sonny is a good one for your out-and-out -out striker, especially after he got the recent inform at striker. Well, nearly a third goal in this game. It has been goalless so far, but plenty of chances. And certainly the tempo of this game has lived up to the expectation as we thought it would. And a pretty standard back four as well for Ethan. Andy Robertson, David Louise, Virgil van Dijk, and of course completed by the fullback of Trent Alexander Arnold. Yeah, Conkai's team is certainly the more interesting of the two in terms of. Players that you're not used to seeing in there. Lucas Mora, Trent at CDM, Kyle Walker in at right back. Andy Robertson just driving down this left hand side. Trying to be a nuisance. He will be. He'll actually win the ball back. Very aggressive in the tackle. Fortunately, Humming Song up. Sadio Mane couldn't latch onto that. I spoke to Ethan earlier today. Three players he was looking forward to using. One of them was Sadio Mane. And you understand why. A player that 
You actually see it a lot of competitive events off the bench. Yeah, it's outrageous is Sadio Mane. Pace, power, strength and shooting all combined into one player. He's so, so quick. His Mbappe levels are quick. Just sorry, did I just dream there? Carl Walker. Yeah, the right back. The first player to go against Trent Alexander-Arnold, but as we said, that's because he's in CDM in this team. Interesting pick. Last year it was all Carl Walker, really, wasn't it? And if there wasn't that team in the year, Richard, would you expect to see Carl Walker as the starting fullback? Potentially, either that or Aaron's from Norwich, the foot future star. And in time of just two minutes, this will be the last chance to Conkite. He can make something happen. He's humming song on the edge of the box. He's just been hassled by Trent Alexander Arnold. And in time of two minutes, I'm pretty much up. I don't think the referee will play on one more attack unless maybe I'm wrong. I am wrong. Trent Alexander Arnold, there's a cutback there. Kevin De Bruyne is waiting towards the back post as well. He's gone for the cutback and he's got the finish as well. Yeah, the referee let the attack go on. The ball over the top. Trent just drove into the danger area. Found the cutback. Hungmin Son's there. He's not going to miss from that close range. And Ethan, perfect time to score just on the stroke of half time. Put himself in a very comfortable position, 1 0 up. Also, a couple more right backs. You could potentially go with the second in form, Ricardo Pereira. In at right back. He's certainly an option. The half time whistle blows. I question if there'll be enough time to go forward again for Ethan. He proved me wrong and actually went one step further and scored a goal in this game. Broke the deadlock on the stroke of half time in leg number one. As we said, all the semi finals are currently underway at the moment. As you said, Richard, PlayStation 4 ones. Amir. Up against Camster is also underway on the PlayStation 4 and over on the Xbox. Of course, more matches taking place. Back on the way for the second half. The only favourite, so to speak, left in the competition. Yeah, we're both defending Brighton E Premier League players knocked out of the sauna in the group stages and also Zach Moore follow I should say Neo follow esports coach and grand finalist coach in his own right eliminated from the tournament also a fantastic player as well not only a coach but he went out in two the chance does come in now I thought we were going to miss a goal for a second <laughs> that was the bracket I'll update you on that a little bit later today. Mohamed Salah. Just no real conviction on that, whether it was a pass or a cross. From the Egyptian out on that left-hand side. As you said, it's a, a common thing we're seeing. We're seeing wingers swap sides as such. You normally put Mohamed Salah out on the right to start the game. Same with Sadio Mane out on the left. I think it's, it's one of those things where you don't have to cut inside. You can just go straight down the line and then get the pass across the box. The you'll see it here, Sadio Mane will be able to burst down the line and then just potentially hit it across. You can shoot near post as well with how strong the outside the foot shot trait is, especially with Mo Salah. You just smash it into that near post area. So he's still in this game. It's Conkai. Sergio Aguero introduced for him. Chance now for Sadio Mane. To play that towards the back post. And just a shake of the head there from Ethan. There's that cross. Always going to be going into Allison's reach. That's an unbelievable goal kick. Salah will get that. He's going to try and challenge Carl Walker. Put all the pressure on him. But he could. Didn't lead to anything, though. That's a mistake, though. It's an awful mistake. Again, Allison to Robertson. I don't know what it's been tonight. Those two not on the same wavelength. <laughs> Probably should have done better with that. Should 
Ethan on that occasion with Kevin De Bruyne. He was really never the favourite to outpace David Luiz. N'Golo Kante. We get around Sadio Mane. Yes, he can. Pressure like in behind. This is nice. This is tidy FIFA on the edge of the box. It's a great ball as well. Surely a finish. You'll get it. Great Straight ball. back into this game. Conkite, lovely switch of play into the path of Amin Song, who was never missing from that. That's one of the things when you do play it quite narrow. If overall ball side is activated, there's room out wide as he just fired that pass. A driven pass into the feet of Hung Min Son. Smashes it across the goalkeeper and what a piece right now. This game is not going the way potentially the script said it would. Still a second leg. There's still plenty of time left and he can actually get a chance to have a look at Ethan's bench there for a second. Likes of Lucas Moura there on the other side of that. Aguero on the bench for Ethan if he wants to bring him on. As you can see for Conkite. Did bring on the Argentine, double substitution. Speaking of Aguero, he has been introduced alongside Leroy Sane. And this could be an amazing opportunity as well for Conkai. He's a foot verified player, 435th in the rankings, obviously only picking up points from weekend league. But this is what the Premier League can do. Prime example of that was Carl Lees last year for Manchester United. And Jonesy. Two players that really weren't heard of before the Premier League. Carl Lees went on to make the playoffs. Lost in the... Imagine how his season could be different as well. He could have... The penalty shootout lost against Tom Lees in the E-Nations qualifier as well. If he wins that penalty shootout, who knows what might have happened. Certainly that goal has riled him up. Kevin De Bruyne. He was waiting. He was teeing for it. Was Sergio Aguero chance towards the front post? It's Virgil Van Dijk. He's in there. And that should throw in. Coming for a throw in right in the corner. This is dangerous. This is a dangerous area because if you lose the ball here, even in the sort of in your own 30 yards, it's a straight transition from Conkai onto your defence. He's done well to play out though, Ethan. How many times do you have a throw in there? You throw it, two passes later, it's back on you, and the only thing you've got is your, your back four, maybe even your two centre-backs to defend with. Charles Reefen to get back on the ball and just injects a little bit of confidence back into it. It's only been under the cosh in the last 15 minutes or so. Watch out, because like Samaras is fresh as well, alongside Aguero. You saw the little dink ball that he was looking to play in. Sergio Aguero on the edge of the box there. Recycles all the way across his back four, does Conkai, and happy to keep hold of the ball, the switch. He thought about it and then played a nice pass into Trent's feet. That's Aguero. So the idea it was... The peeling run on the far hand side from Hamin Song. Just five minutes left in this first leg. All square at 1 1 at the moment. These are the semi final matches we're bringing to you live from Brian in the EPL Club playoff event. Did lead, did Ethan early on into this game, and it? Hamin Song. Right place, right time, at the back post for Conkai to put him all square. That's been a pause queued by Conkai as well. Not sure he will get it. Ethan might get the last chance of the game, though. Yeah, he just turned over possession there. It's going to be last attack over this first leg going to the favourite, you'd have got to say, Ethan. To be a misery compiler. Into Sergio Aguero. De Bruyne is on the edge as well. De Bruyne can get the shot away, he will. And that's twice now. The last chance of the game. Ethan's been able to capitalise on it. 45th plus three. 
90th plus three. Ethan loves a stoppage time goal. Kevin De Bruyne smashing it in on that left foot. Five-star weak foot for the Belgian. And a slight lead going into the second leg. But what a game we have got potentially brewing here at the Amex. Conkai looks in it, disbelief. He? Snatched it in the last minute. There's seconds left to play. And this as soon as he kicks off, the referee will blow for full time. And Conkai will be trailing by just one goal into this second leg, as you said. More than enough time played, Richard. And both times, Ethan been able to snatch a goal at the death in both halves. Leg one concluded. And the favourite is leading by two goals to one. Conkai, though, certainly a player you do not want to write off at the moment. I don't think he'll be happy, though, will he, Ethan, with that first half and the first... Uh, we say first half, first leg performance in this semi-final. Conkai, serious player, though. He's foot verified. I mean, he's hit, he's hit 27 wins on weekend league. He's eligible to play in the qualifiers as well. And, uh, he knows that he's Sometimes got the game. Sometimes this is the opportunity that a player needs. Yeah, he's got the game to beat him. They might be struggling in the online qualifiers. Of course, you understand why they stack some of those tournaments for foot champions cups and you know a handful of other events such as e Champions League and PlayStation Country Cups. The e Premier League just opens up the opportunity. Twenty clubs, you know, eight spots per console for each of those clubs. There is an opportunity there. That's a good shot there with both of the players. In this semi-final, Konkai probably, what is he, one station behind him by the looks of it? He should be sitting back to back. So hope he don't go to penalties. Cause, uh, yeah. I'll have to turn his monitor <laughs> all the way around. <laughs> yeah, because that would be a coincidence if they go to a penalty shootout. We wonder why Konkai has managed to save every single one. <laughs> We're not going to get this second leg underway. Currently two goals to one. Ethan will lead. A strong favourite in this tournament. The other semi-finals. We've got Jamie up against Impact and BC98 against Oscar on the Xbox. The other PS4 semi-final is going to be Camster against Amir. All those games playing simultaneously. Just <laughs> playing those. Felt like I needed to for a second there. I'm waiting for this. Second leg to get underway. And you look at the final eight in the tournament, Richard. It really is anyone's to take. We know that we will be seeing a new Xbox and PlayStation representative for the club in the Premier League finals. Just who will it be? Back underway, Ethan kicking from left to right in that Brighton of Albion home strip. And Conkite from right to left. 90 minutes in front of us. If Ethan can get an early goal. It will be two goals in front on the aggregate scoreline. We'll just have a little bit of a cushion for him. Yes. Certainly has been the, the tightest of games he's played in so far tonight. He's not been liquid, though. He won his first game 3-1 and his second game 4-0. It's not been the sort of destructive performances that, for example, we saw from Tex. 9-0s and 7-0s in the Liverpool E Premier League qualifier. But a win's a win at the end of the day. She said you listed off some of the players that will be in the Premier League Grand Finals. Big names in the FIFA scene. Here's Lucas Mora. A starter in this game for Conkite. Very much an interesting team for him. Trent Alexander-Arnold playing as a CDM for him. Carl Walker getting the call up. In at right back. Searching for that pass down the line there. First player to use Trent Alexander on a CDM roll tonight. A handful of other players choosing to bat the likes of that screen for Mino. I think Kante has to be one of your CDMs, and then to be honest, it's all personal preference. You could even play De Bruyne in at CDM and then put a different attacking player going forward. It's certainly an option. You could put David Luiz in at CDM and then bring in Tamori at centre-back. There's multiple ways that you could get around these teams. I mean, coming into it, I thought that I would see a De Bruyne 
Kante partnership in CDM and then a forward being changed into a cam and being worked out as that way. Surprised we've not seen probably more Aubameyangs as a wide cam, but he just doesn't really offer the agility. Does Pierre. You've got to remember as well, there's just more solid foot items this time around this year. Remember the club playoffs last time, that's a great chance. Could have shot. Thought he was going to finesse it around the goalkeeper, but that wasn't the case. Yeah, could have hit that with Kante. Still not dealt with, though. Chance for Eford to get a second for Mina. That's lovely. Little ball across the back post. Off the line. David Louise. I'm just looking at the minimap, and there's counter-attack potential on here for Konkai. He's got four running forward against sort of the four. Oh, Trent doing a job. Coming all the way across from right back. Success down this left-hand side. Sadio Mane into Salah. Perfect finish from the Egyptian. Instinctive FIFA right there from Ethan. Just switching it on. Turning on the power at the right time. Ball played into Mo Salah. First time shot straight past the goalkeeper. Rippling the back of the net. And you talked about that two-goal lead, Brandon. It's in full effect right now. And there he is. Headliner. Mohamed Salah. Massive goal. Extends the gap as well, as we said, Richard. Two goals in front now. It's all to do for Conkite. Previously, he only been down a goal. Now he's down by two. Expect to see a change in tactics moving into the second half. Very composed at the back as well. If he wins this, he will be moving into a PlayStation 4 Grand Final. He'll be two legs of FIFA away from representing this club in the E Premier League. Salah back to De Bruyne. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Oh, would have been an unbelievable finish as well, wouldn't it? Imagine he squeaked that in at the near post there. Kevin De Bruyne. literally using his body there to work a perfect chance to pivot it's quite an underrated tool to be honest using the L2 to uh, to shield but to shield it effectively as well is even harder especially with the game being so rapid and often Players find it very hard to find any space. You can see offside trap just being jammed by Ethan. It's the high risk, high reward. The other time I shield the ball is when I... Uh, when you're winning a game. 80th, in the 90th, 90th minute. minute, into the corner, hold L2. Do what I need to do to get a win. Await a message from opponents. Chance <laughs> to Ethan to find another one. De Bruyne Trying to link up with Amin Song. And Spurs forward. It's a great ball. ball. He's going to have space as well to exploit if he can. Lucas Moura needs to move quickly. The amount of Brian Albion shirts coming over. It's going to be too hard to deal with. That Lucas Moura as well, the shapeshifter, switched foot. So he's left footed now as well. Which potentially could catch a couple of people off guard if they didn't know that. Know the ins and outs of the promo. Added time of just two minutes, and if there's one thing we've seen tonight, Ethan loves a stoppage time goal. Has he got another one for us here? He spent the ball to come across. Kante. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, it's even better. Guaranteed finish, it will be. It's a great goal. Three times, three goals in stoppage time for Ethan so far in this game. 4-1, he will lead an aggregate. And you have to say, his job well done this early on. It's a seriously good goal from Ethan there. The first time fake shot, completely sold his man, and then trusting Salah on that three-star weak foot to hammer home at the near post. 
Ethan will be moving on for all it's worth to the PlayStation 4 final. It will be playing Camster, who's looking to get a bit of revenge, or it'll be Amir in the final. A chance to have a look at the team because it's going to need a little bit of a move around because he does need three goals if there's any way back into this game for him. Expecting an attacking formation or some attacking changes. Abamyang on the bench for the first time tonight as well. Greenwood, Sane potentially. It's 4 1 2 1 2 in action. Aguero going up top. The scream Aguero. Can he make the difference? Just got 45 minutes left. And he will be in that PlayStation 4 Grand Final. Of course, all the semi-finals underway at the moment. Ultra attacking from the word go. He needs goals. 45 minutes to find them. I mean, when you come to these events, you are going to have to be tested against a pro player at some point. And you also have to attack the game. There's no point. You're in a semi-finals. No point seeing out a 4-1 loss, if that makes sense. You have to know that you went for it. I'd much rather personally lose... 7-8-1 then 3-1 and know that I kept it tight. And you saw just from that one attack there how much space was at the back for Ethan if he timed his pass correctly. That one's better. You can see it now, just how attacking Konkai is trying to be. He needs three goals as we keep alluding to. You can see it on the scoreline. Kevin De Bruyne. This is for Ethan now. Doesn't need a goal. Can really cruise if he wants to into a final where he can try and fight one more goal. It's the moment to really savour and enjoy when you're this comfortable in a game. Hamid Song, which way is he going to go? So we try to interchange with Mohamed Salah, who bagged the fourth goal in this game on the stroke of half time. Timothy and Virgil van Dijk is a serious presence, isn't he? I don't really notice it until I see him when he's playing against mortals. Because we watch him at the Foot Champions Cup and he's playing against gods in reality. Prime moments, Cruyff. Prime moments, R9. Moments, Eusebio. And he sort of just, he blends in. Whereas here, this Tierney of Virgil van Dijk is an unbelievable presence on the pitch. You can see the height difference as well. Just There's another prime across, example of it. Tackling Salah. Has he ever lost a shoulder to shoulder? Once. I remember him getting shoved onto the floor against Mbappe. He must have been hitting the gym that day. Especially in this EPL format. Just don't see him lose that shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder battle at all, do you? Nice little hill-to-will there. I'm in song. This is needed by Konkai. Everyone's back in the way. Including then Golo Kante. Although at one point he may have looked a little bit nervy to Ethan in that first leg. And there was a pa small little passage of play, which wasn't there. About 70 to 80th minute, there was 10 minutes where it really was non-stop pressure from Konkai. And if he got a goal then... He could have potentially got back into the game, but as soon as that fourth goal was scored, it was um, a serious turnaround for... Conkai needed, and it would have been a capitulation for Ethan. Well, just a big roar as well from one of the games. I think that was Oscar. He's been on absolute fire tonight. Just scored. We don't know the situation on the aggregate scoreline there, but we heard a roar. Here we go then, 20 minutes or so left in this game. Three goals are needed. Just don't see it happening. Aguero's on off the bench. This would really put the game to bed. Hummin Song, which way is he going to go? Well, yeah, I think that was the lateral heel to heel that he pulled out there for a second, Ethan. 
Back Sadio Mane, on, watch out for him. De Bruyne is on the edge instead. Needs this to go in. Well defended. Trent Alexander on again. Sadio Mane. Show his weak foot. Literally just on his weak foot, even though he's team of the year. That left foot still very much the, the one weak point of Sadio Mane. Keeps coming a long, old way for that. Not enough time, is that? It's one of them. When you get a pro player and you really ask questions of them time and time again, can you finish? Can I put you in a difficult situation? That's when you often get the best performance out of them. That's exactly what we've seen here from Ethan. You went 1 1, and you thought that Conkai potentially could have come away with this victory, but sort of shot Ethan into life, really. Nothing more than a consolation if he can get himself a goal now. Still on the line, it does go in eventually. That's For a split what? second. I did ask questions. I'm just looking at the experience, which we can see. E Club World Cup player. He saw out 1 0 wins. It was a you know it was a best of one format that tournament was. Two goals in front with 12 minutes left. I just don't see him throwing this away. There's a chance though. There's a chance for Konkai. If he gets a goal before the 85th, maybe it can snatch. An extra time, additional 30 minutes, but it would have to be a serious. Turn of bad form. You can see. For Ethan. Into the tactics now to change. Just a few things up. Not too sure why he was on. Drop back for a second then. I think it was uh, Edison is attacking. He automatically went back to his defensive. I did see constant pressure for a second. That was pushed to the max. I was looking at the sort of lounge that we are in right now, Brandon. I think two of the games have currently finished as well. So we are starting to find out our finalists. We'll have a full roundup after this game has concluded. See if it's going to be Ethan or Konkai. Battling for the Brighton PlayStation 4 spot. Yeah, as you said, I think it was Jamie against Impact that has concluded. We'll wait for a final score on that one. The BC 98 against Oscar is still underway on the Xbox. Of course, alongside Amit. Against Campster. He will be facing up against Ethan, as we said, Ethan, just seven minutes away from concluding this game. Unless the goal was to go in now, and we really would be in four. A very interesting last five minutes. He's defended that one well. And honestly, this is his to throw away. Yeah, Virgil getting the block on that just as it came across the back four. But Cuneguero nicking the ball off of Robertson there. and Oh, that's poor. That's just giving the ball back and... That's the game. That turnover possession right there, that's the game over. And this is to snatch one more goal as well. It's into Sergio Aguero. This is Ethan. Ball around the goalie. Back inside. It's one more. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's Sadio Mane that will send Ethan into a PlayStation 4 grand final. And that's all come from Konkai giving the ball away. He tried playing the pass inside and it just wasn't thought out. 88 minutes on the clock. And another goal. To add to all five goals to two. He'll be in a grand final. And he'll be two legs away, Richard, from another event. You know what a year it's already been for him. 19 years of age. It's going to be six. Signing for 11s eSports. And if he could represent the club as well. He could have a serious run in front of him in the tournament. Mane tries to interchange with Aguero. That's the full time whistle. Congratulations. Ethan is in that PlayStation 4 grand final. Two games away, Richard, from representing this club in the E Premier League grand finals. The biggest of stages. What an opportunity this could be. And who will it be who he is facing for that spot in the final? Amir versus Camster will get all the roundup from that 
set of fixtures. But let's have a look at the goals that settled the game for Ethan. It was pretty much on the stroke of half time. Trent Alexander Arnold getting the better of Robertson down this right hand side. Look for Hung Min Son just peeling onto the six yard box, who strokes it into the bottom left corner, and that was the first. But Conker got back in the game. He did late on. We thought for a second there was going to be maybe an upset in this tournament, especially when he was pushed at 1-1. There was questions that were answered of Ethan throughout the first leg. This was the equaliser in the end. It was Sadio Mane into Roberto for me. pass. And that's a great pass, isn't it? What a pass that was into Hummin Song. We know how deadly he can be. Left foot, right foot. It doesn't matter for the South Korean striker from Tottenham Hotspur. And that was to send him straight back into this game. But three times, Richard, across these two legs. Ethan found stoppage time winners. And this was it. Kevin De Bruyne into Sadio Mane. Lovely bit of interchange on the edge of the box. Aguero dances into the gap. Kevin De Bruyne smashes it home with the left foot. And that put him 2-1 up against Conke going into the second leg where Ethan, you have to say, pulled away with the series. It certainly seems to be a, uh, a factor as well, doesn't it, Richard, that you know, FIFA players play for that last chance of the game, don't they? Play for that 45th minute, that 90th minute chance. It's certainly part of Ethan's game that, you know, maybe he's conceded many times before in the situation. He's three times, three times, 45th minute, 90th minute, and we'll see the second leg in a minute where he did it exactly again. Of course, he does enough five goals to two he won over the two legs, but a very strong first leg. Getting that goal late on was the difference, I'd say, in that game. And that just goes to show as well why FIFA Esports is two legs to be honest, because you you watch one leg of that and you think, 2-1, ooh, he only scored in the 90th minute. Second leg, 5-2. Do you know what I mean? So that's why FIFA Esports, in my opinion, is two legs. You get the you get the deserved winner over the course of the two legs. Yeah, exactly that. And of course, best of one sometimes. The yeah. player that always doesn't deserve to win can come out uh, on top. But have a look at the second leg now. and Have a look at some of those chances. As we said, it was 2-1 headed into it. There was chances early on. This was Ethan, obviously, playing in the home strip of Brighton of Albion. That was the chance. Fantastic finish from Mohamed Salah. 26 minutes on the clock. And you asked Brandon, I thought he scored in the 45th minute. You'll see that in a second uh, from Ethan to score another one, to put him even more uh, into a comfortable position. That was to go 4-1 up, this goal that you'll see in a second. But what a finish this was from Mohamed Salah. First time shot on that left foot coming in from the right camp position was Mo Salah. And look at this build up on the edge of the box. Sadio Mane, stop. Ball roll, back to Robertson. Robertson into Kante. Kante ball roll into Son. Fancy pass from De Bruyne. First time fake shot, smashed in at the near post. And that was the game, four goals to one. And we knew from that moment on, Ethan was going to be one of the PlayStation 4 finalists. Yeah, it was. What a goal that was. Probably one of my favourites from the tournament so far. That's the thing about a pro player and to a casual, me and you, Rich. It's that one more. that Just to think, to do that one more, that drag back, that ball roll, that little dummy in the box and as you said on his weak foot he backed the chance still Mohamed Salah scoring that goal and that wasn't it of course for Ethan he had to defend again late on this was an unbelievable chance uh, that did eventually come to a goal for him it was that cut back inside I don't know how Alisson got that eventually from Aguero that on the rebound Sadio Mane smashed that in and yes with 12 minutes left we thought there could be a comeback on there was changes made and then the game was officially put to bed a little bit after that wasn't it as we can see, the changes that were made for it. And this is where I meant. I said the game was officially put to bed. Ball went long into Mares. Aguero is through. And this is just beautiful. A ball around the keeper. You think Aguero is going to go on his own. Instead, he cut back, played to Sadio Mane. Five goals to two. And that would be enough to ensure he would be into that PlayStation 4 Grand Final. We're going to go and hear from him now. He's joined by my, uh, Matthew Jackson. I would like to say if I can get my words out. Congratulations to Ethan, PlayStation 4 Grand Finalist. Thanks, Brandon. I'm joined by Ethan. Firstly, congratulations. You're into the Grand Final. How does that feel? Um, it feels great because last time I got to the Grand Final, but I didn't experience what the winning feeling was like, so I'm happy to be in another Grand Final now. Let's just talk through the game. You won 5-2 over the two legs. First game looked a bit tight, but second game you just seemed to walk away with it. Um, the first game, I was hit by a goal to make it 1-1. It kind of like, it almost like kicked me into gear. Like I knew that I had to switch it up, like play more attacking, play a bit more aggressive towards him. Almost like giving him more respect than what I initially gave him. And that's how I just walked away with the game. You like last minute goals. 
Is that something which you've been practicing on? Just keep keep going, keep going? Um, it's just, I know people are more prone to switch off, so I'm just going to try something different, like just see if I can catch my guard and luckily it worked three times in that game. So going into the final, the grand final, uh, do you think you're going to change anything, what you've learned so far throughout this um, you know, tournament? Um, no, I go into every game with a fresh mind. Like I just go in how I want to play and I'll, I might adapt to how the game goes, but no, I go with a fresh mind every time. And what would it mean to you? I mean, you're one, well, two games away from you know, going to the grand finals in London. What would it mean to you to represent Brighton at those finals? It'd mean quite a lot because I... I just to represent a team in EPREM, the it's only the second season now, it just mean a lot. Like it just mean almost the world like to represent a club as big as Brian. Well good luck in the final. I wish you all the best. Um, and back to you, Brandon and Richard. Thank you very much, Matt. And yeah, we heard from Ethan there. Grand final books. He says people switch off, forty fifth minute, ninetieth minute they switch off. Probably me and you as well. That's what catches us out on, on most yeah, games on weekend I'd say league. So. But three times he did it. That's how effective he is in those dying few moments. He does enough. Five goals to two. He did win that PlayStation 4 game. And we've got some amazing, uh, of course, grand finals coming up. We'll let you know on those score lines after we come back from this very short break. Do not go anywhere.
Welcome back once again to the E Premier League Club Playoff event here at the American Express Community Stadium. I'll get more words that you can see. We're into the evening now. Um, uh, obviously, the the pitch is uh, is being fixed for the weekend. We've got a big game. You have you uh, against chances? Crystal Palace. The the derby is happening again. Last time they did come in, we beat them three goals to one. So I'm expecting something magical. Don't say what you can say. How's that a derby? I was going to say, why is that a derby? I'm just it curious. Goes way before my time, Richard Buckley. But all I say, it's a big game for the club. All right. What's the closest other Premier League club to you? Southampton. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Southampton, and then it goes Bournemouth. So I mean, those games are always a south bit of a south coast. What is it from like well. for away fans? Brighton to Newcastle. What's that journey? Seven. Depends how you're getting there, I guess. I think some actually would probably choose to fly, but to drive. Wow. Yeah, you're talking a long, long way. When you think about those clubs that have to play lower leagues down at Exeter and Plymouth. Yeah, like Carlisle. Oh, it's an absolute hell of a journey. However, <laughs> back to the Premier League action, as we said. We're into our final few games now. We're going to be looking at the Xbox Grand Final first, then over to the PlayStation 4. As we said, hundreds upon hundreds of people tried to get to this position. It's these two, Richard, in the final two. And it's a massive upset. Jamie Hindle, after not conceding the goal all evening long, does lose to the hands of impact. Two goals to nil. And Oscar, he's been scoring plenty of goals all evening long. That didn't change in his semi-final. He's in the grand final right now. And coming into it, he'd probably say Oscar is a favourite. Especially after Zach Morrow going out of the competition. Oscar's been in fine form looking at some of the results of his games. 9-1, 4-1 victories and then a 3-1 win in the semi-finals. Jumping over to the PlayStation 4, we know that Ethan was already there and it's going to be Amir meeting him in the finals, beating... Camster, four goals to three. So that's Ethan versus Amir in your PlayStation final. And that means that only one of those two players per console can represent the club. And then we're going to be looking at the Xbox uh, final first, as we said. An interesting one that is going to be Richard. Oscar scored plenty of goals tonight. Can he live up to the hype again in this grand final? We're going to see two new faces. We said it's already guaranteed. We're going to be seeing new Brighton players representing the club at the E Premier League. I can't wait for it. They're going to be winning a trophy each. I've got the Xbox One. Richard's got the PlayStation One. Should we, uh, should we, should we cheers them? Just, just don't just break them. Just a gentle one. Just, just don't break them. Well, yeah, in about an hour's time, we'll actually be handing these awards out to uh, those players. But this is where, you know, you said it already, Richard, you go from that day out feeling. A lot of these guys came here to the Albion. They got a shirt. They got a stadium tour. Got a bit of food, you but know, and they immerse themselves in this atmosphere. But as they win every game, it, it just gets changes, more serious. It? The atmosphere just completely turns because you're on the verge of an unbelievable opportunity. There's global series points in life. If you don't know what global series points are, there's a huge ranking, FIFA.gg, that pro players will know more than a casual. You're playing for a ranking spot. If you finish top 64 come the end of May, you will go into another tournament where there'll be a prize pot of hundreds of thousands of dollars. The winner gets $75,000. And on top of that, if you make a top 16 finish, you will make a grand final, the FIFA E World Cup grand final, the biggest event of the year. Where the winner last year won $250,000. That was a German player called Mo Auber. That's why Ethan, it, it means so much to him, not only for the Premier League side of the club and representing the Premier League club, but also if he goes to the E Premier League finals at the end of March and has a good run, yep. picks up 400, even 850 points, Pretty much solidifies his grand final spot um, on the Global Series rankings. So, serious um, implications on his tournament life. Yeah, we haven't heard too much from Oscar today. So, why don't we have a little bit of your 60-second special questions again um, from the man who was in the Xbox grand final. Hi, my name is Oscar Butmai. My gamer tag is O-S-C-Q-R-R-R. -R -R, and I'm playing on Xbox. What's your go-to formation in FIFA 20? 4 2 3 1. Favourite skill move? Drag back. Most effective player in FIFA? Son. Ronaldo or Messi? Messi. Best pack pull in FIFA 20? 90 Hullet. Long range screamer or skill goal? Screamer. Possession or all out attack? Possession. Favourite Brighton player? Moy. Hey there, favourite player, the Australian. 90 Hullet! Who's, who's, who's packed 90 Hullet? Have a day off, Oscar. He's not happy about that one, is he? I'm <laughs> actually fuming with that. I mean, we are going by Oscar. We're not going by O-S-C-Q-R-R. -R. <laughs> Otherwise, that will be 
a long old evening for us. Oscar, of course, is his name. Congratulations to him. He's in an Xbox Grand Final. You heard some of the biggest players as well that he's been a big fan of so far in the tournament. As you said, he's got a handful of goals um, as well. He's not got an easy opponent though in front of him. He's up against Impact. Yeah, he's really not. And let's have a listen to Impact on his 30-second Richard Buckley rapid-fire questions. My name's Oscar Keeley. My game takes Impact UE and I play on Xbox. Go-to formation in FIFA 20? 4-2-3-1. Favourite skill move? Uh, ball roll. Most effective player in FIFA? Uh, team near De Bruyne. Ronaldo or Messi? Messi. Best pack pull in FIFA 20? Uh, Inform Mbappe. Long-range screamer or skill goal? Uh, skill goal. Possession player or all-out attack? Uh, all-out attack. Favourite Brighton player? Glenn Murray. I mean, Glenn Murray, he's, he's just a bit of a legend rounder, isn't he? Everyone loves a bit of Glenn. Scored so many big goals as well for the club. I just so impressive how quick they, they answer your question. It's <laughs> like when someone says best pack, Paul, you've got to like, if you're a long term FIFA player, you've got to back. think back. Should we so do it now? Okay. Ronaldo or Messi? Ronaldo. Best pack pulling FIFA 20? Uh, to Stegen. Um, <laughs> was it Road to the Final? See, or something I'm ending like the that? interview right now when you say to Stegen. <laughs> His game I don't over. know for many packs, all right. Um, Let's get serious, because these are a serious situation right now for these two players. These two have met previously in the tournament, yep. in the group stages. It was Oscar beating Impact four goals to one when they recently matched up. Is it going to be repeat or revenge? That's the question. I think the way that them two have matched up before as well will play a massive part uh, in uh, this tournament, because Oscar did go through to the playoffs from that. On the other side of that, obviously, Impact had to go down to the loser bracket, win another game, and then obviously win his other semi-final to get into this stage right now. So he's had to go through slightly more of a difficult bracket compared to Oscar has. But Oscar scored a lot of goals today. I mean, that's one of the, the key things we've seen from him. 9-1, he won his first game. He's been scoring goals for fun. Hopefully, it moves into this grand final now. Just been quietly going about his business, hasn't he, Oscar? I'm looking forward to this grand final. Impact got... Not only revenge on his mind, but also a Brighton E Premier League qualifier up for grabs. Prediction, Brandon. We rarely do them, but... I mean, when we predict games, it goes the opposite. I mean, we jinx them. <laughs> I'm putting you on the mark. Okay. It's going to be... Impact or Oscar? <sighs> I'm going to say Impact. Because there's often a thing that happens in FIFA when someone beats you on the first time and the second time you play against them, it often goes the other way. It is true. I'm seeing it a very defensive performance Okay. on a 2-1 even give me a scoreline. Wow, you've even given me a scoreline. Come on. I'm, I'm going to actually go for a Oscar victory. 6-0. 6 nil. Sorry, Impact. Without even conceding the goal over the two legs. I mean, <laughs> lucky he's got his headset on because he would not want to hear that. Sorry, mate. Um, out of your mouth, Richard Buckley. They did play, as we said, early on in the tournament. They did go 4-1 uh, to Oscar, as you can see on the right-hand side of your screen. Impact with it all to do in this matchup. You said... Maybe... On the second time of asking, he can deliver. He had to go through such a difficult... Bracket, as we said, a loser bracket. He did some of the people he had to play against. He had to beat against Jamie. He did not concede a goal. He didn't concede a goal when he played him. He beaten two goals to nil over those two legs to get himself into this grand final. And it's time to find out who our Xbox representative will be for the Premier League grand finals. We're underway. Impact up against Oscar. Two legs of FIFA in front of us. Which way will this go? Straight away, hug sideline in action for. An interesting fact as well, Richard. Oscar, Oscar played the most games in the qualification to get here. Played 40 in total, won 34 of them, only losing six, which ensured he finished second in the table. So a top eight finish was enough to qualify for this. On the other side of that for impact, 30 games played, 25 wins, five defeats. Comes in as sixth seed into this game. And you can just see the difference Kind of like body stance. Every single pro player has a different one. It's a bit like MS Desari esque from Oscar yeah. on the left hand side of your screen. I certainly agree with the elbows on the table. 
Also, uh, another note on this. Chance now, impact early doors. Well, that's my prediction out the window. A massive goal. And an early goal as well. And Golo Kante, of all people, to get on the score sheet. I was going to say, Oscar is actually foot verified as well. 855th on the Global Series rankings. But it's impact. Starting off at the stronger of the two players here. Eight minutes gone. Breaking the deadlock. And if you're wondering why we're getting so hyped up about those that are foot verified, it's because they can earn further Global Series ranking points in the E Premier League Grand Finals. Tearing up the script, as you said, Richard. Impact. One goal up. Remember, these two have played already in the tournament. 4-1. Oscar won over those two legs. No attacking he has been. Can he do it again here? I mean, I called for a defensive game over two legs. A 2-1 win. It's a good, good start to proceedings, though, isn't it? An early goal from impact. Going to force both players out. It looks like... See David Luiz, sort of a, a ball playing midfielder there. It looks like the CDM David Luiz in action for impact. So that's going to be a shape shifter, David Luiz. And then Tamore and Van Dijk as your two centre backs. This could be dangerous again now. Impact on the edge of the box of Hummin Song. A little ball roll. It's actually sucked out. David Luiz, you saw the idea. They wanted to link Sadio Mane into Hummin Song. That's as far as he could go. Early start, though. Massive goal as well, just to take a few nerves. Oh, perfect start, isn't it? Just to, just to settle it. Because you are going to be nervous, you're going to be apprehensive coming into a final. Especially when the so-called favourites were also eliminated earlier on in the tournament. In Zach Moore. The reigning E Premier League winner as well in... Kaita also eliminated. No, Kaita. We expected to see goals in this. Probably jinxed it again, Richard, knowing our luck. Just got to treat this like any normal game of FIFA. Hundreds upon hundreds of Albion fans. Applied online to try and get into this position. Whoever wins this over the two legs will be going to those grand finals in March. 27th and 28th of next month. Get it in your diary. As Brighton will be part of the tournament at the Premier League Grand Finals. £40,000 prize pot. A couple of interesting additions in these teams. We've already spoke about David Luizen at CDM. Also, Lucas Moura. Looks to be playing out wide. Speaking of Lucas Moore, well, this is a chance now for Oscar. And straight into the path of Andy Robertson. But just that injection of pace on the right-hand side is quite important. Certainly has been part of his form that's been able to score a handful of goals in the tournament. Really good play in around the middle of the pitch there from Impact as he frustrated, leans back in his chair. He knows that he's not only not got a shot out of the possession that he had, but whenever you turn the ball over to your opponent, defensively you've got to be so sound. 16 goals he's been able to register so far in this tournament has Oscar. Nine of those coming in his first game. <laughs> Over half. Which is just insane. 9-1. He won his first game of today. Looking for a way back into this one. Goal 17. Maybe could be on the clock. De Bruyne. Played it into Lucas Mori. Did get the shot away, but wasn't a clean finish. Just feel like he learned a lot from that first game when these two matched. Played early in the tournament. It was four goals to one. Oscar won against Impact. Impact leading by a goal to nil right now. De Bruyne looking for an equaliser. Can he get even a shot on target? He can't. There's still a lot of FIFA left to be played, though. Impact with something to hold on to. 
It's a very comfortable position to be in. Having the ability to play a more defensive play style. And sort of play on the counter, you've got to say. Look at that space opening up. Build up play. Sadio Mane on the stroke off half time. We're into the additional time period. David Luiz on the edge of the box. Lovely interchange, not once or twice. It's just so quick, absolutely too quick for him, Pat, then. Yeah, probably a, a little bit overplayed, I would say. Surely not. Get rid of that, Tamori. Into row Z there, half time. Impact will lead by a goal to nil. I don't know what it is at the moment, Richard. This long ball esque play seems to be uh, <laughs> seems to be doing something. It seems a long ball forward. Everyone goes up in the air and challenges it. It's just a case of can my forward win it in the air, or is your, Van is your Virgil Van Dijk going to do enough? You see the custom tactics there. Drop back five depth. Is that a four? Or it was a, it was a four three two one that he started the game in, but four two three one the formation of choice that he is deciding to go with. Stay forward on a couple of his cams as well. Lucas Mora. That's that right cam, as you alluded to, Richard. Will be the choice that I will imagine be happily back in. The shapeshifter, Lucas Mora. He just flicks off of overall ball side there. From the first half, I imagine. Where it was in effect. We're into this second half now. First leg we're in. Trying to work out. It will be Brighton of Albion's Xbox representative in the E Premier League Grand Finals. David Luiz finds himself very much further forward. This could be a second for impact. Can't break down. A defensive third of Oscar's team. Although he has scored a lot of goals, he hasn't conceded many goals. Only conceded three so far tonight. We'll make that four in this game. He's very happy as well to play in the air. We've seen it a few times with the, the chipped ball. That's a switch. Not played in the air, though. And on the floor. I think if you're giving someone like Lucas Mora the air time and you, you're putting him out there, if he's not done anything by 60 minutes, for me, he's got to be coming off. Get Salah on, get Adama on, get a more, you'd say, reliable. You know what you're going to get from a Mo Salah. Consistent. We we'll expect to see a few subs introduced as this game does move on into the 65th, 70th minute. Especially when substitutions can be such a big part. Long ball massively. Just punted forward. Close for a throw in deep in. Oscar's half. Does impact. It feels like David Luiz is enjoying just getting further forward. Tamori. How high is Tamori? Tamori's very high up there right now. David Luiz is just allowed to be. Inside. Playing at CDM, it's the CDM shapeshifter, David Luiz. But Tamori, that's ludicrous. And we thought we would see a few of those shapeshifters involved. There's a few of them on display right now for both players. Lucas Mora, that right cam for Oscar. As he calls kicking from right to left in this half. David Louise being backed. And a 4 2 3 1, 4 impact, leading by a goal to nil, as I said. That goal coming within the first half. We've rarely seen a one goal. I mean, y you say that, but we've seen a couple of one goals. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to be fair, haven't we? We've seen a handful of tightly contested games at 1-1. Some even going as far as a penalty shootout. Impact looking for a second in this game. Hummin Sung into Kante, back to De Bruyne, back to goal. The Belgium couldn't find a way past David Luiz. And straight back down the other end we shall go. It is end-to-end -end FIFA, though, even if the, the goals aren't flying in. There's certainly a lot of potential avenues of threat. But defensively, both players have been very sound. It's less of the fact of no goals through attacking, whereas 
Both the players defensively have just been very good. Firmino a little too aggressive there on David Luiz. Into the substitutions we shall go. We saw the change that potentially was going to be made. It's going to be Adama Chiori on for Lucas Moore. As you said, the 87 shape shift the promo. I wouldn't be surprised to see De Bruyne going in at CDM. I love that as well. Aaron Moyes made the bench. He's in form. <laughs> Game on. He said he was a fan of him. Get him on. Would you play any of the, the Brighton players? I think Trossard's the only one that will be in with a shout at this moment in time. I'm sure that, you just stick, stick Ryan in goal. I mean, even if, if, even if I wanted to play a Brighton player, Richard, I would be putting myself at a bit of a disadvantage up against a team in the era, Allison that I could use. I think that's why we're going to see a handful of them. One does have an Australian accent. True. One doesn't. That is true. One has a team of the year item. Unfortunately, one doesn't have an inform yet. Dharma Chori, Hummin Sam. This could be an unbelievable impact substitution. Adama. Shot comes in. Just wide. Whistle past the post right there from Adama Traore. He's very reluctant to shoot on his left foot, his Adama. Only being a two-star weak foot. But if you can get it on that right. Massive switch of play. Serious venom as both players introduced Adama to try and create a little bit of danger in the final third. Twelve minutes left. Oscar trying to find a way back into this game. He's been known for scoring goals all evening long. Impact. Just defending very well, though. They did play, as we said earlier in the tournament, four goals to one. Oscar did actually win that game, sending Impact down to a loser bracket. For Mr. Soko, has been subbed on as well for Impact, alongside Adama Choi, all right. Strengthening up that midfield before the second leg starts, so he can go into it with a one-goal lead. So. A very cushy place to be. Firmino. To Sadio Mane now. I'm actually going to get the bounce in his favour for a second. De Bruyne does get dispossessed straight away. I feel play advantage on the tackle as well. Where like Virgil van Dijk ran about 40 yards forward to rake it. Another shake of the head from Oscar. Just win the ball back with Kevin De Bruyne and one more chance to potentially level this game going into the second leg. Added time to follow, as we said. This is only the first leg. Still plenty of time left in a second leg to pull this game back. It's only one goal as well between the two. It's not really much of... An aggregate scoreline that can't really be clawed back. So only one goal. That could come in the first few minutes, or it could come in the last few minutes. Now Oscar Hamin Song shot wanted to come into Mori was in the way. Full time leg number one. And impact will be holding on to a very slender one goal lead in this Xbox grand final. Tomori just doing enough to get his body on the line there for impact. At the death of the first leg. 90 minutes separating that man and the Brighton E Premier League Xbox Club Playoff Championship. Yeah, exactly that. As we said, we already know we're going to be seeing two new players this year for the club. Oscar, for the first time, he's kind of had a bit of a Pickle. tough pill to swallow because he's used to scoring goals in games, Richard. He hasn't been allowed to that. You know, just looking at some of the scores, nine goals, four goals. He he won his semi-final match, three goals to one. Certainly needs a big second leg performance right now. Does Oscar and changes look like they are being made right now? Well, he played the most games as we said in the qualification period. Forty matches in total. Uh, he did play, of course, thirty-four wins, six defeats. Ensured that he would be in a very, very comfortable position coming into this tournament. Third seed, he does sit. But that doesn't matter now. It's all a case of 
You've made it to a final. You've won your games. 9-1 was his first scoreline today. These two actually did play, as we said earlier on today. He did win 4-1. What do you think has changed since then? <sighs> Other than the scoreline as it currently sits. Well, we we also we, we just see the result. We don't see how the game went. Oscar could have been 1-0 down after the first leg and then battered him 4-0 in the second leg. Um, I do think that getting that first goal for impact was huge because it gives him something to hold on to. It gives him something to defend. Um, however, I do think there's a goal in this game for Oscar and it's all if impact can get another one because after he scored, I can't remember many opportunities where he, he went close again. In that first leg. Well, the second leg does load up now. We'll be 90 minutes away from finding out who will be representing the club in the E Premier League Grand Finals. Four Brides Nova Albion, then we'll jump over to the PlayStation final, in which it will be Amir against Ethan over two legs as well. Both players ready. Only one goal between them as well, so this really could go either way. Will Oscar be able to bounce back and find a handful of goals as he has throughout the tournament? What can impact on the second time of asking? Pull off a master class against this man who sent him actually to the loser's bracket early today and gave him an even harder ride in the tournament. Looking for revenge and the best time to get it as well. In an Xbox grand final. I don't really know the, the geography of the, the South Coast. Is, uh, is Brighton your local team? What's the story behind you supporting Brighton? <laughs> um, it's a great story. 2009. They used to do Albion in the community. Very, very good program. Basically, local football training sessions all around the West, West Sussex, around the Sussex area. And uh, I used to go every Tuesday night. Just got hooked. Just fell into the club that way. Started going to games, next thing you know. Gus Poyet came in charge, League One. We got promoted, moved to the championship. The rest was history. And that chance does come in early doors. Impact looking for a second. But yeah, that's the story. 2009. Went to the first Brighton game. Unbelievable FA Cup runs back then. Glenn Murray and Chris Wood were our, were our front two in League One. Chrissy Wood. Who would have thought, a number of years down the line, both Premier League strikers. Oscar, his first chance to go forward in this game. De Bruyne, Adama Traore, a starter this time round. Yeah, Lucas Moura seems to be put on the bench. Great pressing. I mean, Song, this is very much a very strong press from him. Just wants an early goal. Essential. Yes, that early goal. The game's all square again. You know I mean, the impact will have to come out and try and find a second. Maybe we have to sit on the 1-0 lead, which I just feel like he's going to do in this leg. I haven't seen him play yet, but it's the type of situation where you might see an overload ball side. And oh, without doubt. Very much low depth in the team. Be I hard mean, to beat. Get your two CDMs. <laughs> David Luiz, Luiz and Kante. And, Kante and just see out the result. Sadio Mane. A little scoop turn around the corner. Could not do so, though. Will it be a one-goal game? Or will Oscar get the goal to claw his way back into this final? If you are just joining us, this is the final of the Xbox bracket. The winner of this will be the official Brighton Hove Albion player for the E Premier League finals. I'll be waiting to find out who will be their PlayStation teammate. From the second consecutive year, the tournament has been part of the FIFA 20 Global Series, the Premier League. Differences this time round. There'll be new players for a handful of clubs, one of those being Brighton of Albion. Very little of the players actually in the entire E Premier League have actually defended their spots. Man United, Liverpool, 
I should say Tex and Man United, both of those individuals. On top of that as well, you've got Jambu from West Ham. Yeah. Did enough yesterday to ensure he qualified. It's the chance now for Oscar. Just well read again for me, you know. You, know, you look at Norwich, new faces there, obviously their first year in the Premier League. Brad Colston at Burnley, accompanying Stokes. Yeah, new teammate for this year. More pros as well involved. You saw fully qualify for Leicester a few days ago. Lovely ball through. Went for the dummy, but it was just unnecessary dummy there from Kevin De Bruyne. Half. Nearly halfway through this game. 30 minutes gone. Scoreline still remains the same. 1 0 to impact. It looks like it could be up. Not just. A little bit of revenge, but a piece of history as well. Still waiting for him to make an impact on this second leg. Everyone back behind the ball for him. The fact that he can potentially stop Oscar from even scoring a single goal. Incredible. Is pretty remarkable. Shake of the head again there from Oscar. And as this game does continue to prolong at nil-nil he'll become more and more frustrated it's just how he's managing the possession as well if they did play early today and he did suffer that 4-1 defeat you do come into this game thinking this is a you respect your opponent more it's a dangerous opponent especially from the impact to Oscar connection it will be this guy beat me 4-1 earlier today. I've got to change something. I've got to play me a little bit more passive. Starve him of the ball. We've seen that in, in full use right now. And full effect. It's very much comfortable on the ball as well. Comfortable being in possession. Nearly at the halfway point. Nil nil in this second leg. Still 1-0 on aggregate. If you can find a second to defend like he is at the moment, you would have to say he is in that grand final of the Premier League representing this club. Oscar saying, how oh, is that a foul <laughs> referee? 28 yards out on the edge of the box. Will be a free kick, which I'm just going to show you a handful of players will dummy. It's played short it's into it. David Luiz. Oh, that's beautiful. Is he going to score as well? He's onside. And Hummin Song. We'll go to the back of the net. I think Oscar's called for VAR there. <laughs> I just saw I'll be asking questions to Virgil van Dijk. Oh, he played him off. VAR. Hung Min Son doubling the lead on the stroke of half time for impact. A really nice, well worked free kick, to be honest. Played it short and then a little through ball into Son. But things needing to change right now for Oscar. Do you make of that in like FIFA 21 a VAR button? Absolutely not. You get like two challenges a game. No, I'm not playing tennis. You can press you can press square to challenge a decision like a penalty <laughs> shout or an offside. Oh. Okay. I want the I want the referee in the <laughs> middle of the pitch to make the decisions for me. He's in a very much difficult position now, Oscar. Call out for VAR. All he wants is two 0 down. That scoreline will not be changing unless he can find a handful of goals. Back underway. Perfect response from Impact in this game. 2-0 up, two goals to the good. It's 45 minutes away. From representing this club in the E Premier League Grand Finals. There you go, half time. Whistle blown, I love that free kick as well, Richard. I didn't even see that pass that David Luiz was able just to pick out in time. Yeah, I, I maybe even thought David Luiz could have hit that, but instead it was a lovely little through ball into Hyung Min Son. You see Oscar on your screen there. Just tuck that past the goalkeeper, and it was 2 0 before the half time whistle was blown. 
few changes being made for Oscar. He's got 45 minutes to try and turn it around. Got another Brighton question for you. Go on then. I'm guessing this is just an assumption that the seagull is because there's you're on the coast and there's a lot of seagulls. Is it as simple as that? Okay. Don't know if there are further <laughs> meaning. <laughs> Back on the way. In this second leg. It's worth saying as well, sometimes if you're lucky, you get a seagull that flies over the stadium and then all the fans just chant it. Surely that's quite a regular occurrence. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't always happen. We're a little bit away out from the coastline. Are the seagulls in Brighton as pesky as the seagulls in Blackpool? Stealing chips. Happened to me many times. Shame. 40 minutes left. Oscar looking for a response in this game. Needs something. There's the only way back into it. More positive for him. Difference between these two being that goal. One three kick spot. It was a lovely little short pass into David Louise, and he found that killer pass that works well, his pass way around the back line. Somehow on side as well was Hamin Song. Impact can play his own game right now. Happy to keep hold of the ball. I mean, so chance for Oscar here. Just look at all those bodies behind the ball. Look at that movement with Angolo Kante. It's worked out for him, just manually controlling it. So we're going to see players do with the two CDMs, manually control them, keep them in front of the bat line. It's be as difficult as the Kante chance. breaks out. Tomori in the right area. Chance not dealt with, though, fully. Adama Troy, a bit of a pointless. Little scoop turn, his headers and volleys in the box, and Omane on the volley. And these chances in, in and around the box, they're very limited as the game dries on. And we do start to see the ink starting to set on impact. Being Brighton and Hove Albion's official E Premier League player. This is nice, looking for a third, looking to close this game out. A few players in this way as well at the finals, it'll be dangerous. It's effective. An opportunity this will be as well, looking for a third. Well defended again, and Golo can take furthest man back. There's a pause cue, I just don't think he'll be getting it, Oscar. Yeah, it's... Probably going to go out for, a, I'd imagine, maybe a corner or a, even a goal restart would be the next time the ball does leave the pitch. 20 minutes left. Well defended again. Did call it, Richard. You did. I mean, the scoreline's not perfect, but <laughs> I said it'll be a defensive performance. He'd get an early goal. And he'd sit on it. The 6-0 didn't really... Uh, yeah, it's not really lived up to that yet, has it? Come to beat. 15 minutes away from that final whistle. What a dream story it will be for him, representing Brian of Albion in the E Premier League club playoffs. Hunty's one more. Can't Probably should have played him in. Kevin De Bruyne. This is where something needs to happen. He's getting into these areas, Oscar, and it just seems to be a man every single time. Happy to foul, though. Tactical foul. With 14 minutes left. Happy to get that pause, if anything. Into the subs. I thought you were looking at Aaron Moy there for a second. He's brought Glenn Murray on. He's only going to block Glenn Murray on. <laughs> Glenn Murray is on. Please. For Oscar. Please. Please score, Glenn. He's having a bit of fun in the last few minutes. Oh, I tell you what, if Glenn Murray scores. Tell you what, he's putting everything forward. 77 overall Glenn Murray. He's not got too much pace with him. Target man. Exactly what he needs. He's got an eye for goal. He'll be oh, fresh please. off the bench. 14 minutes left in this game. Go on, Oscar. A little smart from Oscar as well. 
<laughs> That's exactly what he's doing. Glenn Murray. Can you imagine a 2 2 comeback? Murray involved I'd in lose both. That's losing head. Oh, what is that? That's an awful ball from Van Dyke. Forget Murray. Van Dyke can't <laughs> even do it. Number 99, he's rocking Glenn Murray. Watch out for him. If he'll get a touch of the ball, that is. Come on, Glenn. The constant pressure will naturally mean there will be gaps for impact to try and exploit. He is tuning them up, as we said. This is where you change your, your, your game, Matt, your game plan. You're trying to get into Glenn Murray. Stick there it in the is. mixer. In it goes. Oh. Tell you what, be very careful at the back there. Impact. Very composed. Well played. Only as far, though. That's another player. Trent Alexander Arnold. Get it to Murray. Oh. Glenn. He's in it around the box. He's waiting. It's Murray. Glenn. Glenn. Oh, yes. Glenn Murray. Glenn Murray. Start in the comeback, please. Please, Murray. The drag back into the finish from him. Stick a hunter on him. Oh, Glenn. What a man. Lovely shape and beard. We called for it. He might not be the fastest player, but 14 minutes left, he can pull out a good shift. Hearing the announcer. Seven minutes left. <laughs> hearing the announcer on FIFA goal. Number 99, Glenn Murray. Oh, it makes me special. I love it. That's made my day. That's five made minutes. the five hour travel down to the Amex. Five minutes. <laughs> Could you imagine? I know we pretty much called this game off. We said the impact's going to be through. And representing the club in the E-Premier League finals. Oh, but this sure constant not. pressure has been effective so far. Three minutes left. So many black shirts forward as well for Oscar. He will He's win the it. ball back. It's two minutes left in this game. If oh, offside. Murray was to find an equaliser. I think I'd fall off my chair. You'd be on the pitch. Added time to follow. It's been a perfect performance from Impact. Added time of two minutes. It really is his to throw away now. He's in possession with Adama Traore. Will Oscar even get the ball back to go back down the other end one more time? Adama yes. Traore still hanging on to it. This is it. If he can go forward just one more time. He's pushed off the ball and that should be all she wrote. It will be all she wrote. Impact will represent Brighton of Albion in the E Premier League Grand Finals. Congratulations. We fought for a second. Glenn Murray was about to pull off an absolute masterclass in the Amex. Unfortunately, though, for Oscar, it will be the end of the road in the grand final. He's done it, though. One man, Richard, has done enough to ensure he will be in the E Premier League Grand Finals. Representing this club, Brighton of Albion, congratulations to Impact. He's done it, Richard. Second time of asking. He lost on the, on the first time round. Four goals to one. Second time of asking. He's done enough, and he will be in London next month. Battling out in that prize spot worth forty thousand pounds. Incredible stuff. Yeah, what a turn up for the books there from Impact. Two goals to one overall. An early goal in the first eight minutes was the deciding factor in that first leg for him. And you just saw that lead out. A very good defensive performance. Short free kick. Mane into David Luiz, Son peeled off him and smashed it into the back of the net. Even with a late Glenn Murray resurgence, it wasn't enough, Brandon. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough in the end. Of course, went all the way down to the wire in that second leg with it all to play for. And we fought for a second when Murray was on the pitch. This is where it could all happen. This was the chance. We got a bit excited. Here, we? We, did get, we, got, we got too excited. Here's the chance. Just look at the touch from Glenn Murray and the drag back. The drag back Gets is on the ball now. Unreal. It's so quick. It's so exquisite from him. Into the back of the net. We've been waiting to see that all game from him. And uh, with, what, six minutes left, we thought there could have been a comeback. Unfortunately, left it too late. And it was a very mature last few minutes uh, in the end from impact. As we said, he will be in the E Premier League Grand Final of course, for the Albion. And he's done enough, Richard. Congratulations to him. Second time of asking. He lost to him previously in the tournament. Sent him down to loser's bracket. And maybe that is exactly what he needed. To go via that loser bracket. To go the hard way into the grand finals. And he's joined by Matt right now. Congratulations to Impact. Represent Brighton. I'm going to give you this trophy first. Thank you. Because I can't hold everything at once. <laughs> 
you must be delighted. Yeah, I am. I knew I had to get a quick start to the game because I knew my position was very good at keeping the ball. So I knew I had to start off quick, get the goal lead early and play out the game from there. Were you a bit scared? Because I know Brighton fans who are here, we were actually quite excited when we saw Murray scored. Were you quite nervous then? Yeah, I can't believe he scored. To be honest, 35 pace or whatever he has now. But I, I, I held the game out at the end of the game, so yeah. One thing you should always remember, never underestimate Glenn Murray. <laughs> yeah. He's a legend, he's a legend. I said he was my favourite player as well before, and <laughs> not nine anymore. <laughs> really cost me a spot. What does this mean to you? Because obviously it's your first tournament here. Yeah. You're now going, as I said, going to London to yeah. represent the Albion. You must. What's, what's it mean to you? I know, it means absolutely everything because this is this is my second ever LAN, and to qualify at a big stage to compete for money and and the pro points, it means so much. Yeah. You didn't make it easy for yourself because you did go down to the losers bracket. Yeah. You had to go the longer way round, yeah. but you know it makes it even more sweeter, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, because I lost I lost to the guy I beat in the final in the losers bracket. So yeah. And what, what, what's your preparation now? I know you've obviously just won this, but what are you thinking going ahead? You know, you've got just, so, just about a month until the finals. What, what's your preparation going to be? I've got to play in all the future qualifiers to compete against top players and also play prior matches against them and just prepare my Premier League team, really. Well, I just want to say congratulations. I'm delighted for you. Um, really, I'm going to be watching. Really yeah. excited to see how you get on. Um, yeah, and back to you, Brandon and Richard. There you go. You heard it from... Uh, the Brighton's brand new Xbox Grand Finals for that E Premier League. And look at that run Richard he had in the tournament. Just upset after upset for it. Jamie Hindle didn't taste a defeat. Didn't concede a goal until that semi-final. And then went and beat Oscar on the second time of asking. Got the revenge. And uh, he will be in the E Premier League Grand Finals next month. Representing Brighton of Albion. They weren't the highest scoring of games. But a 2-0 and a 2-1 was all it took for Impact to be Brighton and Hove Albion's official E Premier League player on the Xbox and we've got one small matter of business left to find out and it's who's going to be joining him as his Seagulls teammate. Is it going to be Ethan or will it be Amir? Yeah, that's a big question that will be answered in the next hour or so, Richard. A fantastic performance from him. He said as well that he's looking forward to playing some of the future qualifiers, which would suggest he is uh, foot verified. But as we said, we've got that PlayStation final coming up very shortly. In the next few minutes, we're going for a very short break to get ready for it. So do not go anywhere.
Welcome back to the Brighton and Hove Albion E Premier League playoffs. We've got one final game remaining. We know who the Xbox player is going to be for the finals. That's going to be Impact, and we're a trophy down. We've only got one trophy left, so let's put that just there in the middle. Put it in the centre because someone will be winning this in the next 45 minutes or so when we're going to get to the end of these two legs. You said it's going to be Amma up against Ethan in a grand final. Talk to me about how they got here, Richard. This is the knockout bracket, and now we've got two players left on the PlayStation 4. Yeah, Ethan came in to the tournament as the relative favourite. It was a 3-1 win in his first matchup. He then won 4-0 against K. Hampstead to send him into the semi-finals. Then a 4-3 victory. Um going through into the uh, into the semi-finals, I should say. On the other side of that, it was a 4-3 uh, win for um, Amir coming into the latter stage of the competition. So both were pretty comfortable 4-3 and 5-2 wins in the round before the final. Do you know what I love? A Richard Buckley 60-second question teaser. You did it with uh, Amir. Let's have a look at how he got on with yourself. My name is Salman Ahmed. PS4, AM1R, underscore 23. We should go to formation in FIFA 20. 442. Favourite skill move? Elastical. Most effective player? Mane Timidia. Ronaldo or Messi? Ronaldo. Best pack ball in FIFA 20? De Jong Timidia. Long range screamer or skill goal? Long range screamer. Possession or all out attack? All out attack. Favourite Brighton player? Glenn Murray. <laughs> I just love them with you. I think Richard. I've got a future in that. I just love them videos with you. Did you enjoy filming them today? Well, um, that was a bit chilly out I there. can't lie, it was very cold outside when I was filming. Didn't have a coat. We heard that Glenn Murray, favourite Brian player. We saw him score a goal in the last one. What a goal that was. That's got to be the highlight of the night so far. Glenn Murray dragged back into the finish. 77 overall <laughs> rated, 35 pace to his name. Did it. Scored a goal. Unfortunately, couldn't score two, though. Uh, for Oscar, as we said, our Xbox winner is confirmed. It will be Impact representing the club in London next month in the E Premier League. And as we said, this is the matchup we are looking at. It will be Ethan against uh, Amir. Two legs of FIFA in front of us. Who will come out on top? You probably say the fans will be thinking Ethan after the strong performance we've seen from him so far. But anything can happen. We've seen upsets before in the E Premier League. Why can't we see it again in front of us here? Both players on the exact same row, E from the left-hand side. And you can see the American Express Community Stadium's pitch in the background there. We've been here for four or five hours now, from 16 down to the final two. This is the big one. You've got the man that sits 12th on the global series rankings at this moment in time in Ethan. A massive performance out of Milan just a few weeks ago after recently signing for 11's eSports. Gareth Bales, brand new eSports organization. And we are underway. Ethan against him here. Two legs in front of us. Who will be Brian of Albion's PlayStation 4 representative next month? First thing I'm seeing, it looks like a 4-4-2 in action for Amir. Son and Aguero look to be the two starting strikers for him kick it from right to left in the away Brighton strip it's going to be Ethan from left to right striped top blue shorts white socks as you see Trent Alexander-Arnold who's been ever present in the squads today with the Premier League only restrictions as we knew, both players had to go through the qualification period to get to this stage. And Ethan, 22 games played, 20 wins, two defeats. That's all he needed to play to get to this stage. And the other side of this for Amir, 20 games, 26 games played, I should say, 20 wins and six defeats. You never know, they might have even played. Potentially, yeah, I know a lot of the people were matching each other on the brackets. So they have had a, a little bit of experience, potentially, in previous. One thing we've taken from previous games, we've seen of Ethan's. He loves a half-time or a 90th minute goal in additional time. A little bit too heavy on the touch there from Sadio Mane. And both of these players have had the opportunity to sit back and watch that Xbox final play out. And about an hour to themselves. I think the nerves just will continue to build. Ethan surely should be used to this experience, though. I mean, he played in the FIFA e Club World Cup final. 
There was a lot of on the line there, wasn't it? He had a teammate though as well, didn't he? He had Resende next to him. I mean, Song, this is Ethan now, early doors. Can he get a finish in? No, La Croqueta, back across goal. Kevin De Bruyne getting things moving in this PlayStation 4 final. 15 minutes on the clock, and it's an early goal for Ethan in this final. And the reason that, that pass has actually come off there, that's not a regular pass he's played there. He's played the lofted pass. So it just, it just gives it a bit of elevation, and to be honest, it's got a much higher success rate when you do the lofted pass, the double tap X on the cutback rather than just a regular pass. So certainly something's keeping your FIFA manual right there. Big early goal for Ethan in this game. Amir has to come out and find a response. As you said, looking at his team, Richard, it will be Sergio Aguero, a starter for him alongside I mean, Song, it's like, as you said, in a 4 4 2. He's certainly got two strikers, don't they? Maybe a 4 4 2 second variation. His, his two central players do look quite deep in De Bruyne and Kante. We switch a play out again. This is nice. De Bruyne. To the Bruyne, in fact, the goal scorer for Ethan. What a finish it was. It seems like a very efficient way to score this year. Get the ball out wide, whether you're playing a 4 2 3 1 or not. Then look to cut that ball across goal, as you said. Just that double tap pass just dinked it into the path of the team of the year. And from Manchester City to get himself on the score sheet, just 15 minutes in. Does make me want to. Uh Try and get that team in the De Bruyne back into my squad. I'm, I'm using the 94 second in form at the minute, but the team in the year just looks so influential in game, especially as a central camp. Of course, this is Amir's first real big final that we've seen in the world of competitive FIFA. You have to think that experience from the E Club World Cup, Richard, from previous tournaments, Gfinity Elite Series, Foot out Cup of Atlanta, Foot, yep. Camp, Foot Champions Cup 3, did participate in it, Ethan. Those experiences only improve you. Right through ball, looking for a second. It's gone back across goal. Again, wanted that dink pass. It was Humming Song that was in the box. Yeah, it seems as though nobody was really reacting to that, was it? Well, that ball did get fired across. But again, just talking about the experience that Ethan has been able to possess at such a young age will really set him in good stead for not only this match but the potential upcoming future of the E Premier League with Brighton and then I imagine he's going to try and qualify for England at the FIFA E Nations Cup as well part of the E Lions so we don't know how the group's going to be looking for the Premier League Grand Finals but as soon as they are announced certainly will be exciting last time round it was See four groups of five. So the last time round we had Wolverhampton Wanderers in the group of Brighton of Albion alongside Crystal Palace. Another tough team in that group. See Liverpool were the winners last time out. Tex picking up the first ever E Premier League trophy. And we went to Liverpool a few weeks ago, Richard. It was actually there on display. Mm. Tex qualified again, not conceding a goal. Remarkable stats from the multiple-time Foot Cup winner. Club World Cup winner. And defending E Premier League winner. Mohamed Salah now. This is an unbelievable chance for... I mean, you saw... I mean, Song just peel off his map. Fortunately, just couldn't do enough. Added time in two minutes. This is where Ethan will go forward again. He's done it three times already in previous matches we've seen from him. Sadio Mane is going to make that run on the left-hand side. Will he have time to go forward? A minute and a half has been played already of additional time. He can't go back or the referee will blow for half-time. Does win it back. Trent Alexander-Arnold to move us into the half-time interval. One goal to separate the two. 
at the break. You'd probably say Ethan is a quarter of the way there. If you break the game down into stages, 440, 4.45 minutes of FIFA. One of them has been completed right there for that young man. Amir up against it right now, but it's only a goal. Whether it's different between scoring a goal against someone on weekend league or in rivals and then scoring against the 12th best ranked player in the world. Big differences indeed. 21 goal though. As you saw from the half-time stats, no shots registered. No chances created for Amir. That's something that has to change. In his next 45 minutes, he'll have the first chance of the half, in fact. See so many shirts back for Ethan, defend him. Because when you get to a situation like this, how do you get that ball into a Hummin Song? How do you get it through to him? There's just three Brighton shirts in the way every single time. Make that four. There's Hummin Song. There's the chance and there's the finish. That's how we do it, Brandon. Zip it in through the gap. You have to be patient. That's exactly what Amir was. He's back in this game. All he needed was one chance. Yeah, and David Luiz trying to just get any sort of block on that. He raised his leg very high, but Amir managing to squeeze the ball through the gap with Hyung Min Son. Right now, we're in a tied game, very similar to Ethan's semi final, to be honest. He went 1 0 up, and then Konkai got a goal back, didn't he? But Ethan pulled away in the end in the second leg. Scoring three goals. This is where. I mean, he has to back himself. He knows he can score goals. He just did. Fantastic finish from Amin Song. You saw how difficult Ethan was to break down. But he did find a way through. That will give him confidence. If you were... Emir's coach right now, what would you be saying? This is your time to go and score and go in front. Anything motivational? <laughs> attack. That's attack, good. attack, attack. That's probably why you're not his coach. <laughs> <laughs> if he was to go 2 and up, this is where he could put Ethan in a very difficult position. That run down the line, he's triggered it. It's up in the air, you don't know where it's going to go. Kante doing enough though. Ethan has queued a pause. Probably a Dharma making his way onto the field potentially. Salah, look at that pass, he's there if he wants to find it. We See, saw it. The predictable thing is to go inside as Amir did. If he takes him down the outside there, maybe hits him with a heel to heel, potentially could have created a bit of danger. Straight back down the other end, in fact. This is Ethan now. With Mohamed Salah, he's got Trent Alexander Arnold right on his back. Does win the ball, does get the pause as well that he did want. We are looking at the team of Amir. 4 2 3 1 at the moment, as you said. Pretty much a standard starting 11, as you would expect. He doesn't want to make any changes. He's happy to get back into the game. Ethan is making changes, and I think it's just a couple of subs potentially coming on for him. Let's say Rian Mahrez there. So Sergio Guerrero. And you are right, Rian Mahrez. You can just see him in that cam roll. And the two Manchester City lads link up. To fire him back in front, two goals to one. Seen Aguero being a, a very viable super sub previously in the tournament. He needs to do it now, though, does this uh, scream Sergio Aguero. You've also got the player of the month, Sergio Aguero, but the scream's slightly quicker, everything else pretty much in favour of the player of the month. Yeah, pace one of the most important factors so 
Also, with a chem style, you can get other areas up as well, so... It's very understandable why the Scream Aguero is still favoured. Here comes Ethan again. And we see those substitutions make an impact. So there's still a second leg to come. This is the PlayStation 4 Grand Final. And we'll come out on top between these two. We'll represent the club next month in the Premier League Grand Finals. Sadio Mane. Aguero yet to have a touch on the ball. Mahrez will get his first off the game. Lovely step overs from the Algerians. Virgil with a last ditch tackle there. You've got to think if that's getting shot near post. Again, he's just giving possession away, is Amit. Aguero into Mahrez. What a save from Alisson. He can't do it on the second time of asking. And also a big reaction as well for Ethan as that goal went in. Big fist pump from him. Very fortunate, but the, the build-up play, when he turned over the ball, he didn't play a regular through ball. Did you see that? He double-tapped it. So he put it in the air, allowing the volley to be hit first time. It rebounded back, and Mares didn't make a mistake on the second time of asking. You see the foot item in the game, just a 2D image of it not currently being updated with the accounts. But that is the Shapeshifters 89 rated Riyad Mahrez. Exactly what I mean. They don't want to do in conceding that. He'll find himself 2 1 down, moving into the second leg, unless he can create something in the next six minutes or so. He has already replied once to Ethan in this match. He'll have to do it all over again. That ball just whipping out a play. Trent looking to play the threaded through ball down the line. Maybe it was an idea to bring on some substitutions for him. Didn't want to do so in this first leg. Yeah, he's kept his team pretty much standard throughout, hasn't he? He's playing for the last attack of the game here, 88 on the clock. He's been forced backwards. You can see Ethan over the ball side there, and I would imagine Stryker dropped back as well. In action for the Englishman. And in time of two minutes. And speaking about Ethan with the last chance of the game, maybe. I mean, can snatch a goal late into this one. Two minutes have been played, and that will be it. Four leg number one. Ethan with a very small advantage heading into the second leg. Same situation he was in last time, Richard. 2 1 in the semi final. Did come out on top and win that game. Five goals to two in the end. He did win it, but different sort of kettle of fish, really, isn't it? Because the goal that he scored in that first game against uh, Konkai, 92nd minute winner. Whereas on this occasion, a little bit earlier, and he did go defensive towards the end of the game to see that match out. Uh, yeah, I definitely think that Amir's got w what it takes to win this football match. It's worth pointing out for the very last time tonight that you guys can pick up some prizes if you have been watching the stream throughout since we got started here at the Amex for this EPL Club Playoff event. Over on Twitter, you, can, of course, can win a signed away Albion shirt. Uh, of course, at official BHAFC. Go over and check out the, the tweet there. Like the post and follow all the details. Of course, you can also win copies of FIFA 20 over on Instagram. Again, official BHAFC for your chance to win some signed copies of FIFA 20. Again, thank you very much to everyone that has tuned in this evening. Do not go anywhere yet. We've still got one more leg of this PlayStation 4 final to conclude. He was one of the favourites coming into the tournament. He's living up to it at the moment, but he's still got one more game of FIFA to prove himself, Richard. Does lead by two goals to one. Can he pull it back in Amir? Or will Ethan make his debut in the E Premier League Grand Finals, representing Brian O'Valbion on the PlayStation 4? The first, in my opinion, 30 minutes will decide this game. If Ethan comes out strong, 
gets an early goal, maybe even makes it two, and goes three, four, one up, it's game over. But if Amir can even, if he can score, unbelievable, fantastic. But even keeping it at the scoreline that it is right now for 30 minutes, I think is a very good indication that a goal and a chance could be in the pipeline for him. It will be Ethan kicking from right to left in the away Brighton strip. And Amir from left to right in that home Albion kit. Looking for a goal, losing two goals to one at the moment. As you said, if Ethan was to score early doors from a chance like this, probably would be game over. I think he probably wanted to go to the edge of the box there with that cutback. Falling straight back to him again, Mohamed Salah. Hill to hill, can he get round? By Fandy Robertson and Virgil van Dijk, referee. We'll go back for that three kick. N'Golo Kante, just a warning. That will be seeing a shot coming from here. Either played short or across into the box. Van Dijk is in there. See number 11 just at the bottom of the screen, empty. It's going to be slow though, slow build up. No time to rush, no time to panic. De Bruyne well, in a corner for his efforts 2-1 he does lead at the moment what we do from here Virgil van Dijk on a little bit Ooh. of a hard volley chance still not fully dealt with shot comes in I mean some saved by Alisson that ball was ping pong around the box wasn't it? it first came off van Dijk and then De Bruyne had a chance on the edge it's into van Dijk again Headed down and into the hands of Allison. Not a convincing header though from Virgil van Dijk. It was down into the ground. It sort of took the pace out of the header from the big Dutch centre half. Non stop pressure though from the 11's esports man. Chance. Another chance for him looking for a third in this game. Ball across the box. Oh! It's nearly an own goal. Virgil van Dijk just getting his boots onto it. It bounced up off the post. The cross fizzed in originally from Sadio Mane. There's a lot of room down that left hand side for Ethan to capitalise on. Again, it's just nerve, just... isn't it, from him? Well done, though. Just it's giving the ball away a couple of times. Just... Rushing. I mean, he's under that press from Ethan. He just struggles to get out. Really does struggle to try and break out. No oh, idea how Virgil van Dijk kind of just hit that onto the bar. Power of van Dijk. This is Ethan again. And he's just got that very fortunate bounce. I mean, so De Bruyne to put this game to bed. It's beautiful. What a finish. A lovely little dink over the top of his map. And De Bruyne involved again. And on the score sheet, once again, 3-1. Ethan will lead in this PlayStation 4 grand final. The way the ball broke to him on the edge of the box, very fortunate. But as soon as he got it back with De Bruyne and Son in the final third, it was exquisite. The little through ball again. What was it? The loft, not the lofted, but the, the slightly raised through ball, the double tap triangle, dinked it through to him and then just a dink over the goalkeeper. Elegant from Kevin De Bruyne. 3-1 the scoreline and for me, I've got to think that this game slowly sliding away from Amir. What's more interesting as well is obviously this is his defensive game plan. He's in a 4-2-3-1. And as we expect, we are seeing a very much aggressive instructions implemented onto his players. He needs goals. He knows he needs two goals. If there's any way back into this game four, I mean. Get into the box for crosses and aggressive con uh, aggressive interceptions on a number of his players right now. And Roberto Firmino looks like introduced onto the pitch as well. Perfect start. For Ethan in this PlayStation 4 final. Three goals to one. 
He does currently lead. Mohamed Salah now. Amir needs goals. He's made those aggressive instruction changes going forward. His players are going to be naturally more attacking. They want to flood the box, get in and around the box to create a chance. But what does that mean? Lots of gaps in behind. The likes of Team Leo Mane, headliner Salah, 90 rated Son, all to find space in behind. Watch out for Mohamed Salah on the far hand side of your screen there. He's going to try and make a diet and run. You can see from the camera that Amir does use, we can have a fantastic view of the full pitch. What's impressed me most, Richard, how good De Bruyne has been going forward. Exquisite, isn't he? Just he's, he's so composed on the ball. He's very sophisticated when he gets it. Always looks like he's under control. No matter if he's in a, a tight area, he can still fight his way out. He can find a shot on either foot. He's quick, he's strong. Can't say. Into the Bruyne, this needs to go in. Oh, is it one too many touches? No, it's not. It's the perfect accumulation of a little fake shot around the corner into the finish from Kevin De Bruyne. We've seen that animation from the goalkeeper a little bit more frequently recently where they sort of just don't react to it. Kevin De Bruyne with a fake shot just before he took the shot off, snatched his shot past the goalkeeper and... Kevin De Bruyne right now, just as I was talking about him, potentially setting Amir up for success in this game. The goal line halved. Massive time to score. That's another mistake at the back. This is an unbelievable opportunity from here. We know he's put those aggressive tactic changes on. Could he score from this? It'll be unbelievable if he can. Hummin Song, fake shot, finish. <gasps> what a save, Alisson. Amir looks like a new man with this new instructions and substitutions brought on. He's got another chance in front of him. It's De Bruyne on the edge of the box. It's going to rebound to him. First shot was blocked. He did rebound to him at any time of just two minutes. If Ethan can get through this into half time, still in the lead, you've got to think he's weathered a little bit of the storm. The referee blows up for half time. Three shots, three on target, 42% possession, but the all important goal back for Amir. Certainly right, and a little bit of a wave of momentum at the moment is Amir after that goal did go in for him, and that's the chance where, really, if you look at a game of FIFA, you have to make your impact then. That was and the chance that you had to score. Yeah, Kevin De Bruyne did it. Just. Nicking in front of the goalkeeper after the fake shot, which sent him pretty much one-on-one. -on -one. Just poking it past the goalkeeper from short range. 45 minutes remaining. Well then. Who will come out on top in this game? We for be able to hold on to this lead. Although well, Amir find another goal back and send us into an extra time period. You know our Xbox grand finalist for Brighton of Albion in impact. Who will be joining them in the Premier League grand finals? Best thing that Ethan can do is score. Early on, here's a chance I'm in song. It's going to fall back to it. That's exactly what he needed to do. De Bruyne again involved in it. 4-2 on aggregate. The perfect start to this second half. He's been the key man here today, Kevin De Bruyne. Beautiful bit of interplay on the edge of the box. First time shot from Kevin. Smashing it past the goalkeeper. That two goal cushion reinstated for Ethan. And when that one went in, no reaction. 
just sort of a nod of her head and Amir almost a little bit of appreciation as well as that went in. 98 overall. Such an influential player, whether you play him in as a cam or in that DM. Striker rock. even, you could, with the pace that he has. He's just so, so good. Still time left. A goal now. Could certainly tighten things up. It's a mistake at the back. Well played, though. Putting himself out of danger. I think for the next 40 minutes, Rich, we're going to see no risks taken at all from Ethan in this game. Yeah, just go forward when you've got an opportunity to. You don't have to force the ball forward as David Luiz steps up, wins it back. But again, Roberto Firmino, his price will have rocketed up after these e Premier League events because everyone's seeing now the value of the screen Firmino and Timia De Bruyne. De Bruyne up. Looking to get a hat trick in this game for Ethan. Two goals already. Certainly, if he did score again, or anyone on Ethan's team, it would be game over. Let's not forget as well, he's won his semi-final against uh, Conkia. Five goals to two. So he's on for that again if he does get another goal. Certainly one more goal would put this to bed. Three goals needed for Amit. Just would be too much of a task. Could this be that chance for him now? Firmino, hill to hill, into KDB. Hat-trick here, oh, no, off the post. Still chance on. still alive. Kante with the shot, it's up in the air. As that ricochets off the post. A counter-attack potential on if Mo Salah can get away from his man. That's got to go in, surely, with Kevin De Bruyne. De Bruyne, I mean Song, just turned the wrong way. Yeah, the Berber spins the, the opposite way really, didn't he? Sort of gave Ethan a chance to get back behind the ball as well. 20 minutes away from writing himself into the history books with his club. Two new E Premier League round finalists for Brighton over Albion. And it looks as if Ethan will be joining the club for the second season. And the Premier League Grand Finals come next month, 27th for 28th of March. It will be Ethan and Impact that will be battling out for Brighton of Albion. And battling out for the trophy and the prize money that will be up for grabs. If he can score one more goal, it will be the perfect final from him. Still 15 minutes left. Amir still in this game. Looks for a through ball down the line from O'Sal. He's not giving up yet. But nor should he. We've seen comebacks like this happen in FIFA. But it's primitive that he doesn't concede. If he concedes, that is Ethan being handed the trophy. He's still not happy at the moment, is Ethan? You'd think in a winning position he would be pretty happy of how he's playing. He'll get one more chance to make a few uh, changes. Will. Both of these two expect the same changes from Ethan. As we said, it's normally Riyad Mahrez and Sergio Aguero. For Amit, he needs potentially three heroes to come onto the field if he's going to make a triple substitution. It's Murray time. I saw him do it in the last one. No. Has he got a Brighton player on the bench? I don't think so. Maybe Aaron Moy? I've only seen two Brian players on the bench this evening. Aaron Moy and Glenn Murray. 12 minutes left. Trossard might have been in and around the uh, the group stages, potentially. But I've not, I've not yet to see him used on this live stream. Right, it's the same subs again. Mares Aguero coming on for Ethan. Looking to seal this game out if he does get a chance with the attacking prowess of the City duo he's in 
That's a great ball. I'm not sure what's happened there in the air. Just hyper extended his knee, that's what happened. The referee said no foul, apparently. There's a chance now for. Oh, yeah, well read. Trent Alexander Arnold into the remaining 10 minutes now in this final. You'd honestly say that Ethan would be home and dry if he can get past these next few minutes without conceding the goal. It's an awful tackle. It's a reckless tackle from Sergio Aguero. Straight on as a sub and straight into the referee's book there. <laughs> the ultimate tactical foul right there. Far enough out that you've got to play short and no one's really whipping that into the box from that angle with the camera angle as well. Tell you what, Adama would be through if he can get a finish now. Could be in for a fantastic last few minutes again. Who's what there? He's right just place, overthink right it. Time. Virgil van Dijk in the perfect position. Is this going to be a chance? Surely it will be. Let's <gasps> go go in. How is that not gone in? I think it was a, a duo of Allison and David Luiz. And then Trent just smashing it behind for a corner. That's a counter-attack. Two against two. That was the chance, Sane. Richard. This is the goal as well that could put the game to bed. Leroy Sane, ball roll around the goalie, get his name into the E-Premier League Grand Final. Ethan Higgins will represent Brighton over Albion come next month. Five goals to two. It's deja vu, just like his semi-final. He's yeah. done enough. Congratulations. It's going to be Ethan and Impact, your two Brighton and Hove Albion e Premier League players for this season. Added time to follow. He came in as one of the big favourites in this tournament, currently 12th in the world on the PlayStation 4 rankings. That's the whole world we're talking about. Impressive performances in Atlanta, out in Milan, and even here at the American Express Community Stadium. He will be representing Brighton of Albion next month in the E Premier League Grand Finals, teaming up with Impact on the Xbox. He's done enough. Congratulations to Ethan Higgins. Yeah, massive congratulations. He came in as the favourite, and sometimes it's tough when you come in as a favourite because you know that everyone's gunning for you. Everyone sees your name, and you're the person that everyone wants to beat. But a number of professional performances from Ethan, five goals to two, in a couple of his knockout games in the group stages, 3-1 and 4-0. It was a, a real classy performance from the 12th ranked player in the world and he will be someone for the Seagulls to get behind. Yeah, certainly will be a player to watch out for any Brighton fans watching the stream right now. Five goals to two in that grand final. Of course, commiserations to Amir. Very strong performance coming into the, the final. But that is the experience you get from playing in major tournaments all around the world. Of course, look no further in that scoreline. Five goals to two. Ethan does do enough to represent Brighton Hove Albion alongside Impact in, of course, that finals next month. 27th and 28th of March. Get it in your diary. You know who the Brighton players will be. It's two new places for the club. And uh, I'm excited to see this team, Richard. I think there's a lot of potential in the grand finals. Yeah, I do as well. I think you've got you've got two very different players. You've got Ethan going for serious global series ranking points purposes. And you've got Impact, who, a little bit like Kyle Leafs last year, if he plays the same way as what he's done here, I think he could be a massive underdog and yeah. spice things up because defensively, really sound. He didn't really let the sort of occasion overawe him. He came in, he did what he needed to do, he got through the group stages, went into the knockouts against the player who previously had beaten him, got his revenge as well. I think it's a very, very solid team. I think as well, you've got to remember that, yes, the Premier League uh, will be a very tight competition, but it's a, it's a 1v1. You know, the 2v2 factor, if, say, we come into the Premier League and Brighton on the Xbox have a poor tournament or on the poor tournament on the PlayStation, but they have a fantastic tournament on the other console, of course, they can still be the overall champions. What a team that will be as well. You just saw the bracket. Ethan and Impact will be Brighton of Albion's new players for the 2020 E Premier League season. They've done enough out of the hundreds that competed online. 16 of them were lucky enough to come to this stadium. And it's going to be new faces, Richard. New, sh new names on the back of the shirts for uh, both of these two. Still a handful of players still to be found for a number of other clubs. But we've done our job here at the American Express Community Stadium. Let's go and hear from Ethan Higgins. Right now he's joined by Matt Jackson. Yes, I am joined by the finalist. You're heading to London next month for the E Premier League Club 
finals. How does that feel? Honestly, I'm speechless because um, I've got to admit in that second leg, there was chances which Ambi could have scored, which would have tilted the game, but luck was on my side and I'm, I'm delighted now. I am also delighted to hand you this trophy. It's not really mine. I'm actually going to keep it pretending that I've actually won something. But talk us through that game because you've won every game throughout here, this process today. Was it, was it really tough? Um, yeah, I think I don't know if I did draw any or if I did actually win every game, but there was definitely a couple like one goals. Like it could have went either way, but I just stayed focused on the whole thing. And honestly, I'm speechless now. Honestly, what have you made of this event today? Because you've come in and you've looked calm throughout the whole process. We've been watching you, and it's just it just looks easy for you. Um, I don't know. I'm just not like a I'm not an emotional player. I just remain focused. I don't really celebrate. I don't. Well, I might moan a bit in game. You'll probably see me <laughs> putting face at the game sometimes. But I don't know. I'm not an emotional player, so I don't let things get to me so much. So the process now until the finals. What will you do differently? Will you prepare the same? I'll prepare the same. I'll go into like I said earlier. I'll go into every game with like a fresh mindset. I take every game as it comes. It's exciting times. Uh, what does it mean to you to represent Brighton in next month's uh, finals? Honestly, I'm just looking forward to it. I wish it was tomorrow. <laughs> well, you're keen to play already. Yeah, I'm, Very I'm keen ready. to play. Um, obviously, with you on the PlayStation um, and Oscar on the Xbox, um, both representing Brighton in next um, month's finals, will you chat beforehand, you know, help each other out with some tactics, um, prepare? Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll chat and see what each of us do, maybe take some tactics off each other, maybe, like, see what everyone else is doing. Um, yeah, I'll be supporting him just as much as myself. Well, congratulations again. We're delighted here at the club, you know, that you're going to be representing us next month in the finals. Um, let's take a look at some of your highlights in the final you've just won. As you see here, these are the highlights for Ethan Higgins. Hung Min Son was the goal scorer. Just getting down this right-hand side for Ethan. Cut back to Kevin De Bruyne, and that was sort of the repeating factor of a number of his goals, the... Double tap X or double tap triangle pass into the attacking player. It means that you can just hit it first time. You don't have to take a touch on the volley. Kevin De Bruyne firing into the back of the net. And he was probably the catalyst for a number of these performances. Just after half time from kickoff, a great comeback. Roberto Firmino in the edge of the box. Played it into Hongmin Son, as I alluded to earlier. 50 minutes on the clock. And we thought that Amir potentially could be causing a little bit of an upset here at the Amex as the Korean superstar smashes it past Allison. However, as Ethan has done throughout the majority of the tournament, Virgil van Dijk and Sergio Aguero winning back the ball there. Look at this pass just there into Riyad Mahrez. A little bit fortunate with the goal as he did hit it on the rebound, but it doesn't matter how they go in. All that matters is that Ethan took the lead in the finals. Riyad Mahrez off the bench. That was the common substitution. The shapeshifter Riyad Mahrez and scream Sergio Aguero coming off of the bench. Going into the second leg, we're in with a 2-1 lead. Sadio Mane down his right-hand side. Virgil van Dijk somehow keeping that out for Amir right there. But Ethan didn't take long to break the deadlock in the second leg. Sergio and Kevin De Bruyne. Look at that dink. Just an elegant little touch over the goalkeeper for Ethan. Three goals to one. And me and Brandon on commentary thought that that probably would be the game wrapped up right there. However, his opponent, Emir, did have other ideas. As he, you'll see it just here, got back into the game. 38 minutes on the clock. And Golo Kante playing into Kevin De Bruyne. We thought he took it too far when we watched it the first time around, but the Belgium team of the year, poking it past the goalkeeper from close range. Allison left rooted to the spot right there. Coming into the second half of play, Andy Robertson played into De Bruyne, heel-to-heel -heel flick into Son. Lovely back heel, Kevin De Bruyne, first time shot again. Who else will it be but the team of the year, Manchester City man, making all the difference here at the E Premier League events, no matter wherever it is across the country. Today, it just happened to be in Brighton where De Bruyne turned up and made the difference. This was a chance here for Ethan to settle the game, actually, but he did hit the post and a bit of resilient defending back there. A shake of the head 
And this was the final goal of the game. Leroy Sané on the counter-attack. The three Manchester City substitutions making the difference. Sane ball rolls past the goalkeeper, smashes into the back of the net. And that is how Ethan was your winner. Five goals to two. He won the Brighton Hove Albion E Premier League. That's enough from myself. You'll be wondering, where is Brandon gone? He's joined by Matt Jackson for your final roundup. Thank you. So, Brandon, what a great day it's been here. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, certainly has. It's always a pleasure for me to get any excuse to work with this club. I'm obviously a big fan of Brighton of Albion, um, but this is, you know, from last year, we've really upped the bar with everything, doing a live stream. The quality of players we've been able to bring to the club as well this time round is, you have to say, is even 10 times better as well. So I just can't really wait for the finals uh, in March. What's been your standout highlight for today? I mean, Glenn Murray scoring was uh, was pretty special, was <laughs> but it's just let's, seeing... just let's just stop it there. Glenn yeah. Murray scoring, that's great. I mean, yeah, to see a Brighton player actually get subbed on was uh, was a highlight. But again, there's so many moments from today. I think the fact we've been able to de develop these new storylines with new players, of course, commiserations to, to Daniel and Ryan for not getting back to back uh, grand finalists. But just the storylines we've been able to create. I'm really looking forward to, to, to March, as I said. We've got two new players for the club. We've got a fantastic opportunity in front of us to really go and make an impact in that tournament. Let's talk about the players. Who was your standout player for today? I'd probably say, you know, I expected something from Ethan today. I expected him to play well, so I'd have to say impact. Um, on the Xbox side, nobody knew which way it was going to go. We had Zach Moore involved, one of the big favourites in the tournament. Um, but Ethan has got so much experience in, in the world of FIFA Esports this year. Played in Atlanta, in Milan, and um, I expected that from him. So I'd say, you know, impact. Really, really big performance today and well done to him. And, you know, there's been a lot of great matches here today. You've watched a lot of FIFA over the years. Yeah. What was your standout match for today? That's tough. I mean, we've been... <laughs> I don't know how many games we've seen today. Uh, we've seen so, so many. It just has to be that Glen Murray moment. I'm sorry. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. I've, I've, I'm already watching it back. I'm going to watch it back all night long as well. Um, yeah, so many great games, Matt, to be honest. I, I can't really put my finger on one that, that was a standout. And finally, just touching on these events for the clubs, because we know that some clubs don't do these you know, events. They don't get the players down to stadiums. What does it mean to, obviously, you're being a Brighton fan. What does it mean to yourself and what do you think it means to all the players who get to come down to their club, be around the club? Yeah, you know, yeah. they've, they've been in the changing rooms, they've been around the pitch, they get to wear the shirt. What, what, what's, what's that been like? Yeah, I've been a, you know, a, a Brighton fan since the days of League One where you know, we started to play some, some good stuff eventually and get promoted. But any excuse I said to work with this club is fantastic for me. But just the level of professionalism the club has done today, like you know, every single player has had a shirt hanging up in the home dressing room. They've had a stadium tour. They've been looked after. The hospitality has been fantastic. And um, the fact they get a live stream to play on as well is really set the bar this year for this club. And there's, um, you know, there's, there should be more clubs out there that are looking to do things similar to Brighton. And um, if Brighton can go into that E-Premier League final now, play well, get out of the groups, have a good run of the knockouts, they really set themselves up for a club to watch out for in future years. And I know I did say finally, but I've got one more question as you're here. Oscar and Ethan going to the finals next month. What, what, do you, what do you expect from them? And do they have a great chance of actually winning it? Yeah, definitely. I think um, obviously we saw impact there do do really well. And when you're with someone like Ethan's quality, we know both these players are foot verified. So that means they can play in global series tournaments. But Ethan's a player that's a great example to look at. He's been kind of hustling away for the last few years to really get that opportunity on the big stage. Time with Gareth Bale's esports team, which is amazing. Played in two events already this year. We're playing again in another event in the E-Premier League and it's one of them where impact will come kind of underneath his arm um, throughout that experience. And I definitely think there's an opportunity to have a great run in this tournament and I can't wait for it. Yep, so we are going to see Ethan and Oscar uh, in the E-Premier League club finals in London at the Gfinity Arena on the 27th and 28th of March. You can watch it live. Stay, track, um, stay tuned to Brian of Albion's website, Twitter, social media. That will be coming over the next few weeks. But uh, Brandon, Richard, it's been great actually yeah. uh, working alongside you today. So thank you so much for that. Thank you to Brian of Albion. Thank you to all the staff who've put on uh, great work behind the scenes. Um, and yeah, until next time, we shall catch you later. Bye-bye.